today uh, we're going to watch the Apple River case, listening to opening statements from defense, state, and then maybe we'll listen to some of the witness testimonies. And then I have some articles up here, too, that can like um, recap some of the other testimonies that's already happened so far. We are currently in week two, I believe. Is it week two? I think it's week two of the Apple River case. Um, it seems like they're moving along pretty quickly. The state had about 45 witnesses to testify in the stand. And I think the state's going to rest their case either apparently it's like today or tomorrow. And there were some rumblings about maybe the defendant testifying as well. Oh, it's now on the West Coast. Really? Let's see. What time is Eclipse? Should I have my window open? I don't think I'm going to really see anything, though. I think it's mostly in, um, like, what, New Mexico, Austin, or, like, Texas area. A partial solar eclipse will be available on Monday starting at 10.06, and it will peak at 11.12. Oh, it should be peaking soon, then. I don't know. Should I take a look outside? Let me see what it looks like outside. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to look at it directly. If you look at it directly, you might mess up your eyes or something. I don't know. I can't really see anything here. I think it's like directly above. I would have to go outside probably to take a look at it. But I can't see nothing here. Are you guys going to watch the eclipse? Did you guys get your special sunglasses? I saw like the eclipse last time partially. And it was kind of cool. I don't know. It's just like the atmosphere felt really weird because um, it was like bright and then all of a sudden it kind of just gets dark a little bit. And I don't know. I feel like it might be fun to take pictures. Wait, let me um, let me adjust Gandalf here. Sorry, Gandalf. Why are you falling over? Gandalf. Just adjust Gandalf over here. Okay. Um, let me pop this up. Oh, let me get rid of the overlays. But this is the defense right here. Uh, I'm sorry, defendant right here. His name is, I think, Nikolay. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Maybe he goes by Nick for short. Nikolay Mew. Hi, Tiny Ghost. How are you doing today? Hello. I hope you guys are doing well. Hi, WD. You know, YouTube has been um, trying to get me to do ultra low latency. For some reason, I thought low latency, you can get captions on my stream. Can you guys do captions on my YouTube stream or no? Is your birthday? Well, happy birthday. <laughs> How old are you turning if you want to tell us? Hello. Highlighted message. Hi. How's it going? You're on a hike at the moment. Uh, so I have no choice to see it. Don't look at it directly and make sure if you do, make sure you have like the special glasses on or something. And some people be looking at it directly and apparently like, like mess up your eyes or even like if you have a camera or anything like that. Wait, why is my YouTube chat all funky? I can't see your guys' profile picture again. Boo. 36. Ah, 30s is nothing. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing today? WD. Yeah, 36 is nothing. I feel like 30s is the new 20s. Okay, except you're now more confident. All right. More confident. You don't give a fuck about other people, you know, taking care of yourself. The caption button is there, but it's like clickable. Oh, it's not clickable. It's like transparent. Okay, so I guess in order for me to get captions on my stream, I have to do normal latency. But I feel like on YouTube, normal latency means I don't see your guys' message until a minute later, which is annoying. I don't like that. That's annoying to me. <laughs> You're going to look at it? All right, stay safe then. I'm great. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, anyone do anything fun, interesting, exciting? I'm a little bit sad though. We had some um, pretty harsh rainstorms and it fudged with some of the seeds that I planted. <laughs> I planted over, I think, 200 seeds in my garden um, because I was too lazy to do it the proper way. I think you're supposed to have the seeds isolated, safe somewhere because they're all fragile. I just planted them in the dirt. And now I'm like, oh, I'm so sad. I feel like a lot of them either got eaten by birds or they just got ruined in the rainstorm. I love your vlogs. Ah, thanks for watching the vlogs. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I enjoy doing the vlogs because I feel like it's, it's fun to watch them uh, a couple years back. And it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot this happened. Or like, oh, this is an apartment that I used to live in. I don't know. Uh, but most importantly, I, I, I watch the, I do the vlog stuff because, I don't know, if, in case my dogs, you know, because in case Shiro ever dies, I can watch them again and be like, oh, all these memories. I don't know. I'm just dark like that, I guess. Uh, you're watching from, oh, New Zealand. I've always wanted to visit New Zealand. Um, I hear New Zealand's beautiful. I have a friend that went there 
And she said the beach is beautiful. There's like beautiful mountains, beautiful rivers, and like jungleish areas or something like that. But she said it was gorgeous. Also, I'm like a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, so I'd be like, it'd be it'd be fun to go to New Zealand sometimes. But I think New Zealand, uh, in order to fly there from where I am, sounds like a pain in the butt. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I can survive that flight, man. Yes, you watched the LA vlog. is so funny. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I need a... I don't know. I enjoy doing the vlogs. The vlogs are basically just for me and Dennis to watch, you know, when uh, years down the road. And then if anything, you know, if it happens to Shiro, then we have lots of memories of him. Lots and lots of memories. Um, I do regret not vlogging more before Steve passed away, but oh well. So much yummy food you showed. Yeah, shout out to my friend Reed. He um he introduced us to a lot of the yummy new Japanese restaurants in LA. But I was like, oh my god, all the food stuff that I did in this vlog, they were all Asian food or specifically like Japanese food. I think we did a lot of Japanese food, some Hawaiian food, Korean food. I don't know. But I do eat more than just Asian food, okay? I do eat like normal stuff. Hi Rain, how are you doing today? What's up? Hello, hello. So I'm curious. Um, I'm curious. How many of you guys have already seen the Apple River, you know, stabbing trial? Have you guys already seen some testimonies? Do you guys already watch opening statements? Or you guys are like, I don't know what case this is about. I don't know anything about this. Um, I've seen this bits and pieces and I've read like lots of articles, but I wanted to watch the entire opening statements with you guys because I, you know, I skimmed through it and I went through some of the videos. Um, there is video evidence in this trial, which kind of helps. But I'm just curious if you guys watched this yet. Um, if any of you guys have seen it. I know some of my viewers have. Uh, we've been having some uh, healthy discussions in the Discord about it. I only watched, okay, the first day. Yeah, so apparently it seems like the state's going to rest either today or tomorrow. And then it'll be the defense's turn. And I don't know. Maybe the defendant will testify. I, I always enjoy it when the defense goes up there and uh, testifies, you know, because we get to hear from their side of the story. 23 hours of flight. <laughs> 23 hours from New Zealand to USA. Oh man. See, like for me, because I'm in California right now, going to Japan is so easy. I think Japan is like what an eight or nine hour flight. Oh, so easy, so easy. Um, okay, we're doing some science stuff. Okay, Rod. Okay, maybe some genetic stuff. Is this the intestines out case? The only part that I've yes, it is. Hi, Shabon. How are you doing today? Um, one of the witnesses that were, uh, stabbed or one of the victims, uh, he did literally say that he was like holding his intestines, which sounds very graphic and gory. We're not going to show any of that. And I don't think that's shown in the video, although you can see him laying in the water after being stabbed, but yeah, um, a little bit gory. Uh, there has, there was one victim that did die, unfortunately. But a total about like five people stab this. Hit, yeah, this case is a tough one. Yeah, um, I've been browsing into the comments section, you know, on some of the videos and there's a lot of back and forth. Hi, Rodrigo. How are you doing today? 23 hours. Damn. Yeah, I would have to do a layover. I don't know. Because like if I sit for too long, I'm like, I don't know. Oh, is it 11 hours? Maybe it is 11 hours. <laughs> I thought it was eight or nine hours. Okay, maybe I'm tripping. <laughs> Wait, how long is it for Hawaii? No, the annoying thing is um, in Nigo. And I go, okay. The annoying thing about that is that for some reason, um, there wasn't any direct flights from LA to Japan. I had to go up north to San Francisco and then I can fly to Japan, which I hate. I hate doing that. Hi, dessert biker. You're doing today. Happy eclipse day. I got 97% at my place. One hour countdown. Apparently in California, it should be happening right about now. Hello, XX. How are you doing today? Yeah, videos of it are just so unreal, almost like a horror movie, honestly. Okay, when you watch the video, everything happens so quickly. But I, when I watched the video, I didn't see the beginning of it. I saw like the middle and then towards the end, I believe. Now, when you're watching it really quickly, it's just like, oh, wow, rowdy teenagers. What the fuck? Like, this is like so mean. But I don't know. I feel like once you like really like dig into like nuances of it, I'm like, oh. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. You're watching AJ's testimony this morning. Um, AJ, was it from last week? The testimony from last week. The video is so scary. You can see a lot. The video is intense. Yeah, I um, I actually downloaded the video and I have it in my video editor right now to slow it down. Hi, lady. How are you doing today? How's it going? Lady, I'm curious about your thoughts about this case. Uh, it's 31 hours from Scotland. Oh, no. Hi, Frank. How are you doing today? Good morning. How are you doing today? Kiki, hello, hello. He didn't need to stab them, in my opinion. Yeah, I have a lot of opinions about this. I have a lot of opinions, uh, but I do want to watch the entirety of the opening statements. I read a lot of articles and um i've heard you know some bits and pieces here and there and why watch the video but um mm, i don't know 
if you slow down be prepared yeah no i i have slowed it down um there's been some screen grabs that other um articles have taken i know court tv has some screen grabs as well did this court literally watch the video frame by frame yeah we got <laughs> i can watch it frame by frame with you guys um, I have it in my video editor, but yeah, it's it's just wild. But I hope you guys are doing well. Um, let's start with opening statements by the state. And oh wait, this is not even the one. Oh, this this one right here. Is this it? State, yes. State opening statement. I am gonna have it sped up just a little bit. If it's too fast, just let me know. I can always slow it down. Am I studying law? Fuck no, hell no, no. <laughs> um, did he stab all those people in one event? Uh yes, he stabbed five people, and it happened so quickly that you pretty much missed it in the video. It happens very quickly. I've never heard anyone say that to me, that my voice is soothing. <laughs> but thanks, I guess. Thank you. You saw the solely eclipse right now. Holy one second about. Oh, man. I've, I've seen it. Though I've only seen the solely eclipse once and it was last year. But I think we got a partial in, um, in L.A. I don't think it was like the full eclipse. I don't know. I didn't even have the special glasses or anything, though. So I couldn't look at it directly. But it was pretty cool. It was pretty awesome. You're in the path of uh, totality. <laughs> if five people get stabbed and three people deserve to get stabbed, how do you not? It happens so quickly. You almost miss it in the video. Also, uh, he doesn't brandish the knife. He has it at his like waist. And he didn't have the knife initially. It was actually in his pocket. I believe it might be one of those like pocket knife that like flips out maybe. But no one even knew that people got stabbed until I think like by that point maybe like three or four people already got stabbed i don't know when the fifth person got stabbed though rain do you know when the fifth person got stabbed did six months one dude i was in there was like waiting trial he was on america's most wanted for murder he was on the run for like 30 years jesus uh no okay right actually i did try to make an asmr channel and i was like fuck this i don't know i didn't enjoy making it it was fun initially because um the experience it was fun but to get your to get your audio to be like perfection. I, I don't know. I didn't have fun doing it, but <laughs> I did make a second channel though, as an outlet, you know, for another healthy outlet instead of doing true crime stuff all the time. But yeah, the, the ASMR stuff is hard. What's up, Dina? are you doing today? It will be dark for us about, oh, for about two minutes. Yeah, I'm trying to, it's probably happening like right about now. All right, y'all. So let's start with the state's opening statements, uh, 40 minutes long. And yeah, let's just get into this. Appreciate you guys being here. I'm going to pop into this side and let me have the captions. Are the captions on? Yeah, the captions are on. I definitely need to learn more about it. I've seen a lot of comments saying it was self-defense, but I think the older man just kept floating, ignoring them, and none of this would have just happened. I, to me, to me, for what I've seen so far, I don't think it's self-defense, okay? For what I've seen so far, I don't think it's self-defense, but, you know, I have my eyes and ears open. <laughs> for what I've seen in the video, I'm just like... But I know we're going to have a lot of different opinions, and uh, it's okay. All right, let's watch. Shit. My audio is not set up. My bad, guys. Senseless and horrific acts of violence. Oh, no. What is this audio? Gah. Hold on. Did they fix the audio at some point? Something about looking for a phone. Jawan on his shorts, metallic clip. Okay, they do. Okay, I think I think the audio was low initially because he's just away from the microphone. Attorney, get to the microphone first and then start talking. <laughs> I'll boost it up just a little bit though. Okay. Senseless and horrific acts of violence. When all Nikolai had to do was walk away. I'm sorry, he wasn't at the microphone yet, but he said senseless and horrific acts of violence when all Nikolai had to do was walk away. Hi, Kitsune. That's what you're going to see in this case. You'll see he eventually did walk away, but not until after stabbing five people. That's what you're going to see in this case. You'll see he eventually did walk away, but not until he stabbed five people. As Judge Waterman said, my name is Carl Anderson. My co-counsel, Brian Smestad, and I represent the state of Wisconsin. I don't know. They haven't fixed audio yet. Let's see if I forward it a little bit. You're going to see the video. There you go. You're going to see the sequence of events. You're going to hear a lot in the video. You're going to hear people yelling at Nikolai over 20 times, some version of get away, go away. You hear the boys 
the teenagers yelling, get away, get away from us, get the fuck away, get back, get away from us, walk away, walk away. You're going to hear that there's another group of tubers, adults, who hear this and come over to help the boys. You're going to hear them yelling, go, get your ass and go, go, get your ass and go, 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 go. You're going to hear that Isaac's group and the group of adult tubers, I'll probably refer to them as the Carlson group throughout the trial, didn't know each other, still don't know each other. You're going to hear from both of those groups testify about what they saw. You're going to hear that there's six victims in this case, one that was punched. Oh, I was like, wait a second, six victims, but I forgot. Um, they said, okay, apparently there was a woman that was punched. It was not caught on video, though, because apparently, like, right when that happened, the cameraman had, like, swung the camera around to get his friend's reaction to, like, all the stuff that was going on. I have a lot of things to say about the cameraman, but we'll get there in a bit. Um, we don't see the punch. Now, initially, I was a little bit hesitant that a punch even happened. I just thought maybe they were just, like, lying, exaggerating. Um, but... There has been other things that I've noticed that, you know what, I do think it did happen. Whether it was a punch or maybe like a slap, maybe a shove. At first I thought, okay, maybe it was a shove. But then I was like, you know what, it could have been a slap. It could have been a punch. That could have happened because someone in my, someone in my chat mentioned something that, yeah, he did slap a woman too. Um, so a woman, one woman apparently allegedly got punched and another woman uh, did get stabbed. But the punch thing was not on the video, but... We'll, we'll go through it in a little bit. I don't want to just like spo like lay everything out on you guys right now. <laughs> Five that were stabbed. And you're going to hear from all those victims except Isaac Schumann. That's because on July 30th of 2022, Nikolai Mew killed him. It was the summer before Isaac's senior year of high school. He was living in Stillwater, Minnesota with his mom, stepdad, brother, and stepsister. He was looking forward to going to college after high school. The photo on his left is his last school photo from his junior year of high school. The photo in the middle was his last birthday. He went out to celebrate at a restaurant with his family when he turned 17. The photo on the right, he was showing off the new trailer he bought to his mom for his new car detailing business. On July 30, 2022, it was a nice day. The weather was in the 80s, perfect sunny day for tubing. You'll see body cam, but it was busy. There's a lot of tubers on the river. Isaac was tubing with five of his best friends. Alex Fang, Juwan Cockfield, Owen Pelican, Ryan Nelson, Landon Wire. And the last photo is Isaac. So this is the original group that the defendant, this is the defendant right here, this is the back of his head at least, um, had a confrontation with. So this is the first of the groups. Isaac, his friends called him Bike. These are, you'll see, uh, this is how they were dressed when they were on the river. These are screen grabs from that day. The other group you hear a lot about is the Carlson group. So I think this is the group that the women were with. Um, I recognized her. I think she got stabbed, and I think that may have been the other person that didn't get stabbed but got punched. I think that's Madison. I'm like just looking at the wait actually or is it this one right here it might be oh actually no it might be this one because I think she was blonde yeah she was blonde in sunglasses so that was the person that got stabbed I think and this is the person that allegedly got punched the only one who was stabbed out of Isaac's group was Isaac the rest of the people stabbed and punched were from the Carlson group Riley Madison was stabbed Dante Carlson was stabbed oh I thought he stabbed everyone from the teen group so this is the other person was stabbed. Oh, AJ is the yellow shorts guy. Oh my God, okay. AJ Martin was stabbed. Tony Carlson was stabbed. Madison Cohen was punched. The other group you'll hear a lot about is Nikolai Mew's group. Some of these folks you'll hear more about than others, likely. Ariel, you'll see him in the video of the incident. Gilma, I expect you'll hear testimony from her. Eric Von Williams, you may see in some body cam, hear testimony. Nikolai Mew, that's Sandy Mew, Nikolai's wife. 
time. Ernesto, you'll see in the incident video also. So Nikolai and Ernesto worked together. Um, a lot of these other people knew Nikolai through Ernesto or just met Nikolai that day. Yeah, I think the prosecutor started off kind of strong, but I mean, I think, <laughs> listen, presenting in front of a lot of people, it's tough, okay? It's tough. But I don't know. Maybe the passion is just not really there. <laughs> it's tough to do this job. Sergio, was, he's the far right. He wasn't actually in this picture, but he was the last member of that group. So all these groups were tubing on the Apple River. They're all out with friends. They're all drinking. This is a map of the Apple River. Tubers started at River's Edge up on the top right, and they kind of tube in this snaky U-shape down and then left and up. A lot of the tubers stop and did stop in this case at the hideaway. There's a bar there, there's a beach spot to hang out. The incident, the stabbings, occurred shortly before the tubers reached the 35 bridge that crosses over the river. My so right here. My area the Sunrise Bridge. And then the place where tubers exit is called village park exit and you'll hear that the only group of these three groups that made it to the exit was Nikolai's group. Yeah I think he's facing life in prison no parole. You'll hear that shortly before the incident the area was phoned got knocked in the water it was in a waterproof case. You'll hear testimony that he wasn't that worried about it. He said he has insurance for his phone, but Nikolai insisted on looking for it. So the group ends up waiting at the sand, out of the sandbar. Nikolai goes downstream. He's got goggles and snorkel. He's, he's going to look for a phone. Isaac's group is tubing, waiting downstream. And you'll hear them describe that this older guy is tubing next to their tubes in extremely shallow water getting really close to them, not really saying anything. He's got a, they all describe, will describe a strange look in his face. They're creeped out by him. You'll hear from several of them that he said something about looking for little girls. You'll hear from one or two that he said something about looking for a phone. I don't believe the little girls thing. I, I don't believe that. Now, there's going to be some things that I'm not going to believe from this group, and there's going to be a lot of things that I'm not going to believe from the other group. <laughs> I don't believe he said, I'm looking for little girls. Jawan, second from the left, filmed the main video in this case. I don't know, unless like they're harassing him and just being sarcastic and he's just trying to say something funny or stupid at the time or something, but I, I just don't, that's just something I just don't believe a normal person would just say, be like, yeah, I'm looking for little girls. <laughs> he also filmed a nine second video shortly before that main video. <clears throat> and in that nine second video, you'll see Juwan saying, he said he's looking for little girls, he's a raper. And Nikolai is walking away. He doesn't keep walking away. At the end of that video, he stops and he turns around. Two seconds later is when that main video starts. The video of the stabbings. <clears throat> You'll see at that start of the main video, Nikolai is walking towards a group of tubers. They're down in their tubes, the teenage boys, Isaac's group. In the beginning, when Nikolai's walking towards him, he's got his hand down on a pocket, uh, the right of his shorts. Right here. You'll hear from people from his group, that that's where he kept his knife. You'll see in the video that this, he then starts to run. He runs at the boys who are down in their tubes. That's the only time in this video you'll see Nikolai run, when he runs up on the group of teenage boys. Oh, true. He doesn't even run after stabbing five people, he walks away. There's his hand on that pocket. He's carrying a snorkel and goggles. Oh, you think maybe he was making a joke? That was the thing. I was like, maybe he was making a joke because he thought it was funny. <laughs> and that's why they were harping on it. I, to me, I just think it's really weird that someone would say that. But sometimes people do have odd humor, and they're just trying to fuck with people. That group in the background there, in the middle photo, that's the Carlson's group. And eventually come over in response to the yells of the kids. Nikolai puts his goggles in his mouth and grabs onto their tubes with two hands. You'll hear in the video, the boys are yelling, whoa, whoa, what's this guy doing, weirdo? 
Yeah, I don't I don't really understand this. This this to me is just like you're just being aggressive for no reason. You can see their reactions in the video. That's Alex Bang on the left. Nikolai drops his goggles and snorkel in the water. And that starts reaching in the water where they fall into the water. He starts walking around their tubes. They're yelling at him. And I do think that at this point, like, when he dropped his snorkel, just let him pick up his snorkel. I don't know. I, I think, like, just keep yelling and harassing him. I don't know why they did that. Just let him get his snorkel and just, just get the fuck out. <laughs> get away. Get away from us. Walk away. Like, let him get his snorkel first, and then once he gets his snorkel, I'm sure he'll, like, walk off and fuck off, right? They're also chirping at him. You'll hear Juwan saying, he's a pedophile. Nikolai says something back. You can't hear it in the video. He's standing, now Nick, this is facing downriver, so the direction they're tubing, that's that bridge going over the river in the back, background. Boys are yelling, get away. That's Isaac in the middle photo with the white. But I think at some point he did find his, did he end up finding a snorkel and then he left? Or sorry, did he end up fight, finding a snorkel and then they were telling him to get away? White half, purple chunks. That's Isaac again on the left photo, standing with his hands up, fingers splayed. You can see a gold bracelet on his left wrist. You can see that again later in the video. At this point in the video, you hear the boys start to cheer. And that's because the, you'll hear from them that the Carlsons, some adults, were coming This up. is a victim that died. Over to help. Those two people you see walking over are Madison and Dante. Madison's later punched, Dante's later stabbed. There's Isaac's bracelet. As Madison is walking over, she's yelling, go, go, go. Nikolai says, you'll hear it in the video, they took my snorkel. They took my snorkel! <laughs> Sir, you dropped your snorkel in the water. Madison's pointing and yelling for him to go. You can see in that pocket on his shorts, a metallic clip. His pocket knife. Madison's pointing and yelling at him to go. Nikolai turns his back to her. Looks back at the group of boys in the right photo. She drags him back away from the boys back to her. We hear from her, that's why she went over there in the first place was to try to get him away from the boys. I'm sorry, but like this is not de-escalating the situation. Coming to the situation and then yelling at him and then I see her touching him right there. That's not how you de-escalate a fucking situation. Her coming in just did not help at all. She keeps telling him to go. He starts smiling, he waves upstream towards his group. More women from the Carlson group come over. That's Riley in the middle, in that middle photo. She ends up getting stabbed. Right photo, you can see Nikolai puts his hand on that knife in his pocket again. He's smiling. The boy I'm also confused why he didn't just leave at this point. I don't know. Are snorkels like really expensive or something? Are you going to be able to cover, recover your snorkel? Maybe it already floated down the river. I'm also confused why he was trying to find a missing phone in the river with snorkels. Um, especially when the person said that they had insurance on it. It's like, I don't know. Just forget about it. I don't, I feel like it's, you're, it's going to be hard to find a phone just floating down. Um, I don't know. I think he should just left. They're laughing. I don't know why he's here. They're drug 17 year old boys. They have nothing in their hands. As you'll see in the video, they're laughing and pointing at Nikolai. He's smiling. And then you'll see his hands start moving. You can't quite see what they're doing. You can see they come together in front of his waist. You can see behind him, there's nothing but clear and empty water. So at this point, he already has the knife out, but he's not really brandishing it. He's keeping it hip level so no one can see that it's out. As Madison and Riley, Two women are talking to him, telling him to leave. He takes out his knife. Let's be real here. They're not talking at him to tell him to leave. They're yelling at him. <laughs> Opens it, blade up, still smirking. Looking straight at the women. You'll not see Nikolai raise his knife and brandish it. True. You'll not hear him yell at anyone to get back. Yep. You'll not see him say anything at this point in the video after he takes his knife out. You'll not see him try to take a step back or walk away. Hi, Fierce. You will see him looking around, smirking, while continuing to hold the knife down by his side. 
While holding the knife, he looks around, looks back over at the boys. You can see Riley leaning over, trying to keep his attention. Nothing but clear water behind him. You'll see Madison's got sunglasses on. Some more people from the Carlson group come over. That's AJ in the yellow swim trunks. He gets ultimately stabbed, you'll see. So he's the one that gets stabbed first, I think. Uh, does he have a duty to retreat? In Wisconsin, he doesn't, but I did hear that the jury could consider um, whether or not retreat was an option in order to avoid conflict um, when making their deliberation. Uh, apparently, there's case law in Wisconsin that allows that. So we'll see what the judge says in jury instruction. That's Dante in the right photo. He gets stabbed. This entire video is three minutes and 23 seconds long. It's not a very long video, but from the point in the video when witnesses say Nikolai punched Madison until you see Nikolai walking off after having stabbed five people is only about 20 to 25 seconds. It happens very fast in the video. You'll see that when you see it played in real time. You'll see the boys are loud, they're boisterous. You'll hear that in the video. There's a lot of yelling. Kind of file, he's looking for little girls. Go, get away from us. Hey, Juju. You'll not hear anyone in the video threaten Nikolai. You'll not see anyone raising fists to him before it turns physical. You won't see anyone besides Nikolai with a weapon. You won't see the boys touch Nikolai until after stabbings start. The next portions of the still frames is moments before the witnesses say it turned physical when Nikolai punched Madison in the face, who was one of the women standing in front of him. The Carlson say he punched Madison. The boys, the teenagers, say he punched the blonde girl. They didn't know her name, they didn't know each other. Now, at first I was like, I don't know if I believe that he punched her. It seems kind of weird that he would just like punch the woman that's like yelling at him. Like, yeah, she had her hands on him. Like she had his hands, her hands placed on like his chest, on his arm. Um, and she was like telling him to go, go, go. The other woman had like her phone, like waving, like sort of in his face. And I was like, eh, him like escalating to punch. He could be unhinged and could have escalated to punch, but I don't know if I believe it. And I was like, you know what I thought maybe what happened is like, maybe he just like shoved her away. But I'm starting to think that he may have made contact with her face. Maybe he just like shoved her face or something like that, because at some point she was wearing sunglasses. And then apparently after the alleged punch, where did her sunglasses go? <laughs> her sunglasses are no longer on her face anymore so that's why i'm starting to think okay so maybe he did one definitely make contact with her two maybe slapped or punched her or shoved her face or something like that um and apparently one of his friends one of the defendant's friends went up there and testified and he did say that nikolai made contact with the woman um i think he said he shoved her but I don't know where, like, was it shoved in the face? Was it shoved somewhere? Like, I guess shoved her, in a, shoved her in a way that her glasses, like, fell off. It happens fast. Remember, up to this point, Nikolai already has the knife in his hand. After it pans, from the last frames I showed you, AJ was walking over in the yellow swim trunks. The video pans back to the middle. You see Madison and Riley are standing in front of Nikolai. The video pans to the left. You see the boys still laughing. That's Isaac in the background of the middle photo. He's pretty much just standing there in the background. Hey, good guy. Then you see everybody react and you hear it. You hear the change in the tone. And this is when witnesses say Nikolai punched Madison in the face. You hear Madison testify. Hi, Toy Box. Yeah, um, the witness is going to testify and they'll play the entire video. Um, I also do have it up. I mean, do you, do you just want to start with the video? I could start with you guys with the video, but I just want to listen to the opening statements first. I don't know. And Nikolai punched her in the face. Madison's sunglasses are no longer on her head. We are testifying. Yep, her sunglasses aren't there. So that's why I think that he did push her, shoved her, hit her in a way that had her sunglasses pop off. Um, and then additionally, if you look really closely here, the person that pushes him back is actually her friend, the female friend that came with her. So let's say if I'm with another chick and she's my close friend, she gets pushed by a guy hit punch whatever my reaction could be to shove the guy back and i think that's the person that shoved him it was the woman that shoved him and that's who who fell back this guy is over here because he's like whoa 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 like what the fuck is going on and maybe he's trying to help her as well but i think the person that actually did shove him was her woman friend right there 
They got knocked off and hit her. After Nikolai punches Madison, Dante, her friend, punches Nikolai. You can see down the right frame. Again, Madison's sunglasses, no longer there. Nikolai goes down in the water. You can see in the right photo, he gets slapped. It's shallow water, his butt's in the water, essentially. That's AJ in those photos. Right, because you can still get hit in the face in a way that doesn't leave like a scar, bruise, um, swelling. It could be something that's like light enough, but still you shouldn't make contact with someone's face, right? So I'm not saying that like he decked her to the point where she was all bloody and bruised up and shit like that, but I'm saying that like he probably hit her in a way that it, one, like sunglasses popped off, and two, maybe didn't leave a bruise. You know, maybe it was like an open handed thing. Pushing on Nikolai's back. You'll see that the push doesn't really do anything. Nikolai gets right up. So this is when the first stab happens with the yellow shorts guy. In his right hand, lunges at AJ as AJ's going to push him again. As AJ is pushing Nikolai, Nikolai stabs into his lower abdomen with the blade up, slices out his stomach. You can see in that right photo, he just missed his throat chin. In the middle photo, you can see AJ's stomach opened up on the bottom, right above the swim trunks. From the push from AJ, Nikolai goes down, lands in his butt in the water again. You won't see anyone in the video pounce on him at this point or approach him, try to hit him when he's down in the water. You see him try to grab at Tony. It's Tony, you'll hear that's Tony in the jean shorts. Tony walks by him. Tony has his back to Nikolai. And you'll hear Tony yelling in the video, get back, get back. You hear testimony from Tony. Wait, so when did Isaac Schumann get stabbed? He thought he was breaking up a fist fight. So he's yelling at somebody off screen to get back. He has his back to Nikolai. Nikolai gets up, still with the knife in his hand. That person in the top left of the left photo is Riley. So after Tony, you hear him yelling, directing somebody off screen to get back. He turns, over, turns to Nikolai and he's yelling, get back, get back. And you see him pointing in the video and yelling. And you see Nikolai's hand going back with the knife in it. He makes a stabbing motion off screen. I think this is when he stabs the girl. Tony's yelling at him, get back. And then you see Riley's just been stabbed. Yeah, that's when Riley gets stabbed. So Riley's the one in this um, blue bikini right here. That group in the background there that Nikolai's facing with nobody between him and that group is his group. That's his group of tubers. Hey, Mina. Tony, you'll see, you hear from him when he testifies that he's just yelling at Nikolai to go. Nikolai doesn't. Again, that's his group. In the right photo, the guy with the aviators, that's his friend, Ariel, almost up to Nikolai. Nikolai doesn't walk back to his group. Instead, he turns to Tony with the knife in his right hand, he stabs at him twice. Yeah, so he still keeps the knife at waist level and he just does like some really quick jabs. You can see Riley bleeding in the background. Ariel, Nikolai's friend is there as he's lunging the knife at Tony. So this is the story so far. Um, apparently his Nikolai, the defendant right there, the defendant friend lost a phone and so he went down to try to find it with like some like little like um, snorkeling gear. So he's like snorkeling around. I don't know. Something happened between him and the teens. He lunges towards the teens. He like tries to grab like the tubing, maybe like touches one of the person's leg. They're calling him weirdo. They're calling him PDF. They're calling like all these like nasty names. And another group comes and the defendants thought that group was going to come and back him up because he's like, oh, they took my snorkeling um that group comes but then starts yelling at him and saying like you know go 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 leave 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 and he's kind of just standing there he's smirking he's like got his hand over like the knife in his pocket and and then we hear like a lot of people like kind of like yelling and jeering at him right the camera swings a little bit and apparently that's when the alleged punch happened where he allegedly punched one of the women and that's why all the shoving starts and all the non like all the shit that happens afterwards now the alleged punch was not shown on the camera but i'm starting to think that it did happen because well one the woman didn't woman, the woman had glasses and then all of a sudden she didn't have glasses anymore um there was people in this because um, like 
people in this group, they could be lying, right? They could be lying to kind of like bolster their defense. However, there was someone on his, um, from his tubing group, one of his friends that say that like, oh, I saw him like shove one of the women and that's when they pushed him into the water. So I'm starting to think that, okay, it probably did fucking happen. That hand there on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see it more clearly in the next still shots. Isaac goes to shove Nikolai, see the gold bracelet. As he's shoving Nikolai, Nikolai lunges out with the knife. Nikolai kind of stumbles back from the bush, comes back with his knife covered in blood and dripping in blood. You can see the women recoiling from him. Nikolai ends up by his friend Ariel as he's stumbling from the bush. You don't see Dante get stabbed in the video, but I expect you'll see evidence and testimony that it was after this. Right, so I'm, I'm wondering what happened after this. It seems like people started backing off. Why, why, why did the stabbings continue? It's not until this point in the video, after he stabbed AJ, Riley, Tony, and Isaac, that you hear people start react and realize what's going on to the video. You hear that they all suddenly saw AJ, and you'll see in a second what they saw. But up until that point, people didn't realize that Nikolai was stabbing people. You'll hear in the video the shock and disbelief as what just happened. The camera pans around, you see Nikolai looking in the direction to where AJ and Isaac are. AJ is in the water, holding in his guts. Isaac's friends scatter and run. Juan, who's filming, runs back. Wait, I think, is that Isaac right there? Nikolai walks away. You can see at this point, if you recall the photo of Dante, he's got dark chunks on the bottom, light on top. He's got his hands on his torso and he's looking down. Nikolai continues to walk away. He walks by his friend Ariel. On that right photo, he's standing in front of Ernesto. He walks by Ernesto. On the right there, that's Alex Bing running to Isaac, who is collapsed in the water. You see AJ struggling. That's Nikolai by Ernesto. Nikolai continues walking. The camera pans away, and the pans back, Nikolai's off in the distance. Pans down a little bit, and that's what the middle photo is showing. And then you see, in the right, sorry, in the left photo, you see he's approaching the right shore. Camera pans down, pans back up, he's walking away from the right shore. Yeah, the crazy thing is, um, the people in his tubing group testified and said that he came back and... <laughs> He didn't tell them what happened. Like, he didn't tell them that he stabbed, like, a bunch of people. Um, they continued tubing down the river, and they were trying to exit. Uh, he got dressed up, and that was it. <laughs> they didn't know that he was the one that was stabbing people. There was, like, a woman in his group that was like, yeah, I was, like, kind of scared because there was, like, you know, we thought it was, like, an employee or something like that. Um, but she didn't know that it was someone in her group that was the one that stabbed people. I, I, I don't know. I guess I find it weird that they wouldn't have been like, hey, what happened, Nikolai? Like, are you good? Like, and then he would just been like, I don't know. Like, yeah, it's, we're fine. <laughs> that part kind of gets me off. Like, so he just went back to his group and was like, okay, let's leave. Peace. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, okay, so Rain says self-defense only applies, I would say, for AJ and Riley. I, I was thinking for the yellow shorts guy when you pitched it. But then I was like, mm, actually, no. I, I don't... I don't no, I don't think so anymore because I think self-defense would have been justified um, if, let's say, they all jumped on him and were, like, kicking him down. They wouldn't let him leave, and they all piled on him. But these were, like, it was like one person was taking their turn to do something to him. You know, they're all piling at him, and he was like, he got his knife, and he started wielding it around like that. Then I would be like, yeah, fuck it, you know? <laughs> he was getting pummeled by, like, 20 people, sure. But, like, this is, like, I don't know. I think he knew that these are just, like, people that... Because initially, like, he got pushed, he got, like, shoved, right? He got slapped, right? 
I think it would have been different if he was like punched and like he was like pummeled like consistently and they're all piling at him at the same time. Um, also, I think he could have just fucking left. Like being around a bunch of like rowdy anyone, I don't care if they're teenagers, they're like adults, I don't care if they're all women. Being around a rowdy group of anyone is just pretty fucking nerve wracking. I would just been like, shit, I'm fucking leaving. Oh my God, this is not the fight I want to fight. But no, he was standing there the entire time. He had his hand grazed on his knife like he was like ready to do something because they fucking made his, they fucking insulted him. Um, I think his ego was just at stake and he was just like, you know what? I'm gonna wait till these motherfuckers fuck up and I'm gonna get him. I, that's the feeling that I get from that. But Isaac's group and the Carlson's group start helping each other, try to get to shore. Get the victim. Like no, no, like no doubt. Like the people that were humiliating him and stuff, like they just went too far. They shouldn't have. But I mean, we're talking about words here. We're talking about words versus the guy who just kept escalating things. I think he escalated when he ran at them and like grabbed their tubing thing. I think he escalated when he punched, shoved, hit the woman i think he escalated when he took out his knife like everything was just him escalating it uh were everyone else involved were they being pieces of shits yeah sure um yeah don't be like fucking like humiliating someone um in a group mentality um especially the women that came over i don't know why you think you're de-escalating by coming over yelling at him and then putting your hands on him that's just like what the fuck are you doing you're making things worse um, if you were coming over and be like, hey, like, what's going on? Oh, you're trying to find your snorkel? You know what? Why don't you go over there? I'll try to find your snorkel for you. Like, here, why don't you just leave? Like, at, there's ways to de-escalate. But I don't know how old these women are. Maybe they're in their early 20s, mid-20s. I don't know. Maybe they're really fucking drunk and they just wanted to join in. Like, they shouldn't have been hounding him like that. That was just, like, really fucking weird. For sure. Like, I think it's possible for multiple people in the group to be wrong, but... I don't think the stabbing was still justified. Um, I think it would have been different if he had the knife out. He was like, hey, don't fucking touch me. Don't come at me. If you come at me, if you touch me, I'm going to stab you. Then I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. They came after him and he, they knew he had a fucking knife. But he had it hidden at his waist the entire time. Like he was just waiting for them to do something because he had his feelings hurt. I don't know. And it sucks because, you know, um, had maybe the teens not continue like hounding him, escalating it like by like yelling names at him, it w probably wouldn't have happened this way. But I mean, he was also escalating as well. It was like still like everyone was just escalating it. But then one person just decided to whip out a fucking knife, you know, and just like stab all these people. Isaac and AJ were collapsed. Nikolai starts walking back from the right over across to where his group is at the sandbar. Camera pans around the water. It's wh water's running red. It's Isaac's hat floating by. Nikolai is almost back to his group. And see people trying to help AJ and Isaac. We can't decide what someone believes a life threatening situation. We can never, ever, ever, ever get into the mind of someone, but just because we can't get in the mind of someone it still can't mean like the jury can't make their judgment, right? If we couldn't get in the mind of someone and really truly assess it by not being able to get in someone's mind, then what's the point of the whole court system, right? We have to look at like what we see on here, the evidence, the facts and stuff like that and make assessment based on that. Because I think the jury, I mean, let's say the judge gives them an instruction like, okay, like, you know, if the guy could have retreated, um, you can totally, you know, you can totally, um, that could be attributed to like your uh, jury deliberation, whether or not you think he's guilty or not, right? I think the jury is going to be like, yo, this guy could have just fucking left. Why didn't he retreat? Now, it would have been different if he was trying to egress and the group was per was preventing him from leaving. Let's say he tried leaving multiple times and they're like, no, no, no. And they're like circling him. Then fuck that. Yeah, go fucking stab them because they're like, they're not letting you leave. They're coming at you and they're hitting you, blah, blah, blah. But he could have just like fucking walked away. I think at that point, it was just like an ego thing, you know? It's like, like I, I imagine too, if I was in my 50s something and I had a bunch of like dipshit fucking kids like yelling at me, I'd be fucking pissed too. I'd be like, what the fuck? But you just got to choose your battles, you know, correctly, you know, or just don't bat just don't battle at all. How about that? Just don't battle. Just get the fuck out of there. Um, just don't battle. I would battle if someone broke into your house, though, and, you know, you wanted to gun them down. Yeah, go fucking battle then. Right. But this is like, I don't know, just fucking leave. Like, it sucks. It sucks. You're, you're going to you're gonna be hurt for a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days. Uh, you're going to hate teens for a little bit. And it sucks. But you just got to deal with it. You see. Yeah, the video guy, the, fuck the video guy. The video guy, so I think a lot of people see this and they're like, ill, rowdy teens, they got what they deserve. And then you see the video guy. The video guy, he went into selfie mode after his friend got stabbed and was like trying to film his reaction. I was like, listen, I've heard of shock, but like, yeah, it's very off-putting. Um, <laughs> it's very fucking off-putting. A couple people from the Carlson's group start to call 911. Why did they call him a PDF? That's right. Yeah, I mean, they shouldn't have done that, right? They shouldn't have done that. Um, I think they called him that because they were like, ew, what's this weird guy doing here snorkeling and like, 
I don't know, like a foot, two feet of water. Like, that's weird. So they probably thought that was weird. Like, oh, what are you looking at? What are you trying to do? And then he ran up at them and he like grabbed their tubing and then like sort of touched one guy's leg. And that's when they escalated and said like, oh, you're a PDF. You're looking for little girls. Like just dumb shit like that. But they were just being fucking dumb. Like, I don't know. I think that like, I'm trying to remember when we were teens, right? When we were teens, people just did and said dumb things. Um, and sometimes you pay for the consequences, but I don't think the consequences of getting stabbed or like getting murdered here. I just think <laughs> it's, it's too much. We hear from four people that were stabbed, and none of them saw Nikolai with a knife. They didn't notice he had a knife. They didn't know. They thought they were punched until they looked down and see all the blood. There's not going to be any testimony on what Isaac saw. If he saw Tony get stabbed right in front of him when he went to shove Nikolai, because Isaac's not going to be here to tell what he saw. You hear that some good Samaritans who were also tubing, some nurses, tended to AJ and Isaac until law enforcement and paramedics arrived. AJ, as a result, was disemboweled. He had to have emergency surgery. He was in the hospital for nearly a month and had to have numerous follow-up surgeries. Riley, who was in the bikini in the middle photo, was stabbed in the side. It sliced her diaphragm. She had to have emergency surgery. Tony was stabbed twice. One, I'll describe how he kind of blocked it. He thought it was a punch coming in, so it just kind of scratched him. But the other one went into his torso. Isaac was stabbed in the chest and the torso, cut clean through two ribs, and sliced his heart. Yeah, when, when was Isaac stabbed? I, he died almost immediately. Isaac was stabbed in the torso, cut and clean through his true ribs, slicing across his heart. When did Isaac get stabbed? He died almost immediately. He was 17 years old. Dante was also stabbed in the torso. Nikolai returned to his group. You'll hear from people in his own group. He didn't really say what happened. He said, they took my knife. They stayed at the sandbar for a while, until a little while, sometime after law enforcement arrived. Multiple members of his group called 911. He did not. They reported they didn't know what happened, but multiple people were injured. One person from their group, Eric Von Williams, went over to help with the wounded. He also spoke with law enforcement when they got to the scene. He's the only one who did. At some point, Nikolai tells his group that they should just float to the exit. So they floated to the exit. Oh no, Roscoe. That's scary. Um, yeah, apparently, um, I think in Texas it's really cloudy, so you can't really see the eclipse. I don't know. That's what Dennis told me. You'll see that when law enforcement arrived on the scene, it was chaotic. The information they had was that an unknown subject stabbed five people. People didn't know where he was. They're all looking at AJ and Isaac and trying to help each other to shore. Nobody paid attention to where the guy with the knife went. There's dozens of tubers that continue to go through. There's tubers running through the woods trying to find the guy who was stabbing people. Isaac and AJ, there was no place to get to them by road. Officers had to go to the nearest. They went to the 35 bridge and then they had to wait upstream to get to them and float them out on tubes. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Like getting to the victims. Oh my God, I didn't even think about that. I was just like, oh, just, you know, just pull up and just ride up into the woods. How do we get to them? You'll see that when officers get there, there's bystanders, just other troopers intermixed with victims, intermixed with witnesses. Some of the witnesses were so emotional they couldn't even say or articulate what happened at first. So, Juwan filmed the video. He alerts law enforcement that he's got a video of it. And. <laughs> Juwan is the camera guy. Oh, God, Juwan. I'm sure he, he, he has to regret putting the camera in selfie mode in that situation. He pauses it at an image of Nikolai from the video. And that office, that deputy, circulates it around to other law enforcement who are responding. Officers go down to the exit. One deputy walks right by Nikolai and his group because he's looking for somebody who matches that photo. Was the report's all that they had where he was by himself. Deputy walks right by Nikolai, but then 
two citizens, one employee of River's Edge who had the photo, and a friend of the owner of River's Edge alerted law enforcement that they think this guy matches the photo. Nikolai is apprehended. <coughs> Members of the group asked, why is he being detained? They didn't even know. That's so crazy to me how he just went back to the group. <laughs> he went back to the group and didn't even tell them. That's why, like, the people that were with him were like, what's going on? Why, why are they taking you? It's so weird. You have the wrong guy. This is how he was dressed when they law enforcement contact with him. You'll see in the body cam, Clyde doesn't really show any emotion when he's taken into custody. You'll see a video of Sheriff Knudsen. And Nikolai is in the back of a squad car. Sheriff Knudsen goes to check on him. You know, how are you doing? You're doing all right. Nikolai says, what's going on? I hear somebody got stabbed. And I fit the description. Nikolai is later told by officer. Do you think that he planned on doing something bad to start with? You know, I try not to go down that route unless there's, like, evidence that points to that. Like, oh, like, did he wake up that morning and was like, yeah, I'm going to stab some fucking people. Let's go. Like, I, I don't know. I try not to go down that route unless uh, maybe they recover some journal entries that he wanted to hurt people. And it's been like that for a long time where he told people or something like that. There's no point even entertaining that. That he's under arrest for homicide and attempted homicide. Hey, Sal. Ultimately, Nikolai is interviewed by Lieutenant Randy Hart. That video, in that video, you'll see the recording of that interview. His version varies drastically from the video. Wait, Sheriff Nuxon checked on Nikolai after he was in the back of the squad car. Nikolai said, what's going on? I hear someone got stabbed and I fit the description. <laughs> oh, God, I feel like this would not look good for the jury. So when he went back to his group, he didn't tell the group what happened. He said that the teenagers took his knife when in reality, he like threw the knife and discarded somewhere. But they did find the knife, though, and they were able to do DNA swabs on it. <laughs> he floated down the river with his group, got dressed up. And then when they detained him, he's like, what? What happened? I, I fit the description. Oh, really? Wow. Oh, gosh. It doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good. Um, now, is it possible for someone to act like this when it was a perfect self-defense? Yes, I think it's possible. But this just looks really bad. <laughs> the interview is about 45 minutes long. We'll get to see that video, but I'll highlight some portions of it. When Nikolai is interviewed, he's not told there's a video. Oh, you know what? Did he not know... <sighs> Did he not know the teens were recording? He should have known because the camera, I mean, it was the, the kid had it out. Or sorry, not kid. I, I think he's like, what, 17 or 18 years old? I don't remember how old he was. Um, the dude had it out. Maybe he forgot. Lieutenant Hart shows him a screenshot, that one that went around the law enforcement. She asks if he knew that they took his picture. He says, no, he didn't know that. And then he asks if she has any other pictures of him. What other pictures did they give you of me? So up to this point, Nick White told his group they should leave the scene of stabbing. He put on the jacket, had the sunglasses. You know what it reminds me of? Um, JJ says, like, he's done this before, surely, stabbing so many people quickly, knife at waist height, etc. Uh, it reminds me of like when I watch TV shows or movies and they do like those assassinations in prison. So like you have someone that like makes like a shank and then they like like try to like sneak up to someone and they like quickly like stab them and keep the knife at like waist length. I don't know. It just reminds me of like those like prison stabbings. Tried to walk by law enforcement at the exit. He said to Sheriff Knutson, I heard somebody got stabbed. And he was told he was under arrest for homicide and attempted homicide. So you'll see in the video, Lieutenant Hart is explaining he doesn't need to speak with her. Nikolai responds, or I can think it was, uh, it was, it was self-defense, self-defense. There's lots of people uh, that came to me, self-defense, and they produced two weapons, one I took from them. And that's the only thing I tell you. They were, they hit me, they were on top of me. That's, I don't remember anything after that. I just remember I ran away. Yeah, that doesn't look good. There's a lot of people, yeah, they came at me self-defense. They produced two weapons when nobody had any weapons. I don't know. There was like a can of like, there was like a, like a seltzer can. There were some sunglasses. You'll see that Nikolai repeats over and over throughout the interview that they pulled knives on him. And because of that, he feared for his life. He also repeatedly says they knocked his goggles off his face. He says they're trying to pull his swim trunks down. 
And uh, they are uh, snorkeling, so they took my snorkel away, they threw it in the water, they grabbed my pants. One wanted to pull my pants down, and I grabbed onto them. And I don't know who that kid was, but he produced, he had a knife on, on him, and there was another knife, a longer knife, looked like a kitchen knife. They came, they grabbed my snorkel, and they threw it in the water. Those goggles are lost, they took them, they grabbed them off my face. So he just literally lied about all the interaction? <laughs> I don't know. I think I think honesty goes a long, long way um, when it comes to the jury. Because I don't know. I feel like when you have someone who goes up there just like lies about like a lot of stuff, you're just like, okay, like what the fuck? Is Nikolai say repeatedly throughout the interview that they pulled knives on him? He says he did not have a knife. I feared for my life. There was the truth. And they started hitting me, pointing, pointed a knife at me, and another kid pointed a knife. I thought that was it for me. So actually, I took it from from one of the young kids, and I think that's when I swung back. When you watch the video, the only thing you'll see in other people's hands in that video are drinks, cell phones, and a vape pen. You'll hear testimony from both Isaac's group and the Carlson's group that none of them had knives. He fly again. And one had it in his hand, so I took his hand and I bent it. I poked him with his own hand, and I took him from his hand, and then I swung. So I don't know who I hit. I just know that I took the knife from, from one of those kids. Like why he hasn't countersued for assault? Like why he hasn't even why he isn't just sued in general for assault and defamation, um, <laughs> right? Because he's got this lawyer bill that he's got to worry about for his murder trial. Uh, that's probably a lot of money to sue someone. Um, and then as for defamation, I mean, it was all within like a group setting in a small setting. It wasn't like they called him a pedophile and all that, and like disseminate on like the internet's and all that. Um, yeah, I don't know. He probably just has a lot of attorney fees that he's worrying about. He's probably just focusing on defending himself <laughs> before going after them. Now, maybe going after them if he wins this, maybe he will. Lieutenant Hart asks, um, did you have a knife with you? No, no, absolutely no. Nikolai says he's telling the truth that he does not know where his knife was. He says I had, he says he had one earlier to cut the string for the tubes right at the beginning. I left it on the, I don't even know where at, what I did with it. I either gave it to one of the people or I put it in my truck. To tell you the truth. I have a question. Do you even need a knife to cut the string on the tubes? Wouldn't they tie it in a way where it's easy to untie it without having to cut it every time? Because apparently um, one of his friends testified and said that he was the one that told Nikolai to bring a knife because they wanted to cut the rope off the tubing. But it's like, I don't know. I feel like uh, wouldn't it just be easier just to, like untie it? Wouldn't they tie it in a way that makes it easy to untie? I don't know. I, I've only been tubing once. Truth, I don't even know. I don't even know where it's at to tell you the truth. Maybe one of the bags we had with it, with us, it may have been in, uh, I don't know, maybe I left it, put it back in the car. It really says he, everything happened fast. He doesn't know why they attacked him. I don't even know why they took my snorkel. I don't know why they wanted to pull my pants down. I don't know why they're being so mean. Why did they want to scare me with a knife? They're scaring people on the river. It's a family-oriented river with knives and what they did. I just grabbed the kid's knife. I didn't even know I was holding it right. I grabbed it from him because he tried to poke me with it. So I feared for my life. He says it over and over. They're pushing me, shoving. I tripped. I fell down. I got up, and that's where I saw one of the kids there, the closest kid with the knife, and I grabbed it from him. Again, you'll hear he was already told he was under arrest for homicide. Nikolai asked Lieutenant Hart, so what happened? Can you tell me what happened? Oh, Nikolai. Should have asked for your lawyer, man. I don't know why you were talking to them. <laughs> Lieutenant Hart says, yes. Four people went to the hospital with injuries. Nikolai says, Oh God. Yeah, no, I don't have an issue with him having a pocket knife. Um, I was just bringing it up why, you know, why he had the pocket knife to begin with. If we believe his friend, um, I don't think it's unusual to have a pocket knife. At first I was like, a knife? When you're, going, when you're going in the water rafting? Like, what do you need a knife for? But then I was thinking like, okay, maybe you need to cut some rope or something. And lo and behold, he did need to cut some rope. But um, yeah, I don't think it's like a big deal that he had like a pocket knife on him. He had like a gun on him. I'd be like, okay, do you really need a gun when you're going tubing? Tenor Hart says, and one person died. Nikolai says, who oh, no. <coughs> Tenor says, I don't know their names or their genders. I don't know. And Nikolai asks, is that because they fought each other? Was it because they fought each other? <sighs> Can you see this in the video of Nikolai walking off to the right shore before walking back to his group? You'll hear from Gilma Costanza. 
was one of the tutors in his group, that as he walked back after the incident, he did not walk back directly to the group, he walked over to the shore across from them and threw something under the bank. Yeah, so someone from his group possibly saw him throwing the knife away. This is, uh, you'll hear from Chuck Coleman from the Sheriff's Office. It's a 3D rendering, this is a bird's eye view of it. These are approximate locations. You'll hear on where things happened. The river in this image is flowing downstream, or down to the bottom. So the bridge would be below this image. <coughs> the, white the white dot is approximately where the boys were when Nikolai first made contact with them. So orange is the defendant's tubing group. They were up here. So he went down here to look for the missing cell phone, bought the snorkel with him. Um, this is where the initial contact happened with the other group. Um, the Carson tubing group is where the women came over and the other two stabbed victims. And then this is, what is this? Oh, this is where the attack happened down here. I mean, look how far he is from his group. I don't know why he didn't just like just went back to his group. I don't know. At least call for reinforcement or something. <laughs> Um, like, hey, I have a bunch of teens there. Maybe they stole the phone or they won't let me get my snorkeling gear back. Can y'all come with me and just help me get my snorkeling gear back? Or I don't know, call for, th there's like park police, isn't there? Get the park police, get them to help you. Or just be like, fuck it, I'll just have to buy a new one on Amazon. Shit, that sucks. They drip down a little bit. The Carlson's group is that pink dot. They also continue to float down. So at the time of the incident, they were more kind of uh, parallel with Isaac's group. And then orange dot is the sandbar. You know, you'll see in the video you hear that the Nik Nikolai's group was. That star, Hi, here, that's where law enforcement found the knife. Hello, good work. <laughs> Hello, you've been watching this since, oh, since day one. Uh, do you think the state's going to rest today? This is that knife that was found on the shore. You'll hear that this knife was sent to Wisconsin State Crime Lab. Tested positive for blood. It was compared to DNA samples of the five people that were stabbed. It had DNA, Dante, and Isaac on it. By close to trial, you'll see that these were senseless and horrific acts of violence, and all Nikolai had to do was walk away. At the close of trial, the state will ask you to find Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree intentional homicide of Isaac Schumann. Attempted first green intentional homicide of Ryan Madison. AJ Okay, that's the state. Now let's listen to the defense opening statements. Um, 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 let's see what he says. <coughs> Nick Mew standing in the river with 13 strangers. 13 drunk, angry strangers. 13 against one. They yelled and they screamed in order to attract a crowd. They got a crowd. They told lies to make the crowd angry. I mean, he also told lies as well, though. He told the new crowd that they took my snorkel, which I think in the video, you can clearly see him dropping his snorkel, I think. He's looking for little girls. He's looking for little girls. They layered their lies. They made them louder to make the crowd more angry. He's a predator. He's a predator. They chanted. They pulled on him. They closed the space around him. They got up in his face and they pushed him. Somebody else pushed him. And they pointed and they pushed and they pushed and they pushed. And when he put up his left hand, when he put up his left hand to block and protect himself, because they're in his space, in his face. Oh, so he's saying he put his left hand up to block himself. Everyone else is saying that he pushed, punch, whatever the, the woman. He puts up his left hand to protect himself. But how did he do it in a way where her sunglasses popped off? And then they got violent. They got violent. They knocked a grown man punched him, knocked him into the water. And when he's down in the water, they come up on him and they hit him again when he's hey, down Lucas. in the water. Hey, Panda. When he tries to get up out of the water, they attack him from the front, 
smack him across the front of the face while somebody else comes from behind and starts pushing him down. In that moment, he feared for his life. And he responded in self-defense. Let me show you what they did. Dante Carlson, who had earlier come over into that group, right? his dad had sent him over to help Nick. But the crowd got Dante going, and he was, it didn't matter. He was going to hit him. And when the opportunity arose, as Dante Carlson told you, will tell you, he laid him out. Knocks a grown man back off of his feet, where it's not just his butt. You'll see on the video, it's his shoulder, it's his head. I don't know. It looks like it was the woman that pushed him. Now look at her, her hand movement. I, I just, I don't, it, to me, it doesn't look like he was the one that pushed him. And he goes into the water. He didn't have a measuring stick. He wasn't figuring out what the height of the water is. He went in the water because they hit him into the water. And when he's down, you'll see, he's down in the water. And Dante Carlson, who punched him with his right hand, right? He was so confident. Okay, that's a slap. <laughs> he was so confident. Had his beer in his left hand. And then he's given a beat down with his right hand. He then runs around him as, Don as Nick is falling into the water. And he's in the water. He runs around him with the beer in his hand because he knows he's got his group around him. And then he comes around and he smacks him again. You can see in the first photo, you can see the shadow of Dante's arm coming across. And you can see it hits him across the face and across the ear. That's not just a slap. That's a full hand. You'll watch slap. the video. It knocks him down. And then when he's down, he's down in the water, you'll see A.J. Carlson, who you'll hear tells you that he came over there to mediate but for whatever reason, maybe it's because of a crowd, maybe it's because of a mob, maybe it's some other mentality. But when this happens, he sees this old man down on the ground. He doesn't go to help him. He goes to push him from behind. And while he's pushing him from behind, look in the upper corner there. That's Dante's arm. You can see in the middle slide, that's Dante's head, hand smacking Mew across the front of his head. And then you'll see on the third slide, that's where he's extending through. So confident, he's going to beat this old man down that he keeps the drink in his hand. That's the close-up where you can see through there, Dante Carlson hitting Nick Mew in the face while his friend attacks him from behind. I, I just think that the defense just has to be careful um, with, like, sticking to the facts and not embellishing when you don't need to. Because um, we can see clearly what's happening right now, right? Like, it looks really bad. Um, but when he's saying that, like, he punched him when you could see it's like an open hand thing. Like, I don't know. Then, like, the jury might be like, oh, okay, so this guy... I don't know, man. This guy, uh, he embellishing things. I don't know what else I can believe. I just feel like he just has to be really careful, especially if there's like video to correspond with like what he's saying. You're gonna need to make some choices in this case, right? Some, make some decisions. Some of the things that maybe that might help you to do. Let me just take a step right back, all right? Who is Nick Mew? Who's the man that they wanted to beat down on the river? We're gonna tell you about that. How'd he get there? What made him be in the river on that day, as we saw here earlier? And we'll tell you that story. And then lastly, why did this angry mob, this pack of players, why did they attack him? And we're going to tell you that. First, who is Nick, right? Nick's 54 years old, lives in Prior Lake. He's married, right? See a photo. You'll hear from his wife, Sandy, right? She's going to be a witness. She was there with him that day. Oh, him and a bunch Bucko. of other 50-year-olds went to go have a peaceful day on the river. Right? Nick grew up in Romania. Right? And when he was about 15 or 16, he immigrated over here. We're not going to get really into it. Romania was not a good place to be in the 80s. Communist dictator, all kinds of other bad stuff was going on. And Nick's dad, like a lot of people in the world, wanted to have a better place for his family to grow up. So they, as political refugees, were accepted by a church in Minnesota, and they came over to Minnesota. When Nick was growing up, his first language was Romanian. Because he lived in this communist dictatorship, he also needed to learn Russian. The judge even tells the lawyers to stop telling them what to see. The judge says that they have a set of eyes they can see as well as the lawyer can. It's true. Because he was in Europe, he also learned to speak French. And because he's a pretty, pretty smart guy, he also learned Latin. So when he was 15 and 16, he comes over to the United States, and then he picks up English as his fifth language. He can speak fluent English. He's fine. But I think it's important for you to know that's not his first language. When he, he graduates from high school in Minnesota, he decides he wants to go on and further his education, and he goes to school in South Dakota. He becomes a mechanical engineer, and he works, he's worked as a mechanical engineer for years and years. A bit of a handyman, as I imagine a lot of engineers are, right? I don't think of myself as a, as a handyman. He's a handyman, good with tools, hangs out with tools, and you'll hear from other people how he's used tools in the past. And you'll hear, that he, as you'll hear on the tape as he tells the police, you know, living a peaceful, quiet life, 
in Minnesota. Wait, why was he harping on the tools thing? <laughs> uh, okay. Never been in trouble before. Him and some of his work friends, as all of us sometimes as adults, our circle of friends tends to be people that we work with. He has a group of friends, Amanda and Ernesto. They've been down the Apple River before. In fact, in fact, they've invited him before, and he's been down the river one time before, several, several years earlier. So they make a plan with all of those, the group of people that we saw, right? Oh, I forgot one thing here. Nick, like a lot of people, maybe as they get older, isn't of the best health. In 2020, he had a heart attack, and he needed to have quadruple bypass open heart surgery. So these are the photos of him recovering from that, and it took him some time. And he'll tell you how that still makes him feel fragile, right? He doesn't feel as fit as he was when he was 18 or 22. Works the tools so he's good with a pocket knife? Yeah, I don't know what the defense was trying to go with that. <laughs> so he decides to get out on the river with his friends. These are some of the friends, and as you'll see in photos, right? He's in the water that day, it's warm that day. Sometimes he's wearing his sunglasses, sometimes he's not. Sometimes he's got a hat on, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he has his shirt on, sometimes he doesn't. This is the photo of the start, which is pretty much the exact same thing he was wearing at the end. Oh man, I wonder if any of the victims are in the background of this picture. Um, his friends Amanda and Ernesto uh, asked him to come along. There's a lot of other adults that are coming, right? There's none of these, there's no 20 somethings, no teenagers. They pack food and coolers. Sure, they have a couple of beers but it's really just a time to get together with their other adults and float peacefully down the river. Nick. Hi, Spring. Nick likes to snorkel, right? So he brought his goggles and his snorkel, right? That's just kind of who Nick is. He's a bit of an explorer, a bit of a curious mind, and he brought his goggles and snorkel. And you'll see a video of him prior to this where he's just kind of laying in the water, letting the water rush over him, and he kind of floats there with the goggles and the snorkel, and he's looking at the bottom of the water. Probably not a lot of exciting things at the bottom of the water in Apple River, but he was there to see if there was something there. Before he leaves, he gets a call from his friend Ernesto, because Ernesto knows Nick and knows that Nick's a bit of a handyman, and is like, hey, remember last time we had all those strings? We got all those strings, you gotta cut up stuff, you gotta do this. Can you bring that little pocket knife that you've got, that utility knife, I've seen you use it at my house. You've used it as a tool. Make sure you bring that, because we need to cut up some of the strings. So he does, gets, gets back, packs that up, brings it along, and sure enough, when they get there, they have uh, their provided strings, and the people you'll see, they tie up tubes, they tie up coolers, they tie up everything else, and he uses the, uh, his pocket knife to sometimes cut things up. Right? You'll also see as he's going through on the river that day that his shoes kind of fall apart. Right? And you'll see that pictures of his shoes, he's got strings, and he's tied them up, and he continues to cut with the little pocket knife that he has to make sure that his shoes, his footwear, are something that he can have. So they float down the river. All right, this is the group. You saw that photo already with uh, Mr. Anderson showed that to them. Right? And again, here, here he has the hat on. Here he's got the hat off. Uh, you'll see later, not surprisingly, when he goes to snorkel, he doesn't have his sunglasses on. And sometimes when he snorkeled, he had a shirt on. Other times he took it off. Here's another picture of him on the river with the group. Again, has the hat back on, depending upon what the sun is like. So the reason why the defense is like trying to like you know talk about his outfit is because the state was trying to say, oh, he was trying to sneak out. He's wearing his hat. He's wearing this camouflage thing. He's wearing sunglasses. But the defense is like, this is what he was wearing before. This is what he was wearing, you know, when he came in. <laughs> so how did he get there, right? Well, as we talked about, area but I mean, like. He did get dressed up, yes, but I still think he was trying to sneak out, you know, because he was like, oh, I, I heard that you one person got stabbed. Oh, I, the person looks like me, apparently. So his friend. So both could be true. I mean, it could be that he just wore his clothes, um, his normal clothes back on, but it could also be that he was also sneaking out. Loses his phone, <coughs> right? And whether they wanted to look for it or didn't want to look for it, I don't know how that's relevant. I don't know how his wanting to go help his friend look for his phone is any way important. You'll get to decide that. But we know well, I think it's because, like, so he went to go look for his friend's phone. I think the state was just trying to say, like, it wasn't really a pressing matter because the friend was like, oh, I can just use insurance, whatever. Who cares? Um, that Nick really didn't have to be there to look for the friend's phone and, like, you know, but the whole confrontation with the tubing kids or the tubing uh, young adults. But at the end of the day, is, it's uncontested. His friend lost his phone. And as you saw in some of those photos, they have these little bags that they put them on, and they didn't know if it was in a float or if it was in a sink. Hi, David. But the water between him and the other two groups was downstream. So if something went into the water, he would float towards where those other two groups were. So Nick used his head and walked where he thought the, the, snor or the uh, phone was going to float to, and he goes looking for it, right? And then while he's looking for it, he runs into another group, right? And this is the group that, that we're going to talk about, two different groups, right? The first group he runs into is this group of high school, right? And you're going to hear that they're drunk. You're going to hear that they were smoking stuff. The one piece of evidence that we know for sure is that at the time of the autopsy, Isaac Schumann's blood alcohol concentration was 0.219. And if you ask his friends, his friends are going to say he was the most sober one in the group. So we have this group. They're drunk. They're loud. Mm -hmm. There's six of them. They're football players. They've run as a pack together before. 
you're going to hear some videos. They're quite confident group, right? And they see this man, this man that any others are going to judge upon his appearance. This group of six see him, and they start making judgments about him based upon what he looks like. He's an old man in the river with goggles, and they don't like it. So they start calling him names. Right? And there's a video. You're going to hear it because they, they start harassing him. They start heckling him. They're basically trying to humiliate him. That's what they're doing. And Mr. Cockfield, one of the football players, he grabs his phone out, and he thinks it's funny enough that he's going to record it. And you'll see that recording just before this where he says, grown man, looking for little girls. And he thinks it's really funny. And then he screams out, raper. He doesn't scream that out for his benefit of his five football friends that are with him. He screams it out to draw a crowd, get other people involved. Now, Mr. Mew may or may not have heard that exact thing, but he hears them yelling, and he turns around. And what does he see? He's looking for a phone, right? We know that. And when he turns around, he sees somebody holding up a phone. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe he's mistaken about why they're holding up the phone. But he sees them holding up a phone. So he turns around to approach them because he thinks that's the phone he's looking for. I'm looking for this phone. It floated down this way. These kids are yelling. And he starts jogging. Oh, so the kid that's recording and holding the phone, he thought that that was the phone of his friends? And the kids, like, stole it? That's why he came at them like that? <laughs> okay. Towards them, as you saw, as he jogs toward them, he's an unfit 260-pound man trying to move through the water. He picks up his feet for about four steps, and then he reaches his hands out to grab their tubes, and when he does so, he puts the snorkel and the goggles in his mouth. Yeah, don't do that. Why would you do that? Maybe they thought it was an act of aggression. I don't really think it was. You'll get to see it and watch it. But we know nothing happens after that, because as soon as he goes and approaches, the goggles and the snorkel drop. He loses them, and he immediately starts looking for them. That's about five seconds into the video. He starts looking for them, and they start yelling at him, get away, get away, get away. So this is the, this is the tubes, right? You as the jury, you're looking downstream this way, right? Nick is standing here in front of the tubes. He looks, he comes up, and then he walks to the other side of their tubes, and he's now on this side of their tubes, downstream from them. He's downstream because that's where he thinks the goggles and the snorkels come. And did he tell the police officer they thought they knocked the goggles and snorkels out of his hand? Yes, he did. Is that what he believed happened? Yes, it was. Is that what mm. <laughs> Okay. It really happened? No, that's not what happened. And the great thing you're going to be able to see in this case is there's a video. There's a video that we can check everybody's testimony against. And you know what? Ryan Madison got it wrong. Dante Carlson got it wrong. Madison Cohen got it wrong. Anthony Carlson got it wrong. Okay. Pretty much every witness, when you compare their human memory against the video, they got it wrong because we're humans. Okay. We can't get it as good as the video does. So he got that wrong, but he's still nevertheless looking for his goggles. His goggles are down in the water. He's looking for it. Right? He starts walking around there. There's nothing that prevents this group of football players who are screaming at him. Uh, it's, just not, it's, not, it's just not about him getting things wrong because of the memory. He was just trying to deny everything. He was trying to deny everything and just trying to make the other group look worse than they, than they really were. Like by saying, they're like, oh, they smacked the snorkel out of, my, out of my hands, out of my face, whatever. Try to pull my pants down. Um, they pulled out weapons and I had to, like, he was just trying to lie about the entire situation. I, I get, like, having things wrong and, like, you know, sometimes your memory, like, fucks up. But, like, he was just trying to lie about everything. So he got that wrong, but he's still, nevertheless, looking for his goggles. His goggles are down in the water. He's looking for it, right? And he starts walking around there. There's nothing that prevents this group of football players who are screaming at him from just walking around. He's one man, maybe two feet wide. And you hear from there, they talk about him walking away, but they can just walk, just float on by and leave this man alone. Oh, so both sides are saying they walked away. So he's claiming he walked away, and then the, the, the kids are claiming that he was still there harassing them. Okay? They stayed harassed. They stay to heckle. They stay to humiliate. Because he starts walking away from them. And if you watch and you count, you watch it enough times, he takes about 10 steps away from them. And it's sometime during those 10 steps, it's sometime during those 10 steps when that group says, you got 10 seconds. 10 seconds. That's what this group of drunk teenagers says to that old man. And he's walking away at that point. And then what you'll see when the video comes back, he... I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that he's walking away. I'm gonna have to rewatch the video. Let's rewatch it, uh, or let's watch it together. I don't know if he was walking away. It still seems like he was still lingering in that area. <laughs> Walked away. They followed. They followed. They didn't go around. They went right up to him where he had walked away. Now remember, as he's walking in this direction, his group is 200 and some feet that way, 280 feet that way. This water is deeper. As he starts walking away, he gets into deeper water. He doesn't mm -hmm. have his goggles, doesn't have a snorkel, still can't find the phone. He's getting farther away from this group. The drunken teenagers are yelling at him. And now they keep following him. Now, this video, right? We're going to show some slides from the video. And it's super important, obviously. We're very thankful that we have it so that you will know exactly what happened. But what you've got to remember is the video was taken by Juwan Cockfield. It is from Juwan Cockfield's 
perspective, through his point of view, right? It makes it obvious. And so the person that we're watching oftentimes is Nick Mabel, right? But you need to know, which is obvious, that the video is not from Nick's perspective. Yeah. We're not watching it from Nick's perspective, we're watching it from somebody else's perspective. And why is that important? Because the judge is gonna tell you, right? It's important because at the end of the case, you'll need to determine the reasonableness of his beliefs from his point of view. You'll need to determine the reasonableness of his beliefs, beliefs, not actions, you're here to determine his beliefs and the reasonableness from his point of view. So as you're watching that video, you're gonna be asked at the end to be like, what would someone in Mew's position, from that standpoint, what would they feel? What would they believe? I think he, I think he was getting angry that they were heckling him, and I think he just wanted to fuck him up. <laughs> just quickly read to this, right? If I can, the law of self-defense. Uh, in determining reasonableness, a belief may be reasonable even though mistaken. In determining whether Nick Mew's beliefs were reasonable, the standard is what a person of ordinary intelligence and prudence would have believed in Nick's position under the circumstances that existed at the time of the alleged offense. Not 30 seconds before, not a minute before, at the time of the alleged offense. Okay. The reasonableness of Nick's beliefs must be determined from the standpoint of Nick Mew at the time of his acts, not from the viewpoint of the jury now. So I say that to you just so you know when we're looking at the evidence what you're going to be asked to do at the end. So they, right, they get into the, him into this position, and this is 50 seconds into the video. He's walked 10 steps away, they come up to him and approach him and cut him off. So he walks away one time, they follow him. But Nick, right, sees, right, so he's here, he's got a group of people. But the direction that he's walking is not towards his group. He's going downstream more. Here, and he looks off to his left and he sees a group of adults. There's two adults coming this way. Great, adults, not drunk teenagers. Adults are coming this way. He doesn't continue to engage with this. He gets and starts walking over here. He walks over to engage with the adults in the hope, as I think most of us do, when we see perhaps another adult and we're dealing with a group of drunk teenagers, maybe I can appeal to reason. These are adults. And when he walks over this way and the path down the river is wide open, those drunk teenagers follow him. Follow him over here, where he then gets confronted by Madison Cohen. And Madison Cohen is not listening. She's not there for an appeal to reason. Her immediate words are to Nick Mew in his face, go, get the fuck out, go. And you'll see Nick's reaction is kind of like, as you heard from the, uh, they have my goggles, like, why are you in my face? He didn't say they have my goggles. He said they took my goggles, right? Face, what's going on? And you can see, they'll call it a smirk. They'll call it a smile. Look, there's 4,819 frames in that video. 4,819 frames. There's no doubt that you can pause on one of those 4,819 frames and find a photo where somebody's mouth is making a particular shape of any. No, it wasn't just one frame that made that, like, that, that fucking smirk. He was just smirking. Saying at any time. <laughs> this is Fence Attorney! Is he smirking? Is he smiling? You watch. You decide. Because he looks perplexed. He's immediately confronted, and he starts to give an explanation, and Dante Carlson tells him, it doesn't matter. Right? Appeal to reason? Nope. We're not doing that. That's kicked out the door. There is no appeal to reason at all. And while this is going on, the Carlson group, right, who sent two people over, also has Quentin Carlson. And he's an older adult. Madison Cohen, Dante Carlson, A.J. Martin, they're in their early 20s, which is fine. They're certainly adults, but that might be different than somebody in their 40s. Quentin Carlson, he sees what's going on. And what he says, I was worried about the group against one guy. I was worried that they were going to gang up on him and something bad was going to happen to the old guy. So I told my son Tony and Dante to go make sure they don't attack that old guy. That's not somebody looking at it from Nick's perspective, but that's somebody who can see maybe what Nick sees, hear what Nick hears, and his thought is, oh, something bad's gonna happen to that old guy. So he sends over his kids. And when they come over, right, the high school group continues in what I think we now know is a new term, is the gaslighter. Huh? They just start making up lies in order to affect his perception of reality and everybody else's perception of reality. Mm -hmm. As soon as that group comes over, that high school group says, he's a predator. And then immediately they're like, he's looking for little girls, he's looking for little girls. There will be zero evidence. There were ever little girls even anywhere near on that river. Zero. There's gonna be zero evidence that he was looking for little girls. But they drum up, right? They get this crowd going. They've got the two people here and they start yelling at, and then the crowd gets to be more, right? As this is going on, it's about one third. I think it's okay to have the older guy send his two sons to go there and be like, hey, you know, that guy looks like he's being ganged up on. Can you go over there and make sure like everything's good? I think the moment that his sons got there and this guy put his hands and shoved the woman with the glasses, that's when it escalated. And that's why they shoved him back and that's why they slapped him afterwards. I think it's okay to go there to try to help someone. But then when you notice that like, oh shit, like from far away, I 
I didn't know what was going on, but now that I'm here, I can see that he's their aggressor. I can see why that they turned on him. 13, 115 into it where they start screaming at him. He's looking for little girls. And then you'll see as he's standing here, after he's walked away from that group, he walks over to the adults. He's kind of pointing at them like, I got my snorkel. And they confront him. And as he's standing there, he turns his back on her and them, and he just stands here. And as he's standing with his back turned, and the path down the river is wide open, instead of just walking on by, Madison Cohn decides she's going to put her hands on him, and she grabs him and starts pulling him. Pulling him, and you'll see he turns around and immediately looks to his hand and says, don't touch me. Don't put your hands on me. They don't walk away. They stand right there. The crowd, the drunk high schoolers, continue to say he's looking for little girls. Somebody says, is that what he said? And then it changes to the next lie is, we've got it on camera. We've got it on camera. You're going to see that they downloaded that phone. There ain't nothing like that on camera. There ain't nothing like that on the camera because that's not what happened. Because these drunk teenagers were gaslighting him and they're enticing a crowd. Nick stands there. He's now got people all around him, right? They're chanting at him. He's a predator. He's a predator. He's all alone. He's getting, it's getting louder. He raises his left hand to his group. Like, let me need some help here. Like something's going on, right? Why? <laughs> oh, I'm just so confused. Like, why involve your group into this mess when you can just GTFO? That happens. You'll see the camera. Juwan Cohen turns the camera to show where he's waving to. So the high school group has knowledge that Nick Mew, who's standing right here, doesn't want to go that way. Nick Mew, who's blocked right here, wants to go that way because that's where his group is because that's where everybody looks. And you'll see on the camera, Madison Cohen, as she stands and he waves, she turns and looks and sees he's got some friends. So does Madison Cohen say, yeah, why don't you just go that way? She does it. She does it. She reaches to her friends and says, hey, get over here. She calls in more numbers. She calls in more numbers to confront him. Because at that point, it was eight against one, and she wanted more. So she brought over Riley. She brought over Janelle. She brought over Gabby. And then she calls for Anthony. And then she calls for AJ. And then it's those 13 people that surround him, right? And they're standing there. And you're going to see they're all around him. They are relentless in what they're yelling and screaming. From his standpoint, this is like, what is happening? What world did I just step into in which there's this group of drunk kids, drunk teenagers, who they want to say kids, I get it, but you saw those pictures. They're all bigger than Nick. Nick's smaller than he was then, right? But he hasn't grown any. He's just shrunk more, right? But he's not a big, fit guy, right? They're screaming. They're chanting, right? And at that point, yes, Nick, outnumbered 13 to 1, reaches in his pocket, finds his pocket knife. I mean, maybe they were taller, but I don't know. To me, he was definitely bigger. Opens it up and stands there with it. He doesn't brandish it, you know? But he doesn't like unfit, overweight, yes, but still bigger? Hide it. He's standing there with it. His belief at that point is, I don't want to use this. I don't think showing it to him is going to help. But if something happens, I need to, I don't know what's going to happen. Mm. So he's standing there with the knife. And as he's standing there with the knife, Riley Madison is right in front of him. And she pushes on him. And you'll see that in the video. And then next to her, who's blocking him from his people, is Madison Cohen. She takes her right hand and she pushes his left shoulder. And he has to go back. She pushes him back. And while all this is going on, the group of drunk teenagers are screaming, chanting, yelling. The numbers are getting bigger. They come over towards him. All right? They push him again. They block his path. And this is the, the same. That's what it looks like. You're, you're looking upriver to see where your safety is. Behind you is deeper water. You've walked in that direction before. You then, then don't go up directly north. Go to the side where it's less deeper water and then make your way up. You appealed to reason. And they said, it doesn't matter. They're up in his face, right? He, he could, like, he, going back is not the only direction you can go. You can go left, you can go right. But I don't know where his group was. It looks like they were, like, on the left, right? Go left and then go up. And Madison Coleman's pushing and pointing at him, right? And Mew's standing there. He's got the knife in his right hand. He doesn't use the knife. He's standing there while they're pushing and pointing at him, right? And when he does that, all of a sudden, that's when Dante Carlson gets violent, right? He's predisposed for violence, I submit to you. That's the entire purpose of the gaslighting of getting the crowd there, of yelling with the crowd, of getting it all jacked up, is Jawan Cohen. I, I don't think them calling him PDF, uh, R word, all that stuff, I don't think that's gaslighting him into believing that he is one. I don't know if I agree with his use of gaslighting here. A viral video in which some old man was getting beat down. Because getting... gaslighting is when you're trying to make someone question their reality, like their truth, right? I, I think he knows that he's not a PDF or R word or looking for little girls. He created that world. He put him in that world. I object a lot of this is argument, not summarizing. Just at least focus on what you anticipate the evidence will show. That's what the evidence is going to show, all right? Dante Carlson has told you before. I, I mean, I think gaslighting is a great buzzword because a lot of people were using it in like 2020. 
and you'll say it doesn't matter, right? At that moment, that's when Matt, or that's when Nick Mew raises his left hand to protect himself. He's raised it before to call for help. I think I missed it. He raised it another time to call for help a second time, and now they're crowded around him in his face. He raises his hand to protect it, and that's when they get violent, right? It's a push, not a punch. It's a push to protect himself, not a punch. But why push her face? When you make your hand and it contacts with someone's face, that's just so weird to me. Why, why push her face? Because you're escalating it by pushing her face. Why not just push her back? Or just get the fuck... <laughs> why not just leave? Ah! <laughs> the evidence. You'll watch that video. You might watch it 20 times. It's not on the video. There's no punch on the video. Cheryl says, if I was surrounded by a group of drunk people screaming to leave, I'd leave. Isn't that a normal response to get away from that situation? Blah, blah says, when people are afraid, they don't always think things through. I would think that leaving would be a lot easier than standing there, whipping that knife out and just standing there waiting for something bad to happen. I think he was thinking things through. I feel like he was standing there and he was like, okay, come at me. I'm waiting for one of you motherfuckers to come at me so I can stab you guys. Standing there yelling. And when she's standing there yelling, there are two people between her and Nick Mew. He's got the knife in his... Here's the thing. I, I wouldn't think that he... Okay. I don't think... If he was already there with his group and there was confrontation with another group, then yeah, you don't have to fucking leave. Fuck that. But he isn't even with his group. You know, his group wasn't even there like hanging out, chilling. It's like, well, okay, why the fuck do I have to leave? Psh, you guys leave, right? He wasn't even chilling with his group. I'm saying that like, just, just go back to your group. That's it. Just go back to your group. That's all you got to do. The phone that's lost, it's not even yours. The snorkeling gear, you might be able to buy another one on Amazon. I don't know. Maybe it was expensive. I don't fucking know. But being there and being in the danger of like this group of like angry people or like dumb people, drunk people, whatever it is, I just don't see why you would just continue staying in that situation. Um, and I don't know. It depends on what the judge is going to say in the jury instructions because I feel like the jury is just going to be like, hmm. Why didn't he just retreat? I know the lawyer is like saying in a way where it's like, oh, he couldn't leave because he tried to, but he can't go this way. It's deeper water. He tried to walk this way, but then the woman circled him around. He turned away. The woman pulled him back. Like I, I have to rewatch the video. Um, cause I just didn't really see that. I was just like, okay, maybe he could have left here. He could have left here. He could have left there. Like, I don't know. And I, I do think it's really important that he didn't brandish the knife. Um, give them a warning. If he brandished a knife and was like, hey, any motherfuckers touch me, I'm getting you. Like, okay, then yeah, fuck it. These kids went after him and they knew he had a knife, whatever. <laughs> but no one knew he had a knife. I feel like everything was just like escalated. Like, I feel like things were already escalating, but he would just really take it like a step further and another step further. That's just how I just see it. I'm trying so hard to give him benefit of the doubt. I'm trying so hard to be in his position. Like, I get it. I would be fucking scared, too. I'd be annoyed, too. If these motherfuckers were calling me names, I'd be pissed, too. But, yeah, I'm just saying ego, 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 ego. Um, it was a pride thing. It was an ego thing. Should have just left. He was butthurt. Like, it sucks. The situation that he was in, yeah, it fucking sucks. Like, you're going there. You're trying to find your, you know, your friend's um, phone. And then I don't know what happened. And then these kids are calling you names. And then at some point, you thought adults were going to come and help you. They don't help you. In fact, they make things worse. Like, I, I, I feel bad that that was a shitty situation from to be in. His right hand, right? It's not on the video. There's no physical evidence. She says he punches her with his right hand. He's got the knife in his right hand. There's not a mark on her. You're going to see from John Schultz, his video. He spoke with her right then. He's right in her face. He's got a body cam. You'll get to see the body cam of her face. And she, not a blemish on it, not a mark on it. Doesn't support that he punched her. Third thing, multiple evolving stories. Listen. I don't know. You can still like light punch someone. You can still like, you can still like do this. Like not like hit him to the point where it's like really hard, but you can just like shove their fa um, their face away. I don't I believe that he did like closed fist i think he probably just did it like this and probably did it to her face and that's why her sunglasses knocked off um it clearly doesn't show it at all he didn't approach them it was the other way around i just see the part where he runs up on them touches their tubes and then like sort of touches that guy's leg and then that's when they were like oh weirdo 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 like pdf 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 like that to me just seems unnecessary the defense attorney's trying to say oh well he was running up to them because he thought that was the lost phone i the way that he ran at them seemed very aggressive it wasn't just like okay i'm waiting through the water i'm coming to you to get my friend's phone it was like running up on them and then he like grabs her too i'm like why would you be so aggressive like that that to me is just really weird 
Listen to what the witnesses say. Who really says is there a punch in? What position were they in to say it? Because here's what they said before. Quentin Carlson, he told the police, she said he was punched. She said she, he punched her, but they said it was a slap. So everybody else initially said it was a slap. Yeah. No, I think uh, video shows he pulls a knife out after the alleged punch. Um, I believe he had the knife out before he was punched. It was, I think he had the knife out when the women came and confronted him. If I remember correctly. Abby, one of the witnesses says, Yeah, we'll, we'll watch the video together and we'll like slow it down, you know, we'll see what's going on. Um, yeah, because I'm pretty sure he had the knife out before um, the punch, the push down, any of that stuff happened. Smacked her with his left hand. She's consistent with he raised his left hand. Uh, Mr. Alexander Vang, one of the high school kids, says he hit her with an open hand with his left hand. AJ, he says he saw him pull her hair, which nobody's going to say. That's just wrong. Nobody's going to say anything along those lines. Dante, the person who laid him out after he said that, spoke with the police. And initially what he said to the police is he saw, I saw Mew make a swift motion to Riley Madison. Then he says, I saw Mew make a motion towards Riley Madison. Then he says, I saw Mew make a swift motion to Riley Madison. And he says a fourth time, swift motion, Riley Madison. I don't know what he's going to say when he comes up there now, but what he said before isn't a punch, and it wasn't the Madison Cone. That's when the violence begins, right? They attracted the crowd, they moved in closer. Now, one of the things you're going to want to ask, and we will ask that, is when this happens, this group of 13 is around, and the old man gets knocked, and he's down in the ground. Listen to the video. Is there anybody in the group that says, whoa, this is out of hand? No. You'll hear when he gets knocked on the ground, the volume goes up. The cackling and the laughing goes up. And the videographer pushes. I'm just saying, like, her glasses aren't there. At first, I didn't believe that um, he would have, like, touched her. I was like, yeah, I don't see him touching her. Because, like, him touching her, he must have known that would have escalated the situation. But based on, like, what we heard in the video, how everyone reacted to that, and then even someone from his own friend group um, said that he, like, shoved her. And I don't see the glasses on her anymore, so. Pushes people away to get in closer to document the beatdown as well as he can. This isn't somebody that's just taking a video on the side. And again, we move around. Dante Carlson is confident enough to still have the beer in his hand while this happens. Mew's response is in self-defense, right? People come at him, and he makes a quick, short jab motion. He believes he has to use the knife because he's outnumbered. A.J. Martin, once. Riley Madison, once. Dante Carlson, twice, but he only has two stitches. Isaac Schumann, once. Dante Carlson, once. Oh, he got the names mixed up. Um, yeah, when did Isaac get stabbed? They come at him. He gives a quick jab. They back up. He doesn't lunge for them. He doesn't follow them. He doesn't recklessly swing it around. They come at him after they gave him a beat down. And he Hardly a beat down. Come on. Jab. <laughs> Even Brandy Hart, I think you're going to hear from her, right? When Mr. Trop, he asked her questions. When people attacked you. He responded. She agrees with that. So... What happens is pretty much all on video, right? At the end, the judge is going to read you that jury instruction similar to what he did about credibility. And how much of credibility is going to play a part in this trial is going to be up to you. You guys are the finders of fact. You decide what happened. But I'd submit to you, it's all on video. Pretty much know what happened because it's on video, right? So. If someone accused me of the worst crime in the world, I cannot say what would I have done, uh, specifically if he was a victim of SA at some point of his life, then you got to get therapy. You can't be triggered by people calling you names and then whip out a knife and then start stabbing people. You got to get therapy to like sort that stuff out. Credibility. Nick spoke with the police, right? He told them he was afraid. He told them he feared for his life. He told them he was acting in self-defense. He also told them, I don't really remember anything. And he lied to the police about the knife. He did. He lied about the knife. It was his knife. He brought it. He was outnumbered. He Welcome back. The truth is, he used it because he was surrounded by that angry mob and he was afraid, right? They gave him every reason to be afraid. When their attacks stopped, he walked away. When they stopped, kept coming at him and every one of them coming at him, right? He responded like a victim of trauma response. You'll hear from witnesses in his group who will say he looked like he was in shock. He was white as a ghost. From his perspective, right? He had just been attacked by an angry mob who was trying to kill him, and he, he, got his way, he got out of there. So as he walks back, he still has fear, right? It's not something that just goes away. That fear 
He's deep inside of him at that point. And as he walks away, he wants nothing to do with the group that just attacked him. He wants nothing to do with the knife, and he tosses it up onto the shore. Maybe not the best decision. Maybe not how he should have responded. But he was suffering from serious shock and trauma at that time. And that's what he did. It's not going to be a contested fact. He looks back to his group, right? And they'll say that he's wide-eyed, he's white as a ghost. Um, remember, he'd just been repeatedly hit in the head, pushed down into the water. His body continued to respond in that way. When he walked away, he knew he'd done some quick jab motions. He didn't know the extent of anyone's injuries. They said mean things, yes, but he escalated it by pushing that girl's face. That's like an escalation right there. I don't know why you would do that. You know you're escalating things if you're going to touch someone and then shove them like that to the point where their glasses fall off. Did he hear them yelling? Sure. They'd been yelling for two minutes, screaming and yelling at him. He had been in trauma at that point. He didn't know what the yelling was about. He didn't know that anyone had died. Maybe he should have. Okay, fair enough. Yes, but we in will that watch situation, it. Would you expect him who just been attacked and responded in just short, quick jab motions to know the extent of everyone's injuries? They go back and everyone's like waiting, waiting, waiting. Traffic on the river pretty much shuts down and they wait there. When the police come by and kind of basically move everybody along, his group moves along to the exit. Hey, bleep. He's got his hat and his sunglasses and his shirt on, just like he did at the start of the trip. Right? He's been in shock. They'll tell you he was cold. So there's really, these are the three things that you need to think about, right? One, what happened? I don't think it's going to be a big mystery. It's on video. And I hope that that's helpful to you. Because the facts, I don't think, are going to be very contested. Two, you are going to be asked, what did Nick believe? Right? He told the police, and he'll tell you, feared for his life in that moment against that group who were violent with him and knocked him down he feared for his life right the video evidence supports this right and i'd ask you rhetorically what other reason is there what other reason could there be they came at him he he was in fear he responded the last question were his beliefs reasonable I don't want to get the labor the point about the law, right? I can't find it the right way. But it's from his viewpoint, right? From his standpoint. I believe may be reasonable, even though mistaken. In determining whether Nick Mew's beliefs were reasonable, the standard is what a person of ordinary intelligence and prudence would have believed in Nick Mew's position. We should watch the video in slow-mo. Yes, I do have the video on my video editor. Uh, we'll definitely slow it down. Under the circumstances that existed at the time of the alleged offense. So what do we know that might help you to decide that, right? We know he walked away and they followed. We know he tried explaining to them and they said, it doesn't matter. We know they told lies about him to incite the crowd. We know he knows that those were lies and he was watching as this crowd gets louder and more intense and bigger. We know they cut him off from where he wanted to go back up to his wife and his friends. We know that somebody else that was watching, who was kind of like Nick, a little bit younger, but the same fitness level, though. And when that person, Quentin Carlson, sees what's going on, his first thought is, there's something bad that's going to happen to that old guy. We know he was surrounded. We know he was outnumbered. And we know that this environment was ripe for violence. That's the violence. That's the environment that carried. And we know that Nick is fragile. He believed he was fragile. This is somebody who went through open heart surgery within a couple of years. He didn't have fitness. They attacked him. Kept attacking him. They gave him every reason to believe they weren't going to stop. Were his beliefs reasonable? This is Isaac Schumann. I'm sure he is a wonderful man, wonderful human being. We're going to hear a lot about him. But in this moment, on this day, on that river, when he was drunk, he tried to strangle Nick Mew. His hands were on his throat. He was pushing up against Nick Mew. And Nick reaches out as he's falling back. That is what Nick did. His belief at the time, I mean, being strangled after being constantly attacked, because he needed to get out of there. And the only way that he could do that. Wait a second. Hello? She has her phone out. Do we have this angle? Where'd she go? It was with his knife. He believed his life was in danger. That's a phone, right? Submit to you under those circumstances. That's reasonable. At the end of the trial, we're going to come back up here, right? We'll be back up here, and we're going to ask you to return the verdict of not guilty on all counts. The 
judge will tell you on that last day. He'll tell you the law. If you can reconcile the evidence upon any reasonable hypotheses consistent with Nick's innocence, you must return the verdict. Just one more time. The oh, judge will tell you. Oh, okay. I was going to use about them. You can them. reconcile the evidence on any reasonable hypothesis consistent with Nick's innocence. You must do so. You must return a verdict. Only reasonable hypothesis in this case is he feared for his life. And that belief was not unreasonable. They created that world to get that moment. In that world, he believed it in that moment, and that's reasonable, because anyone in that situation would believe the same. So at the end, we'll ask you to do your duty. Okay, that was the defense opening statement. Who do you think did a better job at delivering? Defense or the state? Now, like, maybe in the cadence and the tone, how they talk through the evidence, how they talk through, um, like, the scenario, the story. Who think they did a good job about that? It's too late. You walk up the river to get away from someone. I'm going to use the bathroom. I think, yeah, I mean, the defense, they have to be, like, they have to do, like, a little performance, right, to get the juries, like, listening, making sure that they're awake. I think both sides did a good job. Defense was passionate. <laughs> I think it's hard to do opening statements in front of people, especially if it's a live stream. Um, even though the state was not like, you know, like toning up his like uh, tone up and down. Um, I still think he did a good job of delivering the information in a way where it's just like, OK, like I get what he's saying. and I'm tracking with what he's um, trying to present. Gandalf, why are you falling? Oh, gosh. OK, I'll be right back. He's the bathroom and we'll watch the video. It's going to be in, I think. Um, let's see. So this is defense right there. Do they show the video in his statement? Was it him? Or was it through um, Jawan's um, testimony? Because I don't know. I don't want to listen to Jawan's testimony because the audio is like, <sighs> I hate it when the audio is like crappy. Hi, Joe. How are you doing today? Or right, which one of you guys watch the clips? How was it? You're blind now? Did you look at it directly? Oh, no. Did I fuck up my cord? Oh, no. I think I did. Oh, wait. Uh oh, not good. Hold on a second. Let me fix my microphone. The audio is down now. <laughs> no, it's working. Don't gaslight me. Okay, let's watch the video. Um, let me have my Premiere Pro up. Let's see. Uh, I do want to warn you guys, the stabbings do happen pretty quickly, but um, you can see it. So I'm going to watch the video in normal speed, and then we will slow it down, and then we could see, like, we could see, like, zoom-ins and all that stuff. We're not zoom-ins, but, like, we'll see, like, a slow-down version of it. How much was your new crate and barrel chair? You'll just have to find out in the new vlog. It retailed for 2200 and I paid nowhere near close to that. Did you reveal the price already? No, I did not. I did not. 
I guess I'll reveal in the um the other one. I didn't have the glasses, so I stayed inside. It got pretty dark here in PA. Yeah, when it gets dark, oh, I love it. It got partially dark here last year. Okay, let me make this part and... Okay, give me a second. Let me just make this bigger. Should I get my glasses? Let's, all right, let's, let, me get, let me get my glasses. All right. What are we judging? We're judging based on what we see in this like short time frame. We're saying that he could have left. He didn't leave. We're saying that he was standing there. He was smiling. He was smirking. It seems like he was ready for something to happen. He had his hand glazing over the knife. I don't think anyone here really thinks he's like a PDF or an R word or anything like that. No one has said that in the chat. Now you have no power here. <laughs> okay, you guys ready? Um, let me pull it up. Let me fix, fix it a little bit. So I think this is the complete video. Um, they weren't filming before, so we don't know what happened beforehand. Okay. Uh, excuse me, did you just delete rain? Hello? Did you just delete rain? Words are hard today. I was rude. That was rude, Nacho. <laughs> Is there only this one video? Um, I think so. But we saw there was a woman in the green bathing suit coming over and it looked like she had a phone in her hand. So... I don't know. It kind of looks like she was recording. Hi, Storm. How are you doing today? How's it going? All right, we'll do normal speed and then we'll slow it down. Where's the audio? Oh, shoot. Hold on. Oh, I muted the track. Wait, right, sorry. Um, I don't know why my video thing is like geeking out on my end. Okay, hold on. I'll do it again. Oh, she was calling nine one one. Okay. Well, actually, she was calling nine one one, but she was holding. I feel like she was holding the phone like this, though. Not like not like this. Nacho threatening me. <laughs> yeah, be nice, Nacho. I don't know who started at first. Was it Rain? Did you start it? Maybe it was Rain. Did you start it? Get away from us! What? Wait, what are you doing? What's going on with y'all homie? He's on camera. Guys, let's go. Oh my god, he's on 4K. Yo, the new iPhone got that good quality. What do you say? Yeah, what the hell? Who is this? Yes! 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 From the, from the culture! From the culture! Who is that? From the culture! Who is that? Who the hell is this? Go! It doesn't matter! He said he was looking for a little girl! He said he was looking for a little girl! Yeah! yeah. That's exactly what he said! We're gonna... Oh! I even have that part on camera, did I? What the hell is this guy's problem, bro? This guy's looking for the new phone! We're trying to have fun! Is he gonna close you? Is he gonna close you? We don't want this one for the black and on camera! Get on camera! He hit 
woman? He hit a woman? He hit a woman? He hit a woman? He hit a woman? What the fuck? What the fuck? He's dying! He's dying, bro! Oh my god! 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 Are we serious? Is it real? Oh my god! Who is that? Oh my god! Like when I first watched this, I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, fuck those kids. But when you start getting context coming in from some of the testimonies and then there are some parts where like that wasn't shown or when you like slow down because everything is happening so quickly and it's hard to process like the chaos. Um, when I initially saw the video, it was when it got to like this part right here. I didn't see this part right here. So it looks like they're just like chilling right there. I don't know why he would run up on them. I mean, his defense was trying to say that like he ran up on them because he thought the guy that was filming was holding the phone that was lost. I just don't know if I believe that part because... This is aggressive to me. Like, this is aggressive to me. I don't know why he would do that. So he puts the snorkels, he puts his hands on, I don't know, like the fucking tube. Like, this is just kind of weird. And then he drops his snorkel in there. So no one took the snorkel away from him. Like he told the other people that approach. And when he told the cops. So he loses his snorkel. They're laughing at him. They're making fun of him. Like they're laughing at him. I feel like at this point, just let him get his snorkel and like just fucking leave him alone. Right? <laughs> Now, it's possible that they were hyped up before because there was some interaction that happened off screen, and that's the reason why they're making fun of him so much. What? Wait, what are you doing? What's going on with y'all, homie? He's on camera. Guys, let's go. Oh my God, <laughs> He's on screen. <laughs> yeah, so they're making fun of him. He lost his snorkel. He's like trying to find what? it. He's like pointing at them. I think this other group is starting to come over, and he's pointing at them right now. What do you say? So now they're telling him to go away, go away. Who is this? Yes, yes, yes. From the, from the culture, from the culture. So they're being drunk, fucking stupid. This woman comes over and he thought that she was going to come over and help him, but she ends up coming. She tells him to go, 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 go. Who is that? Who the hell is this? Which I doesn't like she's not fucking de-escalating the situation. Her coming in here was like really fucking stupid because you're not making things any better. If she came over there was like, hey buddy, like what's going on? Oh, okay, you like lost your snorkel? Here, let me go find it for you. And you fuck off, right? Or get your group of friends and come help you. Her coming here does nothing. I think it's so stupid that she came over here. Like the kids are already yelling at the the kids are already yelling at him. Having you come over and yell at him further does like fucking nothing. And they're obviously doing the little girl thing because they're just trying to humiliate him further. So they're obviously lying about the little girl thing because they're just trying to embarrass him. And so I think he's trying to wave and like maybe like maybe he thinks more people are going to come over to help him. Oh, that was when he waved to his group of people. Sorry. His group of people are right over here. I think the state of defense mentioned this. So he waves, and I think that's him waving at his group of people to come help him. Yeah, that's his group right there. So 
his group is not far. I think the jury could be like, hey, like, why didn't you just go back to your group? So they're being stupid. They're humiliating him. But he's like standing there. He's like smiling. His hand is right there. That's where the knife is on the right side. See right there? That's where the clip of like the knife is. I don't, I don't know what you call it, but it's like where you like hook it onto your pants. Right there. He's got his hand. He's like ready. He's like smiling. That to me is just like very fucking off-putting. It was as if he was like really fucking humiliated and his anger was just like rising more and more and he was just like getting ready to just like fuck them up because of what they did to him. I mean, you can say that like, oh, maybe he was just like, you know, he was very nervous. Maybe he was, um... I don't know, acting in fear, but like, I don't know. It's just so weird to ha like, it's a two actions combined together of him smirking like that and having his hand glazing over the knife. That to me just seems like, oh, I'm going to fuck you guys up. Right. The smile alone, no, but the smile in combination with him putting his hand over the knife in his pocket, like he's ready to like fuck, like, like he's ready to fuck him up. Yeah. The screaming is too much. Yeah. It's a lot. So this right here, I don't, I don't like, like, don't ever fucking touch anyone. Like, don't ever fucking touch anyone. Like her, like, yes, you're a woman and you're placing your hands on him. Why the fuck do that? You're making things worse. I, I don't like this. Like her doing this. I, I don't know why you're here. I don't know if she's drunk also. Like this, waving your phone in front of someone's face. Like, no. Um, let me see if I can zoom it in more. Because I have it on my computer. Right, let me mute this really quick. Like the women, like this right here, like, no, like don't touch someone like that. I, I, I hate that they came here and that happened. I totally hate that for him. And so more people are coming over. That's the yellow shorts guy that comes over. This is, this is when the alleged punch happened. So apparently the reason why they all acted further was because she or he punch her face slash i don't think it's a punch i would probably say it's probably like an open hand slap thing where like he pushed her face in a way where her sunglasses fell off because you can see here that she has her sunglasses on you see her right there has sunglasses on uh she did have her hand like touching him so fucking cameraman is just fucking adding more to the chaos spins the camera around they're all laughing at him they're being drunk and then this is when the slap slash push to the face happened. And now you see her, she no longer has her sunglasses on. That's why I do believe now that she did get her face touched, pushed, whatever. Um, and then I'm looking over here. It looks like, at first I thought it was blue shorts that pushed him. But there's actually this girl right here. This girl right here. It looks like she has her arms out. This chick right here. I think when he pushed her face, knocked her sunglasses off, I think this chick right here pushed him into the ground because she was reacting for her friend. They're from the same friend group. And this is where things escalated. I'm just saying, like, when you're in a crowd of people, it fucking sucks. It's horrible. They're yelling, they're jeering at you. But why escalate things further? By pushing someone's face like that. That's just so weird. That's just so weird. Like, yeah, I think she's a piece of shit, but you don't touch someone's fucking face. I don't see the knife in his hand at this point. Um, the knife was, I saw it over here. Sorry, there's so many things that are happening at the same time. Let me see if I can find the knife. I saw, fuck, the fucking logo is blocking it, but see that right there? See that fist? I believe that's the knife right there. He already had the knife before he got pushed into the water, before he got slapped. So you think touching someone's like touching someone like that warrants having your face shoved away, knocking your glasses? Yeah, this right here. I think he already has a knife. It's like balled up right there. Hey, how are you doing, Taxi? How are you doing today? He already had the knife out. That's, that's why I think he was just waiting for them to do something so he can just fucking stab them because he was pissed at them. I think he has a right to be pissed at them. This is a situation that no one ever wants to be in, to be gang up like this. But I just don't see how you can call it self-defense when he was the one that escalated it further, never brandishes a knife, never announces the knife. 
Yeah, because he already had the knife. Uh, I'm not going to really slow it down when he's like stabbing people. I'll probably go through it pretty quickly. But. So he gets shoved. Someone smacks him. Gets shoved again by yellow shorts. So this is when he stabs yellow shorts, um, slicing him across the stomach. I'm not going to go slow. I'm just going to kind of go through this one. Or maybe I'll just do normal speed. Yeah, so at that point, he already sliced yellow shorts. Now, blue shorts is going to go next. He's going to get stabbed twice. So blue short looks like he's trying to, like, de-escalate. Like, hey, hey, back up, back up, back up. Give him space. And it seems like they're giving him space. So blue short looks like he's trying to de-escalate. Tell him to back up. And so he's probably telling him, like, you know, go. But here's the thing. I think, see right here? I think he was just trying to, like, tell him, like, hey, like, go. Get out of here. And the guy just fucking shanks him. And after he shanks this girl. So going back a little bit, this woman gets... The woman gets stabbed, like, right around here. And I don't know why she gets stabbed. See that? Maybe he was getting up and he, like, swiped, but she gets stabbed right there. I don't even see her, like, she's just, like, standing there. Why the fuck did she get stabbed? Why did he stab her? That's so weird to me. So this is when he stabs her, and she's, like, realizing, like, wait, what the fuck? What's wrong with my back? But to me, it seems like this guy was trying to get the other guy to go away. He's trying to tell him, like, hey, you should leave. And then he fucking gets stabbed. It's like. Look at that. See those? He, like, stabbed him twice. He stabs him twice. If. The <laughs> so he's. He, I don't know. I, I think he just wanted to fucking stab him because he was just pissed that they were making fun of him. Um, all this part is pretty stupid. Where was I? I was over here. Okay. Yeah. So this guy's telling him to go away. And I know, I, like, here's the thing. I'm trying to put myself in his shoes, okay? He's amped up. He got shoved into the water. He got slapped. He got pushed again. He's like, there are people yelling and, you know, they're like jeering at him and stuff like that. But I feel like right now, like, he's not getting pummeled. He's, like, standing up. This guy's, like, probably telling him to leave. And he just fucking stabs him. <laughs> I, I'm trying so hard to put myself in his shoes. Like, yeah, I would be, like, this is a horrible situation. But to me, he escalated it by shoving that, <laughs> that woman's face. And I don't like her. Don't, I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, I feel bad for her. She's a woman. Don't touch her face. I don't give a fuck. You know, if you're a fucking woman, you deck someone, then you're going to get decked back. But this is just like, I don't, I feel like he could have just been like, you know what? Maybe I should just get the fuck out of here and not shove this woman's face because what are they going to do? They're going to get mad. They're going to shove me back. And that's what they did. Now, if they started like stampeding him and like stomping on him and like held his head, head down or something like that, then okay, you're in fear of your life. But he had a little bit of space. You know, they, they gave him some space at some point. It's not like he's getting pummeled by 13 people at the same time. They're making it seem like it was pummeled by 13 people at the same time. But I don't know. It's, I'm just like, it's, it's a hard time. I have a hard time buying um, his defense. And then also when he goes up there and testifies, um, because he's already lied about, you know, everything that happened after the fact um, to the cops and the interrogations, um, I think it's going to be really tough for the jury to believe what he's going to say in the sand. So, like, when he said, they're like, oh, the reason why I ran towards the tubing kids is because I thought they had the phone. I don't know if they're going to believe that um, since he's already lied so much, right? So, I mean, I don't know. It's just, and then, yeah, like, I don't know. And, and, and it looks bad on the teens because this guy's bleeding out. No one's fucking helping him. My explanation could be like, oh, maybe they were scared. They were shocked. Maybe they didn't want to go near because they didn't want to get stabbed either. But... The man clearly starts walking away and yeah, it's like, I don't know. Like he's just like, he's just like there. No one's like helping him or maybe no one knew that he was like stabbed. You know, maybe everyone's still processing it, but I, I just have a hard time believing it's just, um, yeah, I have a hard time believing it's like self-defense all the way.
There's just there's just so many things that I can just pick at. But I can also understand why um I can understand why people also believe it's like self defense, right? Like I can see it from both angles. It's just that I just from my perspective, I just see it more on like I don't know, like the guy just kept he just kept um escalating things. And the teens were being fucking stupid too. Yeah. Sherelle says feels like he was waiting for an excuse to attack, hence the smile, lack of words, and calmness. Right. Cause like I'm trying to take into context of like everything that happened before, during, and then I mean afterwards, I didn't really care afterwards. But I mean afterwards I think would we'll just look bad when the jury um deliberates. Cause they're gonna be like, oh, okay, like he lied, he acted like he wasn't in the scene, he acted like he wasn't the perpetrator. All that stuff. It just doesn't look good. He was in total panic and he was smiling. He went into like total PTSD mode. I just, I, I, the reason why I don't believe that he was in fear for his life because he knew that he had a knife. He knew he had a knife and he was like, he probably knew that he was going to fuck them up. Cause like not everyone in the group was like physically aggressive. I, I, I just think that, I don't know. I, I just don't. I don't know. The self-defense thing, I just don't see it. Yeah, that's the video right there. The fear just doesn't go away. I mean, no doubt he was in fear. But I don't know if he was, like, in fear for his life. Because, like, I felt like he was just waiting for something to happen. Like, I don't know. Can you really call it self-defense if you're just, like, standing there waiting for something to happen so you can step the fuck out of them? I guess that's just how I see it. Uh, to be fair, the only purpose drove him towards Meltdown, probably thinking what's the worst thing that could happen with the half-naked old man. Wait, what? <laughs> but yeah, um, that's the video. What are you guys thinking? The person who brought the teens alcohol has a lot to answer for because their behavior. I, you know what? The teens probably just got it themselves somehow. Uh, maybe went into, you know, the dad's, mom's, parents' pantry, got the alcohol. Maybe they have like a 21 year old college student and got them alcohol. I don't know. That's possible. If he doesn't have a duty to retreat, he can just stand there and wait for something to happen. Um, so I mentioned this earlier, but in Wisconsin, you don't have a duty to retreat, but it seems like the jury can consider whether or not retreat was an option when making the deliberation. Apparently there's like case law in Wisconsin um, that allows for that. So that's why I'm waiting to see, you know, when both sides go and then the judge when they give instructions um i wonder if they're going to include that all right so this is the other victim all right please be seated <clears throat> we are back on the record with the jury everyone is present and accounted for uh, Mr. Anderson, who is the next witness? PJ Martin. Is Mr. Martin in the courtroom? Okay. <coughs> Mr. Martin, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be back? Please have a seat in the witness chair. Sometimes you're frozen, paralyzed, or can't move. I just see him escalating and just running towards them, grabbing on their tubes like that. Hitting the woman, it was, for me, it just, it just seemed like it was just like escalating everything. Um, oh, you're grinding on Final Fantasy fourteen. I'm playing Final Fantasy Rebirth right now. It's so good. Did you see? I said, oh, court is over for today. Um, the state has one witness. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did hear that the state was going to rest today or tomorrow. I don't believe he was in fear. He just seems to humiliate, which infuriated him. Uh, usually people who smile in fear will still have fear in their eyes. He did not. Yeah, I all I saw from like that portion right there, it just seemed like to me, um, coupling with him putting his hands over the knife, it just felt like he was just, <laughs> he was just pissed. Mr. Anderson. And he had every right to be pissed. Uh, Alexander James Martin. Do you go by a nickname? Uh, AJ. Yeah. And AJ, were you tubing with friends on July 30th, 2022 on the Apple River? Uh, yes, I was. And you're friends with Tony? Yeah, we were uh, roommates in college. And then that was the first time we'd seen each other in like three years. Okay. 
And what, what college? Uh, River Falls, Wisconsin. What city and state do you live in now? Uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Did you have any prior criminal convictions? Uh, I'm going to go to... Let's just get right to it. Oh, fuck. Sustained. So I'm going to go forward back to the... Oh, yes. This is AJ, the, uh, the guy in the yellow shorts. Uh, he was the one that was stabbed first. Position where we were before. Or what was it first? Yeah, I think he was stabbed first, and it seems like he, like, sliced him across the stomach. I apologize. So again, you said here at 2754, you're attempting to keep him down and he manages to move away from you, the person who's pushing him somewhere in the back area, right? Yes? Yes. I was trying to push him in the front left shoulder and I got the back left shoulder. Sure. Because he was getting up and I was not fast enough to get the front left shoulder. Um, and I'm gonna go through some other photos here that might be difficult. Are you okay with that? Yeah. In this position now, you, that's you in the yellow shorts, correct? Correct. And to your right is Dante Carlson, correct? I believe so. I don't know. I, I, I don't remember seeing anyone else there. I remember pushing down and... Yeah, I agree with that. I think when the ladies came over, they definitely fucking escalated and made things worse. I don't know why they came over. It was, like, fucking stupid. <laughs> this, strange. Sure. Is this person... You knew what Dante... Wait, did something happen here? Uh, I'm sorry. Something happened really quick. See, after you woke up... Um, he was talking about how he was holding his insides. Okay, after you woke up. After, when you woke up the first time, was that after surgery? Yeah, it was around 11.30 that night, I believe. Did you have follow-up surgeries? Um, a, a few, yeah. Did they, was your wound stitch closed right away? No, um, they put what they call a wound back on it. Um, I assume that acts as kind of like a fake flesh or skin. Um, and they left that on for about a week, doing other exploratory surgeries just to make sure that they didn't miss any other lacerations or injuries. And then after almost a week or so, they uh, had intern done internal stitches but left the top open so that it would heal better. And they put a another smaller wound back over that. Did you have to... You wanted the demo of the jury? Um, I actually have an answer to that. Give me a second. Let me look it up. Do you have um, any sort of devices to assist with digestion, eating, feeding? Um, yeah, I had uh, a few feeding tubes, um, some NG tubes to help with uh, just the extra fluids in my stomach. Um, but yeah, I had the feeding tube because uh, after the surgeries, I had developed a hematoma in my uh, intestine and it was completely blocked off. There was no food, no water, and the IV, IV nutrition wasn't doing enough. I had lost 50 pounds in that 27-day stint. AJ, were you drinking on the river that day? Yes. Do you believe you're intoxicated? Uh, probably, yeah. Did, do you recall how you got to shore? Um, no, not really. I, uh, didn't know that I did really. I just remembered the standing up and the falling down and then I know people did move me in the end, but I don't remember it. I couldn't, I couldn't see or feel anything at that point. And you don't remember the do you, well, let me ask, do you remember much of anything or anything from the point where you're on shore till you wake up in the hospital? No, um, I think I lost too much blood at that point. I mean, I, in the past, I've lost a lot of blood from an injury when I was younger, and I lost sight and vision. Or, I mean, I lost sight and hearing from that, too. So I know that, like, once you do lose enough, certain parts start, stop working because your body's trying to keep you alive, not your senses. Uh, do they have the option of not guilty of first, but guilty of second, et cetera? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I feel like sometimes states do things, well, states just do things differently. You talked about an artificial skin they had on at the hospital. Oh, uh, yeah, the wound back. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, the jury is comprised of eight men, six women, uh, two alternatives. Two jurors are in their 20s. One is in their 30s, three in their 40s, three in their 50s, one in their 60s, three in their 70s, one in their 90s. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's good for him, I would say. Having most of the jurors be in their 40s plus. 
that's pretty good for him. Who's the guy that's, or who's the guy or woman that's serving in their 90s? <laughs> okay. That's crazy. I, I, that means you must be really fucking healthy. If I had to sit there and, um, yeah, if I had to sit there for that long, uh, my back and my, my shoulders start giving out, the bathroom breaks needs to start happening. All right, that's a jury. I don't know. I mean, shit. Maybe he'll get an acquittal. Hey, uh, just a graphic photo. Like, one first. Right, they're not going to show us, right? Let me just make sure. I think Court 2 does a pretty good job not showing us. Okay. Just, can you just tell me what that photo shows? Uh, shows the, the wound vac and I guess the extent of the wound. It, I mean, yeah. Is that a photo of you in the hospital? Yeah, that was the, uh, the next morning. Okay. AJ, do you recall telling law enforcement, um, I don't think I touched him, but if I was, my hand was on his shoulder, it wasn't forceful? Yeah. And did you tell law enforcement your, your goal was to try to break it up? Yes, I, I remember that. I'm going to go through some slides with you. That section of frames I just went through, AJ, are those, is that the part where you got hit yeah. with a knife? Yeah. And that, did you know that guy's name at the time? No. Now, you know, I know him as Nick Lemieux. Yeah. If you know, I don't want you to speculate, but do you know if that's, and again, don't answer. If you, if you don't know, if it's fine to say you don't know. Is that from the slice, or was it, did you have further incisions from surgery? No, that's all from the slice. There's, um, it actually goes from, like, you can't see it super well in the picture, but it goes above my ribcage, too. They, they didn't have to open me up. I was already open. Do you know, are you comfortable showing the jury? Oh, uh, yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Yeah, oh, sorry, I, I went too fast. So that's the injury that he had? It stops right there. There's a little gap there, if I really split. Okay. It. Thank you. Jesus, how, how did he survive? Now, I'm going to show, don't turn the screen on yet, please. It's going to be frame 3111, and I don't want to show it gratuitously, but I want the jury to see it. So if we could just turn it on for a second, turn it off. Yes. He said that's all from the slice. He says, do you know if it's from... Here, I'll just play it. If you know, I don't want you to speculate, but do you know if that's... And again, don't answer. If you, if you don't know, if it's fine to say you don't know. Is that from the slice, or was it... Did you have further incisions from surgery? No, that's all from the slice. There's... Um, it actually goes from... Like, you can't see it super well in the picture, but it goes above my ribcage, too. They, they didn't have to open me up. I was already open. Yeah, he said that... Oh, God. They didn't have to open me up. That was already open. Yeah, because his, um, his like, intestines were, like, out. Are they gonna... Oh, this is, like, a chopped-up version. Ah, okay, okay. Actually, you know what? Shit, let's just go to cross-examination, then. They'll ask the tough questions. I want to ask you some questions, okay? So this is cross-examination right now. Yep. I understand watching the video and seeing the pictures is upsetting to you. Is that fair? Yes. I'm going to try to do it without the photos, but... If you need to see one, we don't need to display it. Just let me know if you need something to refresh your memory. I'm happy to show you on my computer or some other way. I want to do this as easy as we can. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I want to ask about some of the things that you initially told the police about what happened, okay? Okay. Fair to say that your memory is spotty? I wouldn't say spotty. I would say I remember everything up until I got stabbed pretty well, at least everything that I saw. Okay. For the most part. In Fair to say that's not what you told the police when you first met with them. I mean, it was days after and I was on a bunch of pain meds. It's pretty understandable, I think, to not have the greatest memory at the time. Maybe. I'm just trying to establish the fact that at that time, you didn't tell the police of certain things that you remembered. Agreed? Sure, yeah. Since that time, 
what you're saying is your memory is improved, correct? I think that shock has worn off and I was able to remember things that I might have. Really, Crystal? I see mixed bags of um, comments. Um, like the ones that are like clip it's like from like the news organization and stuff. I see the ones that are all like going against the teens. Um, but the one I was going through, like some of the longer streams, they were all um, supporting um, the uh, the victims. But yeah, I don't know. I, that, that's what I saw. <laughs> I saw it was like a mixed bag of both. Off, yes. okay. So again, I understand you have your reasons to explain why you think your memory got better, but we can agree your memory has changed from when you first talked to the police to what you're telling the jury today. Right? Yeah, I just said that in different words, but yes. And in that time frame, I would imagine you spoke with your friends and family about what happened, correct? Uh, I mean, a little, I guess, you know. I mean, yeah, I'm not, this is a life-changing event for you, correct? I mean, it was, it was posted everywhere. People knew before I said anything, so. It, I imagine... Probably a day doesn't go by where somebody asks you questions about it, right? Maybe not so much now, but when it, when it happened, yeah. And amongst your group of friends, it sounds like you're really close with Tony Carlson, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, do you live with him now? Yeah. Okay. And as a result of living with Tony now, I imagine you still uh, you also see his brother Dante Carlson, correct? Uh, a few times, but he lives in Wisconsin. I've only seen Dante maybe three or four times since the incident. Okay. And that includes yesterday. All right. Um, how about uh, Madison and Riley? Did, did you know them before July 30th? I didn't know Maddie, Riley, Scotty, Janelle, um, Sheena. Right? I didn't know any of them before S that day. Since then, because of the shared experience, have you talked with them about it? Um, Maddie, not so much. She's kind of hard to reach. Um, um, okay, I just want to talk to the part where um, the events are unfolding. Do you remember this young man over here in the gray suit sitting off to the side with a computer on his lap? Yes, sir. Um, that's the uh, investigator Schultz who you spoke with on that day? Yep. Whatever day that was in August, correct? Mm -hmm. And what you told him was, quote, the suspect had one of the girls, Maddie, by the head with his hand, and then I watched him pull her hair. That's what you told Mr. Schultz, correct? I'm pretty sure that somewhere in there I had mentioned a punch, too, but... This, I, I want to read you if you said this sentence to him, all right? Did you say to him, the suspect had one of the girls, Maddie, by the head with his hand, and then I watched him pull her hair, and then I looked back, and I was like, Tony, we got to do something now. And so, like, I just wanted to go over there and break it up, and by the time I got over there, Maddie had gotten away. Okay. Then That's what you said, correct? Sounds pretty accurate, yeah. So when you first said that to the police, you don't mention in that sentence anything about a punch, correct? I, I didn't in that sentence, no. I you might said, have later on. You said that... Uh, Glasses fall off really easily, stupid to focus on that. Uh, it's just really aggressive behavior to touch someone in a way where their glasses would fall off. So that's why I think that he probably shoved her, slapped her, whatever it was. I don't know if it's a slap, probably just like a shove in the face. He had her by the head, and then he pulled her hair, correct? Yeah. And as you sit here now, can you describe to me how he had her by the head? Uh, well, from what I remember, she had nope. already kind of started to walk away. Uh, and then he grabbed her by the like, ponytail and okay. pulled and then punched with his left hand. Okay. And that was how I don't know if I believe this part. He hit her in the left cheek and why the glasses weren't affected. It's because he was from behind. Okay. Um, so your memory is she's turned and walking away. I'm just trying to break this yes. down. And she's got her essentially back to Mr. Mew, correct? That was what I remember seeing. And again, all, we, all you can do is tell us your memory. Yep. Um, and as she's walking away, your memory is that he reaches out and grabs the back of her hair, correct? Yes. And do you know which hand he grabs the back of her hair with? Oh, because he, was, he wasn't there when it happened. He was, like, walking towards them, right, at that point? Christine says he was across the river when he saw that. Yeah, because I think he was walking after the woman got hit, whatever the fuck it was. That was when her group started coming over to help her out, I think. I would have assumed the right, because I, okay. I, th I believe he punched her with the left. Okay. So. And so did you know that at that time, when at 149 in the video, the, bla the knife had already been shown at 145 in the video? I didn't at the time, but after watching the video, yes. I but your know. memory is that whatever he had in his right hand, he still managed to reach out his right hand and grab her by the hair with his right hand. Yeah. And then he pulled her back? Yeah, he pulled back and punched. So he punched her as she's facing away? Well, when you pull someone's hair back, their head moves, so sure. her head turned towards him, and then he punched. And no, this isn't fair to Mr. Trophacy, but if I'm pulling him back, if I'm Mr. Mew and this is Maddie, the punch is coming from this direction? Okay, but he wasn't pulling her like that. I understand. Mr. Trophacy does not uh, look like Maddie for lots of reasons we're not going to talk about, but... Oh, poor guy! <laughs> He's going to fall over. Right? His hand's up here? Yeah. And the head's coming back? Mm-hmm. And then the left hand comes around? Yeah. Okay, and that's the manner in which you said that he hit her? That's how I remember it. And then it would be upon her left side here? It's probably in this area right here. Okay, and you're Maybe making up it... to the jaw or the cheekbone, but Shh. in this area. Um, and I'm just trying to make sure we get uh, what you said down. And so you're describing an area to the front of the ear, correct? Front, yeah, front of ear area, like sideburn area. Sure. Where on you, you have some sideburns coming down, correct? Yes. All right. And where on you wearing glasses, it was below the frame of the glasses, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Is that a yes? Yes. Sorry. That's all right. Um, so that's no, it makes sense now um, that he saw it from a distance or he could be lying.
it's your memory of what you saw, is in pulling her hair with one hand and punching with the other, correct? Yeah, but also when you were pulling back on him, you have to remember she had, uh, not trying to be rude, but like she has the hair, you know? Yeah. And yes. so you also have to, you have to remember too though that her ponytail might have been not centered. So when he pulls, she's not necessarily going straight back. Yeah, she could I, be going to the side, she could be going to the other side. I'm not trying to be, if it sounds as if I'm being trying to be critical, Mr. Martin, I'm just yeah. trying to gather the facts. No, I, don't, I don't think that, I just felt like I wanted to or needed to say that. Okay, that's fine. Fair to say that the description you just gave now isn't the description that you gave to the police back in August of 22, agreed? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Um, another sentence that you uh, told to the police, you were talking to the police about um, your understanding that the suspect, Mr. Mew, had been making advances on one of the girls there. Is that right? Uh, I didn't really know. I didn't know if that was what was happening. I was, I had heard the other comments that the other group was making, so I... Uh, he had the knife because one of his friends told him to bring it so they can cut some rope. Uh, it was like a pocket knife. Like, it's not like some like kitchen knife or anything like that. How did he manage to stab so many kids, though? Uh, if it's self-defense? I didn't even know if there was a girl in their group at that point in time. Um, I was just going over there because I didn't think that it was super smart to let I think his argument would have been, if he had only stabbed, like, this guy, um, I think, like, okay, maybe self-defense. Mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe. But the fact that, like, more people just get, more people just got stabbed, and I don't know. I just, when we were slowing down the video, I just don't understand why more people kept getting stabbed. Um, you can say that, like, he was, like, still in fear mode, but, like I said, with, like, what happened before, like, his demeanor before, I don't, it just seems like he just wanted someone to fuck up just so he can stab them. I Girls dominate. go and approach a 250-pound man by themselves. So just a lot to unpack there again. Lots of things were said, and you didn't know what to believe. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. But when you're describing this to the police, you're describing, I'm just trying to set this up where you, you say something to the police. Does that make sense? Okay. You say, I heard they were making advances on one of the girls there. Make sense? Something along those lines, yeah. And then the police officer says, they're like, yeah, the guy's hitting on her. She's not of age. The police officer says that to you, and in response, you say, I saw him grab the other girl by the head. So it didn't really matter at that point. Those are the words that you told Investigator Schultz, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, yes. Okay. Other things that you said on that day were that you didn't touch Mr. Mew, correct? I said that that was a possibility. You read that earlier. You were asked, were you touching him when you were getting stabbed? The answer, no. Do you remember? Answer, I don't think I ever did. If I did, like my hand was on the shoulder, maybe, but it wasn't forceful. Yeah. Those so, are the words that you said? So I had said possibly not, but I also did give credit to the fact that I could have touched him. I understand that. I'm asking, I'm just trying to gather what you exactly said to the police. Yeah, I answered. And the third thing that you said to the police regarding those things is you, uh, you said that you saw, I think you said in your words, the, the black guy hit him, correct? I thought it was him, but I wasn't sure. Okay. And you've learned since then that it's your roommate's brother that yes. hit him, correct? Yes. But that's not what you told the police, correct? It's not what I remember. Do you have a memory of the black guy hitting him? That's what I thought I saw, but there was a lot of people standing close to each other, okay. so it was pretty, I think, understandably pretty easy to get confused. Understood. Understood. So you thought you saw him pull her I think the only black guy there was a the cameraman, right? Air and punch her with his left hand, right? Uh, you I thought did. you didn't touch him at all, right? I, and you, I gave... I didn't think that I didn't touch him. It was... I could have possibly not. And you thought that the black guy punched you, correct? Yes. Those were the memories that you shared with the police in August, correct? Sure, yes. Fair to say that all those memories are wrong? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would... Uh, yes, you agree that those memories are wrong? I would say... No, I wouldn't say that the second one is wrong, because like I said, I gave credit to both the possibility okay. of me hitting him or, or pushing him and the possibility of me not touching him at all. Well, let's pull that one out, and let me just talk about the other two. Do you agree the memory that you told the police that you had of Mr. Mew pulling uh, Madison from behind by the hair and punching her with the left hand, that's wrong? I mean, I guess I can't say yes or no because it doesn't really show that in the video and I, I mean my memory about that hasn't changed so okay. that's still how you remember it that's how I remember it yes okay. and the memory about uh, the black guy punching Mr. Mew that's still how you remember it that's no not I mean I I don't know exactly what I saw I saw him close to him and it... multiple folks in the teenage group had knives too what when was when did they ever have knives none of them had the knife and none of them took him out though it was never shown in any of the video or any parts of the video could have been his arm that hit him, but I really didn't know what I saw at that point, so... Because I know Mew told the police that they had knives and that he grabbed one of their knife, and that's why he stabbed them. But that was not true. Okay. All right. Um. Now, if they had knives in their pockets, but, I mean, that doesn't matter because, like, they never had them out. I want to go through... <laughs> then how would he... How would he know they had knives, then? If they never drew them out. Um, 
a portion of what I think is on the video to just ask if that is what you remember happening, okay? Okay. Because um, as I think you told the police during your interview, you said to the police... Oh, it was in response to why would anyone bring a knife? Okay, I thought you were trying to say that, like, oh, Mew knew that he was being threatened because the teens also had knives and they, like, had them out or something. I was like, wait, what? I'm so confused. Unless there was something I didn't see. I wanted to get... I wanted to get the guy away from us, but I wasn't going to try and like punch him. I'm not a fighter. I'm tiny. That's what you told the police, right? Yeah, I was okay. the biggest I'd ever been in my life, and I was still not a super big guy. He had 80 pounds on me. Understand. I'm just trying to, again, the words that you said to the police were, I'm not a fighter. Yes. All right. At some, we saw in the slides there that at some point, Mr. Mew goes down into the water mm -hmm. from Mr. Uh, Dante Carlson punching him, right? Yes. And just to put it into context. And then we see in the slides, your leg, you kind of approach and stand over him, correct? I wouldn't say over him. I would say I'm to the side of him, and then he starts moving, and okay. my body position plus where he moved himself would make it appear that way. Sure. He's on the ground, correct? Yep. In the water, correct? Yes. You're standing on two feet, correct? Yes. You weren't leaning over him, but it might appear that way if somebody is down in the water looking up, correct? It could, yeah. And when yeah, that... Yeah, I don't have any issues with... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I don't have any issues with him having a knife. I think initially when people think of, like, him having a knife... They're thinking of like a kitchen knife or something like that. Um, but like having a pocket knife, like that's not really abnormal. That happens. You don't push your friend Dante away, do you? I, uh, uh, I didn't even know that Dante was there at the moment. I didn't see the second hit or slap or the third one. I had wet hair. My hair was hanging down. I was looking down. I wasn't focused on other people. I was focused on getting this man away from everyone else. So this man... This man, Nikolai that, knew. Yeah, this man, at that point, you knew he had been punched and knocked to the ground and he's in the water, correct? Yep. And you're telling the jury that you, what you were trying to do is you were trying to get him away from other people while he's down in the ground in the water. Get people away in some way, shape, or form. It didn't need to be him. I wanted him to stay down so we couldn't go and punch another person. And then I was going to tell everyone there to back away. Cause, right. you know, so there's lots to unpack there again. You could, you, as you said, you wanted to get other people away, but you didn't go to the other people. You went to Mr. Mute, correct? Yeah, I went to the guy who was punching people first. Correct. Um, again, based upon your memory that he pulled someone's hair and punched them from behind, correct? Based on the memory that I know that he punched someone. Yes, okay. it doesn't matter how he punched them. I know he punched them, and he shouldn't have. Okay. Um, and you were going to make him pay for that? No. So when he's down in the water on the ground and you're standing there trying to be the peacemaker because you're not a fighter, you thought it was going to be peaceful to you to keep him down in the water? I mean, it was shallow water. His head wasn't below. All we needed was an extra second to get people to move away from him, and then he could get up, and we could possibly have a conversation. But, I mean, he hadn't used any words up until that point, so probably not. So when you're standing there next to him when he's on the water, you don't see your friend Dante come up and smack him across the face a second time. You don't see that. <laughs> Yes, because before any of the physical altercations happen, the teens just wanted him to just physically leave, and they just wanted to humiliate him. I don't think they wanted to get physical with him. I think once the, when the woman was hit, whatever the fuck it was, um, that's when things went down. But I think all the, at the end of the day, the teens just wanted to humiliate him, and then they just wanted him to fuck off. Um, I think he could have just fucked off. Yeah, I think he could have just walked away and just fucked off. I saw him get dropped into the water, and I was looking down at him. My hair was over my eyes here. I mean, it was shorter than it is now, but you can imagine. So you didn't see him go back into the water the second time in response to Dante hitting you? Didn't you didn't see that? He went down into the water, and then he never got up. Sure, because Dante until hit he, when he was in the water, correct? Reminds me of Lion King. What scene in Lion King? You said the second time he was in the water. That's the first time still. The second time came after he stabbed me. Okay, understood. Um, his uh, first time was in the water was extended... For a longer period of time because Dante smacked him when he was already down in the water. Sure, yes. And you're saying you were standing right there, but you didn't observe that? No, like I said, my hair was in the way, and I wasn't really focused on Dante. I didn't know where Dante was. I was focused on the man who was hitting in the people, who was hitting people, not... At that point, the man that was hitting people was Dante Carlson, right? Sorry, should I... I will rephrase. The man who started the physical altercation. Okay. Um, that was what, that's what essentially your opinion is, correct? I mean, I would say that the first person to throw a punch would be the first person to be aggressive, regardless of if um, there are other people slightly touching his shoulder. I mean, even you were talking about the consent to touch thing. And he touched other people without their consent, too. So, I mean, if you want to go that way, we, we can, but it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not trying to go anyway, sir. I'm just trying to gather the facts. Um, they said you got 10 seconds. Yeah, I think it was a threat. I think it was just a threat. Like, oh, you got 10 seconds to leave. Go, 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 go. Get the fuck out of here. You got 10 seconds. Um, I, just, I guess I just have an issue with him being the one that escalated it by pushing the woman in her face so the person that's or punching pushing the woman in general mr mew you don't see that correct i saw mr mew fall into the water and i didn't see anything after that mm -hmm. in terms of him getting hit when you saw him fall in the water you went up to him from behind no. 
apologize, but I'm going to need to show some slides. Yeah, I mean, I can explain what I did. That's good. I'm going to just go through some slides. Oh, when they were attacking Scar? Yeah, I do remember that. Showing you what's 2705. That's Mr. Mew in the water, correct? Yes. That's Dante Carlson swinging yeah. to hit him, correct? And my leg in the bottom. That's court. your leg in the bottom, correct? Yep. You're moving towards Mr. Mew, agreed? Yes. I'm moving at him from his, what would be his front left side. And then eventually you come to be behind him, correct? Uh, when I would still say I'm at the midpoint of his body. He just sat up. I wouldn't necessarily constitute being behind someone. I mean, yes, I, I was, I guess, technically, but he wasn't there when I walked there. He moved himself to have me behind him. You moved yourself, correct? No, he moved. I, I moved. I walked over there, yes, but I was standing right at about his hips, and then he stood there, sat up. So is it your testimony that in some way Mr. Mew was aware of your presence and intentionally turned to have you behind him? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying he did it intentionally. I'm just saying that that's what happened. Okay. So, again, you're behind him, correct? In uh, sort of on his side. <coughs> Until he this starts. you with your left hand on his back shoulder yeah, and his but... right hand on his back shoulder. You're behind him, correct? Yeah, I have both hands on one shoulder. If I, I'm not completely behind him. You can see I'm somewhat on the side. But yes, I'm somewhat behind him due to his repositioning. You're pushing him, correct? Yeah, I, that's where I had said that I thought I'd push him in the front left shoulder to keep him down. But I was there too late, so I didn't get that shoulder. I guess I got the back of it. And You said you're a peacemaker, right? You like to mediate? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. You can understand how somebody who'd been down in the water and hit two times, getting pushed from behind, may not understand that you're trying to mediate. It goes to his mindset. Answer the question. Sorry, what was the question? Sure. As somebody who likes to mediate and was attempting to mediate, you can understand how a person in Mr. Mew's position who'd been hit twice in the water might not understand or appreciate your intent to try to de-escalate by pushing him in the behind. I guess. Might misunderstand that, right? He, he could misunderstand that. Sure. I mean, could have been solved if he tried to use words at all, too. Could have. And let me just go from 2745 to 2745. 47. Do you see that? That's you still. That's your body behind him, correct? Yes. That's your right hand on the right side of his back, correct? Yeah. And that's your left hand on the left side of his back, correct? I'd say right's more in the middle, but the left one is definitely on his left shoulder. And that's your friend, your friend, your roommate's brother, who is your friend Dante Carlson. That's his hand that we can see underneath your underarm there that's hitting Mr. Mew, correct? Uh, like I said, I didn't see it, but the video showed it, so I mean. So your based, face, off, based off of memory, I can't say yes. Okay. Your face is right there, and you're saying you didn't see Dante hit Mr. Mew there. No, like I explained, my hair was down in front of my eyes. It's wet. My hair's thick and black, so it's... You to remember that you're the armchair Monday morning quarterback, and this is a heated, short, live confrontation. You don't have a lot of testosterone flowing in your veins. No, I get it, and I feel like a lot of people would just fucking leave instead of standing there, waiting for something to happen, having the knife out, smiling, glazing your hand over the knife, ready for something to happen so you can stab them. I, I feel like people would just fucking leave. Like, it's humiliating. It sucks. But all I saw there was just, like, anger that was, like, slowly building up. And he was just waiting to stab someone. Sorry, you might be watching the... I don't know if you're watching it live right now, so you might not hear this response until, like, later. But that's, that's how I viewed it. That's how I saw it. Like, he was just getting angry, and it was just, like, fuming. Like, all the other people surrounding him, yeah, they're all jackasses. They're not perfect victims. They're all jackasses. They made things worse. They were also escalating by verbally going after him. But uh, what he did was just... Uh, he fucking like stab people. I don't know. That to me is just like you're just like way going overboard. It's not super easy to see through. What you did say is Mr. Mew wasn't saying anything. You could agree that in this position, with somebody pushing him from behind and somebody hitting him in the front, it might be a difficult time to use your words to make peace. Yeah, the right time to use your words would have been before he punched a woman in the face. We can get to that later. Um, you extend your body to in an attempt to push him down, as you say, correct? Well, I was pushing down, and then he got up, and I fell forward, so... I was asking about your intent. Your intent was to push him down in the water. Agreed? It was to push his shoulder down so that he stayed down, and I could tell everyone to back up. Yes. But you agree. Your intent was to push him down and keep him in the water. To keep him down. If the water... I mean, if the ground was there, I would have done the same thing. It didn't, I wasn't worried about there being water or not. It was shallow. His head wasn't going below. He was going to be okay. You can understand how, perhaps, somebody in the position getting pushed from behind in the water might not appreciate that you were trying to protect him and keep him okay, right? I is guess. His head appear to be getting wet there? Not his face. That's where your mouth is. I, I don't. I see maybe the right cheek dip in a little bit, but as soon as you go go a few slides further, and you'll see his head sit back up again. Sure. Safe as can be, right? I I don't know. It is. Yeah, please let's let's focus on the facts. Just yeah. Clean Q and A, please. Just back up a little bit more here. When we you said his head didn't go in the water. 
fair to say that's his head making a wave, correct? I would say that's his back making a wave and okay. his head still not in the water. Have you ever fallen back after getting laid out in the water like that? Yeah, I have. Okay. Did it feel like maybe the water was coming up on you even if it technically didn't? Uh, no, I mean, I, water usually has a pretty distinct sure. feeling on your skin. I mean, and when you had that experience where you got laid out and fell back into the water, did someone come up and attack you a second time in that situation? Sustained. So I'm going to go forward back to the position where we were before. I apologize. So again, you said here at 2754, you're attempting to keep him down, and he manages to move away from you, the person who's pushing him somewhere in the back area, right? Yes? Yes. I was trying to push him in the front left shoulder, and I got the back left shoulder. Sure. Because he was getting up, and I was not fast enough to get the front left shoulder. They don't get a hall pass for that. Teens are tried as adults for murder all the time, but these teens aren't murdering people. They're, like, laughing and jeering, and they're, like, insulting him. That, to me, I'm like, okay, that's a very fucking immature, but I could see it as being, like, a teenage, young adult thing. Um, you're just really fucking immature. You're fucking drunk, and you're acting fucking stupid. The guy came over. He was aggressive. Yeah, just fucking ignore him. The guy came over and he was like hanging around. Let him find his like his uh, snorkeling gear. Let him like just leave him alone. But I mean, if the teens were the ones that were getting physical first, and I was like, yeah, fuck it, <laughs> give him the fucking knife. But the fact that like I I just feel like there's just so many things against him. Um, um, I, it's, and I'm gonna go through some other time. photos here that I have a hard time seeing that it was like just self defense. I don't know. Might be difficult. Are you okay with that? Yeah. In this position now, you that's you in the yellow shorts, correct? Correct. And to your right is Don. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Um, going overboard while defending yourself is to some degree um, excusable. Um, I, I, I just feel like he wasn't lost in the moment while he was, like, hacking down people. I feel like he went overboard by just even having the knife out, period. One. Um, and like I said, I have an issue with just him not brandishing it, not, him not announcing it, him telling them, like, hey, you know, if any of you fuckers get close to me, you know, I'm going to fucking stab you. Like, back up. Back the fuck up. Get away from me. Like, I just didn't see any of that. If I saw that and they still went after him, then I would be like, yeah, whatever. They had what's coming because they knew he had the fucking knife. Like, what do you expect to happen when you're attacking someone with a knife? You're going to get stabbed. It's just that, I don't know. I just... Mm. Um, I kind of skimmed through this before. I, it was said the teens accused him of being a... Yeah, I mean, they were shouting horrible things at him. They were calling him a PDF. They were calling him an R-word. They were saying he was, like, looking for little girls. Like, all that is, like, really fucking stupid. They shouldn't have done that. But, I mean, those are, like, words, 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 right? When people are, like... When you're around, like, dumb fucking people, just get the fuck away. There's no point in reasoning with them. There's no point in doing anything. You just gotta leave. And it sucks. It's gonna ruin your fucking day. It might ruin your week. It might ruin your two weeks, right? It, it's horrible. But you just gotta get the hell out of there. Dante Carlson, correct? I believe so. I don't know. I, I, I don't remember seeing anyone else there. I remember pushing down and feeling this, strange. Sure. Is this person, you knew what Dante looks like, correct? Uh, yes. Everyone should be charged with something. Everyone was stupid in their own way. I mean, this is going to fucking traumatize forever. For sure, they will never fuck with someone ever again. Or if they do, maybe they'll have a weapon on them. But this is f for sure. Like, they're, they're traumatized by this shit. Um, Mama Jama, hey, how are you doing today? How's it going? Uh, in my opinion, the old guy was the original aggressor when he ran at them, grabbed on the occupied too. I see the teen standing their ground and telling him to leave. Okay. Uh, he didn't say, hey, I have a weapon, back off, or just leaving when he knew he was about to lose it. Dominique, yes, but they weren't using a weapon. He pointed out and he could have used his words. The guy, the guy could have just left and said he antagonized them and then he stabbed multiple people. Um... Corgi, when going up against a superior adversary, it common advice is to use element of surprise and go by give it all you got rule. <laughs> he could have just left. I'm sorry. I feel like element of surprise would be someone broke into your house and then you're trying to hide and then like get like an advancement on them. In this situation, in this situation, he just needed to just get out. Just get out and leave. I... I, I get what you're saying about the element surprise thing. Like he probably didn't want to show the knife to everyone because then maybe he would have got pummeled. But... I think that him not showing the knife, I feel like he just wanted to surprise them because he just wanted to fuck with them. Like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Rain, what's worse? Uh, if, sorry, Rain's, I don't know. I just can't go over the situation. Someone had to die because of the situation. Yeah, it just really sucks. I mean, the kid's like 17 years old. Um, I think when you're watching this video, my, my initial reaction uh, was pretty emotional. It was just like, wow, like, what the fuck? Like, fuck these people. Um, because all you see is that, like, you know, you see him getting surrounded, them yelling at him, and then you just see him getting pushed, and then things ensued, and then that's when, like, the stabbings happen, right? Everything just happened so quickly. Um, 
But when you're like watching it back and then you have more context and you're like, wait a second, did he really push that woman's face? Maybe that's why more of like the reinforcements came over because they're like, what the fuck? What's going on here? Why are you getting physical with this woman? But I mean, I'm, I'm not saying the woman's great either. Like, fuck her. Don't be touching people in public. Don't put your hands on them. Don't be yelling in their face. I, I think it's, it's, it's bad both ways. But I think one side definitely uh, way worse. Is that Dante in the two-tone gray shorts with the truly in his hand? Uh, I believe so, yeah. And then that's the same person that's legs are right there, correct? Correct. So you and Dante are standing very near Mr. Mew as he's beginning to try to get up out of the water, correct? Correct. And as he begins to get up out of the water, you move towards him, correct? Yeah. You didn't know that he had a knife, correct? No. Nope. You were going at him, correct? I don't know. I don't remember anything okay. after your first push. This is where you're trying to you push him down again, correct? Um, I would say we kind of attacked each other at that one if anything but i mean okay. i didn't I, I don't remember this so i can't okay. tell you i don't but you're I didn't, he, he got me before i did anything to him so this is oh. your hands on him agreed okay maybe my my hand is on his arm yeah this is you as you said attacking him correct i didn't mean attacking um when i say words didn't matter in this case i meant like words versus an escalation to like stabbing someone that to me when I'm like, okay, like seriously, you're going to start stabbing someone because like words were thrown at you and they're being jeered at, you're being humiliated. You know, let's say, let's say, let's say the woman, uh, what's her name? Madison, the one in the bathing suit. Let's say she went up to him and she like touched him, yelling at him aggressively and he like starts stabbing her. Actually, no, I wouldn't even count that as self-defense because I don't know if he would even be fear for his life at that point. No, probably not. I'm just trying to think like, I'm trying so hard to put myself in his position. I, f I felt like he, <laughs> I don't know, it's tough because you see how he was like when he was standing there. I, I just really do just get the, the feeling that he was just getting really, really angry and he just wanted to get back at them. Um, yeah, that's the feeling that I was getting. Sorry. Those are the words that you used to the jury. I, I mean, you were attacking him. I wasn't attacking him. Okay. You were trying to push him down in the water. I was trying to separate every, or get him isolated so that we could separate everyone else from him so we could get everyone away and then we could figure out what was actually going on because you hear teenagers asking for help you hear people yelling that he's a whatever and you i mean at that point and you see minors you're going to be more worried about getting him away from them before you ask the questions and you chose to do that by using your hands on his body to push him correct uh, yes i tried to keep him down with my arms yes and then i was going to tell everyone to back up and give him some space so as you said you're not a fighter correct yes you were trying to mediate correct yeah, that's all right this is, I, we've been through this before let's move on to what you're talking you'd heard that he people calling him a predator correct i don't know what i heard i heard just i heard them saying stuff about a little girl and i heard i just i don't know what else it was i, don't know, I didn't know like i said i didn't know if there was a girl in that group i wasn't worried about whether or not there was i was worried about getting the person that they were calling a pedophile or a raper away from the minors you, you can have agree. a conversation about that later you agree that even though you're not, as you say, you're not a fighter, you pushed a man from behind while your friend was smacking him in the front. Agreed? I would Hold on, hold on. Sustained. We've been through this before. Many times. Please. You have an please. please. I am speaking. <laughs> um, but, you know, I do, I do really like this case. I like how so many of us, like, disagree. I think it's nice to disagree and, like, go back and forth on uh, some cases. There are a lot of cases where, like, a lot of us are, like, on the same side, you know, and we're, like, just hate on that one person. But I do think this case is really interesting because it is very interesting to see all the different arguments for both sides. So I, I do like the disagreement here. We I feel like we rarely have, like, super disagreements that it's, like, 50-50 split. So I am enjoying this. Uh, the pointing out in the kids' words are escalating the situations. I get being scared if they all purposely surround him from the beginning, if they wouldn't leave him, but he had time. He just didn't want to. It's a tough case. Mm -hmm. I like that we disagree with kindness. Yeah, I mean, we're just like chilling here. Uh, we are disagreeing, <laughs> but we chilling, you know, we chilling. Maybe it's the cliff thing. Maybe it just makes everyone zen or something. <laughs> sorry. Please good? move to a new topic. I apologize, Judge. I thought you were done. Do you have any explanation as to why you pushed him while your friend was hitting him if you're not a fighter? I already answered well, no, this. No, please, please. Ask the answer. Sustain. Was it because you got caught up with the crowd? It was because I couldn't see the person in front of me because my hair was blocking my vision and I was focused on the man who had just punched a 23-year-old or 22-year-old girl in the face. That's all. Mr. Anderson? Nothing else. Right. Thank you, Mr. Martin. You may step down. Oh, 
Okay, who's next? Um, who's this guy? This is the camera. I, I want to watch the cameraman one, but oh God, the audio is like, I, I don't like the audio. Um, this is the victim's best friend. All right, let's watch this guy. All right, uh, we're back on the record in state of Wisconsin versus Nikolai Mew, uh, 2022 CF 518. Uh, Mr. Anderson and Mr. Smestad appear for the state. Mr. Nelson and Mr. Tropacy are present. They represent Mr. Mew, who is also present. Uh, we are ready to begin day three. Uh, I understand that there is an issue or two that the attorneys want to address with me. Yes, Judge. No, I don't keep knife on me, but I keep like pepper spray on me. <laughs> I got pepper spray. And I don't know if your honor would prefer to take it up now or later, but so the state anticipates calling Sandra Mew this afternoon. Um, when we your point amongst us, indicate to the jury that you're not feeling well. I just want to go over some of the things that you said to the police then to see if those how they track with today, okay? okay. Um, one of the first things that you said to them is, um, I don't remember much about. I was thinking too um i i feel like what stems from this is like your view of uh young adults i was like maybe that's maybe that's like where we disagree maybe that's like the genesis of the disagreement it could be that or it could also be like if you've ever been like um a victim of like a group of people like coming down on you i could see that as well um yeah i don't know because like for me i tend to be pretty forgiving of teens early 20s mid 20s maybe like almost late 20s actions like i feel like you're still maturing you do a lot of dumb shit you're fucking you know stupid sometimes um especially when you add an alcohol into that but i think that's different from like if you just like strip just like murder someone right that's very different but if like if you're being like drunk stupid aggressive and you're yelling at people and you're doing just dumb shit i know i'm just like okay you're just like young and you'll probably just like grow out of it hopefully hopefully you'll grow out of it um but i guess for me i tend to be more forgiving of people who are like that because i feel like they're just still uh maturing sure will protect me now nah, sure will be like take that bitch bye <laughs> sure wouldn't protect me she'll be like bye if anything, if I ever have anyone break into my house, sure, be like, oh, hey, how are you doing today? Um, can you can you give me some cookies, please? <laughs> Got the bear spray. You know, um, there's this place near me that has non-lethal guns or something like that. I was thinking of maybe checking out. I don't know. It's um like instead of like shooting like real bullets, it's like they shoot like sand at you or sandbags. I don't know what the fuck it is. But I was wondering if anyone in my chat, uh, if anyone has any experience with that. It's like non-lethal guns. Pepper spray once got me in trouble. I just put in Discord. Why? What did you do with pepper spray? Did you pepper spray someone? Um, I mean, I get a lot of people are having stupid these days, but it's no excuse to having zero empathies for these teenagers and to blame them for what happened. Yeah, I mean, because I do what I think what I hear a lot. Um, the common thing of the thing against the teenagers is like the fuck around, like fuck around and find out what happens wait fuck around and find out which i'm totally i'm totally for that there are people that do fuck around and like you know what sometimes you find out what happens because you end up fucking around with the wrong person and you know what you fucking deserved it but in this scenario i'm just like i i think the escalation was just way too much of a huge step um i don't know like i'm all about self-defense like you know someone's fucking with you like you know, if you think that you're in danger, like, yeah, fucking kill them. If someone breaks into your house, like, yeah, fucking go after them, uh, which is unfortunate because I live in California and California, I believe it's not a stand your ground law. So, but yeah. Um, are you allowed to drink in tube? Um, I think a lot. That's a pretty normal thing for people to do um, to drink in tube. I feel like um, a lot of people get like those like floaty, um, the floaty things that hold your your little ice box thing and then it could float with you as you're drinking but i mean i don't know i'm just like i'm not a huge alcohol person i think when it comes to alcohol it brings out a lot of aggression in people and it brings a lot of like stupidity in people i'm not a huge alcohol person i think alcohol is great if you're drinking just a little bit here and there but going out getting drunk and like i don't know i i'm just i just i just fucking hate alcohol i have a like, horrible experience with alcohol <laughs> so i just i just don't like alcohol but I mean, are, should the teens have acted like that? Fuck no, no. But like, here's the thing. Let's say like um, the teens acted like that and then they like got like a beating and they got punched or something. I would be like, okay, whatever, you know, fuck it. But to get stabbed, I'm like, mm, that's, I don't know. That's, that's a little, that's a little too much. California is a run if you can state. What do you mean by that? <laughs> 
Oh, you mean like if there's like if you think your life is in danger, you're not supposed to stand there and defend yourself. You're supposed to just like fucking run. Yeah, California's fucking annoying. I don't know. I have a lot of issues with California, <laughs> but you know, I live here. There are things I like about California, and there's a lot of things I don't like about California. Like for example, um, did you guys ever watch? Sorry, we're sidetracking a little bit. Did you guys ever watch this one video about this? Um, this man was he pulled up his car into his driveway close the gate and he went into his house trying to unlock and these two fucking dudes run up on him and the guy turns around threw his like hot tea or hot coffee at them and then he pulls out his gun and starts shooting at them and i'm like fuck yeah like you have a family inside he had like a baby inside his wife was inside they're trespassing into his front house they're trying to get in they're trying to break it and shit like that yeah fucking shoot at them right um and then i find out that I don't know if it was just like uh, L.A. County or what, but they confiscated his gun. I'm like, why? (laughs) I don't know. Maybe there's some pending shit going on with that that I don't know. And maybe I just have to wait for all the information to come out. But when I heard that, I was like so fucking pissed. I was like, what? Are you fucking serious? I don't know. California does a lot of really fucking stupid thing. Um, But I also don't want to move to Florida either. There are some things I like that Florida does, but I don't know if I can like full on just like live and move in Florida. Um, The... um, uh i don't know i can't the hurricane stuff is pretty fucking scary (laughs) you told them that correct yes you also said uh i don't remember a lot but what i remember is floating down the river and then you started to give some of the details or some of the overview of what you're right i don't know i don't know if it's an american thing i think i see that in a lot of cultures where it's just like let's just get hammered let's just get drunk Uh, americans often do alcohol wrong particularly the aggressive drinking and drinking shots yeah sipping alcohol enjoying your life yeah i say like i would say rule thing is like don't do shots no 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 to shots shots are just horrible just don't do shots <laughs> don't do shots like shots are fun and it's a cool way to vibe with people because like you think that like you're upping your social status by doing shots it's just really fucking stupid i don't know i would say no shots sip your alcohol just hang out just chill you know but when you start mixing and doing all the shots and stuff like that like i don't know but then also i've learned that my friends here in california they can get really fucking drunk and be super chill um for some reason my friends in the east coast they get really fucking drunk and they act really fucking trashy and it's it's like aggression it's like crazy i don't know i don't know if it's like maybe like certain friend groups or something but over here my friends are super chill like they can get really wasted and they're just like happy nice people east coast my friends over there crazy <laughs> i don't know Makes sense. again you said the second time i don't remember a lot right yes um And you spoke about that for about 30 seconds to 60 seconds, and then at around the four-minute mark, you said, that's all I remember. Agreed? I don't remember, so I, can, I don't know. And right after that, you were telling them that you have a certain medical condition. Is that right? Yes. You do have a medical condition, correct? Yes. And I don't want to pry too much, I, but it results in your having the potential for seizures, correct? Yes. Um, oh, so they're trying to say that you have seizures and you probably have bad memory? And obviously you're aware of that, correct? And I would imagine that medical condition uh, probably changes how you go through life, correct? I would say yes. You try to avoid certain things because of this fragility that you may have, correct? No. You, you don't want to have seizures, right? Yes. And there are certain things that you know maybe make you more vulnerable to seizures, correct? Yes. And I would imagine you probably go through life trying to avoid those instances in which you would put yourself at risk of a seizure, correct? What, what are these instances? I don't know. It's not my Wait, stop, stop, please. We've got three people talking at the same time. Oh, I can't have that. You have to speak up, Carl. I can't. I can barely hear you. <laughs> I love this judge. I even lost track where we are. He says, "Well, let me just go." Start. I was on the verge of having a seizure, and every time I have one, I just don't remember anything, and I was blanking out a lot. That's what you told the police, correct? Yeah, if that's what the report says, I don't remember. Okay. Um, you don't remember telling them you don't remember that you blanked out. Yes. Okay. Um, your experience is though, when you're on the verge of having a seizure, that impacts your ability to remember things, correct? After I have the seizure. Ah, yeah. See, that's where we're going with the seizures. Yes. Okay. Sure. Then your whatever your memory was, it's kind of erased, right? Not erased. I mean, once things are explained, I do re- reconcile throughout my memory a bit, and then okay. it's brought up. And, and is it actually is it a memory, or do you just deduce what must have happened by using deductive reasoning, or do you actually have a memory in your head of seeing something of that happened? When when certain things are brought up, I do have slight memories of things like reconciling in my brain. Okay. But what you told the police is you were blanking out a lot, correct? Wait, I'm sorry. Did I fuck up the video again? I don't know why. The video keeps getting fucked up. I'm so sorry. I think we just missed this beginning part. Or I, I pressed a button and something happened. I'm so sorry. Let's go back here and then we'll come back here. <laughs> okay. And you were tubing with your brother and other people on July 30, 2022? Yes. And at some point, did you notice or you alerted to something going on on the river? Yeah. Can you describe what you remember about that? 
Uh, we were just floating down the river, and then we heard some screaming across the river, and then eventually I do remember them yelling for help. And at first we sat there for a moment, and then my father said to go over there and help or like de-escalate the situation. And as I was going over there, I mean, I saw someone get hit, someone screamed, don't hit a girl, and then everything else ensued. And did you actually go over there and try to de-escalate, break things up? Yes. As I, as I went over there, I started uh, yelling at people to back up and get away. I don't remember exactly who I was yelling at. I know I was yelling at everyone in the situation, not just one side or the other. And Tony, were you uh, drinking on the river? Yes. And if your medical records say your BAC was 0.119, would that sound about right? Uh, yes. I don't, I don't know exactly, uh, you know, BAC and how it works. Okay. Do you think you're intoxicated? Were they drinking liquor? Kated? Yes. Uh, I would like to, this is frame 2556, just six. I'm just going to scroll through a little bit. Do you see yourself in that image? I do. And which one are you? Uh, wearing the jean shorts in the back in front of Quentin Carlson and behind AJ Martin. This okay. guy? You're just blocking up at this point? Yes, yeah, trying to figure out what's going on. I just heard a bunch of yelling and such. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like she was recording because um, the way she was holding her phone like this. Someone said she was calling 911, but I'm like, she was holding the phone like this. I don't know. <laughs> Taxi, thank you so much for the 5 99 Thanks for the nice stream. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Appreciate y'all being here. Ew, beer and vodka. Ugh. You can mute the screen. Actually, it's, that's better than Mad Dog. And White Claw. <laughs> Two eight two six. Is that is that you walking by? Yes. <clears throat> and two eight four four. Looks like you're getting between Mr. Mew and the guy filming. Yes. And I and you. What, what did you say you're yelling at people to do? I was yelling at them to back up and get away. Like, I'm on 2900. It looks like up to this point, your attention was to somebody off to the right. Now you're turning back towards Mr. Mew. Uh, I was turning back towards the group, yeah, to see who else needed to be. You know, if anybody was still escalating anything or what was going on, I was just trying to separate everyone. And I'm gonna back up here at 2924. Looks like you're pointing and yelling something in the direction of Mr. Mew. Yeah. Um, I mean, from my recollection, I saw him like walking up towards the others, so I was going up to him to tell him to stop and walk away, or get away. Mr. Anderson, I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Oh, sorry. You're using my group. Speak up, please. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. You're the best. And what are you doing at this point in the video? Uh, there was a lot of yelling going on, and I was telling him to walk away, but it looked like he was walking up to the girls in my group, so I was trying to get his attention, so I just put my hand on his back. And I, for the record, I pause there at 2958. Yeah, this is the part. I, I, I really don't understand why he stabbed this guy. So after you put your hands on his back, tell him to walk away, what happened? Uh, at the time, I thought he was going in to try and punch me, so I tried to hit his hand down, and then, I mean, he went at me again. And did you actually, were you actually able to hit his hand away the first time? Um, yeah, I mean, like, I knocked it down, and then... Um, I have a scar right here from when I knocked it down, the knife hit and just scratched. And then after that, he came again and stabbed me. And I, like I said, at the time, I didn't know. I thought it was just a punch. Did you think, did you realize anyone was getting stabbed at that point? No. Yeah, like he so was like so amped up. up? I, I mean, I just thought it was, you know, something on the river. Like they were yelling at each other about something. I didn't know exactly what, but I was just trying to de-escalate it. And did you, did you see Madison Cohen get punched? I didn't see necessarily her get punched, but I did hear, uh, you don't ever hit a woman. Yes. Oh, did you see the clips? It was so pretty. Did you have the special glasses so to look at it? Martha's Exhibit 35. What is that? That is the scar from when I blocked the knife down. And is there something above that? Yeah, this stab wound. So, um, I, I move to admit and pub ask to publish, Judge. Okay, it's received. Go ahead and publish. I'm going to do it on my computer. I'll let the clerk know when I'm ready. So you, you said one time you kind of blocked it. Uh, which, which injury is that on here? Uh, the lower one. The one that kind of looks like a V? Yeah. And then yes. did one strike actually was penetrate? Yes. 
And where's that one? Uh, under the bandage there. It looks like, is, it, is this after you're at the hospital? Uh, this is right as I'm leaving the hospital, yes. If you know, is that, does it look like it's bleeding through the Band-Aid or is that just the tone of the Band-Aid, do you know? No, I was bleeding a little bit through the Band-Aid on the stitches. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, I think this is the guy that got two stitches. I, I remember the defense saying that, like, oh, he was only two stitches. <laughs> Did you, um, did you, do you remember ever seeing the ni a knife in Nikolai's hand? No. And is, have you watched and listened to the portion of the video that I just went through with you? Um, yeah, if you would like, you can play it again. Though. Do you, do you, um, hear yourself Bye, in that video saying back up or get back, something like that? I believe I do, yeah. Oh, Sherry, thank you. Sister Sherry, I appreciate it. Thank you for streaming for me. It ages. Thanks, Sherry. I always appreciate you being here. show you that part of the video okay can i have a screen please hey shay no i just watch a lot of true crime stuff it all started with law and order svu man back in the days and i would stay home they close was mystical okay. yes i don't fuck with weed because i think weed okay so like i feel like weed like for me, it's like the aftermath of it. Um, the paranoia, definitely. The anxiety, I feel like it like heightens it. I don't know. That's why I just, I do not fuck with weed anymore. I would used to do weed just so I can relax and just like melt on the couch and chill. And it's also really fun to, you know, do weed and, uh, and eat. It makes everything taste so delicious. But I can't. I feel like it really fucks with my like paranoia and anxiety and all this stuff. So I just don't do it. Yeah, right? Mary Jane makes me crazy. Paranoid. Yeah, I can't do it either. Uh, so I just try to lay off like the drugs um, maybe a sip of alcohol here and there, but that's it. Yeah. Sorry, I sound like such a lame person doing the weeds. <laughs> Smoke marijuana? 959, are you off screen to the right? Yes. Sound like a fucking loser. Right. Left hand and uh, right over your shoulder. Okay. And you don't know the guy's name was filming? Right? No. Okay. So you got the, I'm just gonna put a C for it. If I get a fresh market, I'll them up and use them. Yeah, no, don't ever view me as like a legal expert, as a judge. Just view me as like a normal ass fucking jury, okay? We're just sitting here. We're like the jury. We're taking information and we're just trying to make our assessment based on what we see. <clears throat> you got bored. Of, really? You got bored of smoking weed? The best part is when you smoke and you eat I'm food. I'm just gonna put a seed for camera, man. Okay? That's my favorite part. Everything just tastes so delicious and you just can't stop camera. eating. Facing that way, and then you got the frame. You got you somewhere there, and you're somewhere off to the right of the frame. Oh, can, can I see the? Back up? Okay. All right, what's going on here? Keep the see the diagram. Um, those aren't your hands, are they? No. Do you know who's there? Uh, now I do. Yes. Okay. At the time, you didn't know who that was. No. Now you, now you know it to be Isaac, but you had yes. no idea who it was. Oh, it was moment. Isaac's hand. Okay, because I want to know when Isaac was stabbed. You get so paranoid. I had so many years ago, I was so paranoid. I went to a corner and wouldn't answer my phone. Oh, I didn't I didn't get paranoid while, like, under the influence of weed. It was just, like, the after effects of it. I felt like it just, like, kind of, like, fucked with my mind and my sleep. I didn't like that. I, I tell myself I have the ability to time travel. just haven't unlocked it yet. <laughs> uh, you ever seen Butterfly Effect? So... Would he have been kind of just to your left? It seems the foundation. It's the same. <laughs> Spring. But early, a few frames ago, you were off. Were you off frame to the right? Yes. Isaac here is off frame to the right. Yes. Objection. You have no foundation. He doesn't have a memory. If I well, hold on, hold on. I'll, sustain, I'll, sustain on foundation. But I think the, the was, questions are being being framed in a way that's leading us to this place. Sure. You need to rephrase your rephrase your questions. It might help. Judge, I'll I'll just move on. All right. You can take it down. This is for his internet, Nacho? What? That movie messed me up for years. Same. So I want to, I forgot to ask you a clarifying question about your, that, the V-shaped wound. Um, 
So do you remember how his hand came at you when you kind of blocked it away? Uh, I mean, it, it went like this, but at first, I mean, I just thought it was a punch. I didn't, I think it was just going for a low jab, but uh, I tried hitting it down with my arm and okay. then he came back up. The second one is the one that got you higher? Yes. Do you remember um, telling law enforcement that after he, Nikolai stabbed you, you punched him? I do. Yeah, I saw it as like, I'm just doing the same thing over and over and over, and this is lame. I just had to rethink my life choices. That's good. And is that on the video? No. Do you believe you're mistaken on that? Yes. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? All right, now we're going to go back to the cross-examination. Um, so this is the part where I kind of, like, screwed around a little bit. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to get back to where we were. So you said you're, uh, you were intoxicated, right? Yes. Um, you were with a, uh, some of your family and other friends, correct? Yes. You were there on the river um, celebrating, correct? For my father's birthday, yes. Um, you were also there with Madison Cohen? Yes. Um, celebrating her birthday as well? I mean, I came there for my father's birthday. Understood. Um, yeah, no judgment in it, but others were celebrating her birthday, correct? Yes. She was celebrating her own birthday, correct? Yes. Um, there's a photo that I think we've seen of the 10 of you standing on there on the river. Have you seen that photo? Yep. You remember that yes. photo? Uh, you and I think three or four other people are uh, holding a beer up to your lips, and it looks like you're consuming the beer at that time. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, part of that photo was to document your guys drinking alcohol, correct? I'm going to object on waste of time. I'm going to object, object on waste of time, and I think it's cumulative. It's established. <laughs> I've this witness. Overruled. Oh. <laughs> okay, I've never heard of the four. I object. It's a waste of time. <laughs> you were document the, the photo was to document all of you together, correct? Yes. And for whatever reason, four of you decided that when the photo was taken, you wanted to make sure that you were drinking a beer, right? Yes. Okay. Fair to say that you wanted to document your drinking beer. It was not it's more or less that we wanted to document it. It was just that we were having a fun time with our family. Sure. And in that moment, we all just made the decision to have it set. Okay. And um, you have a brother, Dante, right? Yes. You're a little, you're older than him? Yes. A little bigger than him? Yes. Uh, he was drinking? Yes. You were drinking? Yes. AJ Martin was drinking? Yes. Riley Madison was drinking? Yes. Madison Cohen was drinking? Yes. Again, I'm sure you weren't keeping track of everybody else, but it looked like everybody else was consuming it about the same rate that you were consuming? No. Do you know who was doing what? I don't know. Okay. Oh. Um, so they could have been drinking more, they could have been drinking the same, they could have been drinking less, you don't know? Uh, based off of knowing them in the past, I know they don't. Okay. You're the bigger consumer? Yes. Okay. Um, You talked to the police um, when you got out of the, that same day, or the next day on July 31st, is that right? I believe it was the same day. I, I don't remember exactly. You didn't stay overnight in the hospital? I, I don't. Am I going to stream Chad Davil's trial? Um, whenever opening statements happen, I'm going to stream that for sure. Um, but the trial is pretty long. I don't know if I'm going to stream like all of the trial, or I'm just going to like pop in here and there. Um, what I usually do is like if there's a trial that I'm like super invested in, I'll just like listen to it in my own time and then I'll just like come back and then like we'll do some of the streams here and there. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a long trial. I heard it was going to be like eight, ten weeks maybe. I don't believe so. <laughs> oh, so it must have been the same day and I got my date wrong, which is fine. But you did speak with the police, right? Yes. And you realize that that's a uh, recording, correct? Yep. And if you, as part of your preparation for this, did you get a chance to watch that recording? No. They didn't show you that? Uh, I believe they did uh, a while back, but I don't, I don't remember it. Oh. I just want to go over some of the things that you said to the police then to see if those, how they track with today, okay? Right. Um, one of the first things that you said to them is, um, I don't remember much about it. You told them that, correct? Yes. You also said, uh, I don't remember a lot, but what I remember is floating down the river, and then you started to give some of the details, or some of the overview of what you remember. I believe so. Makes sense? But again, you said the second time, I don't remember a lot, right? All right, yes. so then this is when they go into his, men men uh, not mental, uh, medical condition with the seizures. Um, this is where we're at. Something about more about seizures. Maybe he might have blanked. Not remember what happened. Okay. What I know for sure is you said you never saw the knife, correct? Correct. Um, you went over there. You must have seen some things, correct? What do you mean by that? Well, we saw the slide where you walk over, and you're kind of coming over late compared to when everybody else is there. Would you agree with that? Yes. Uh, and when you come over, at some point, you see who you now know is Mr. Mew, get hit, correct? Yes. And you, you see it's your brother that's hitting him, correct? I didn't at the time. Okay. You just knew somebody had hit him, correct? Yes. And you knew, you said, you said, I was yelling at people to back up, I was yelling at everyone, not just one side or the other. That's what you said, correct? Yes. And let's just talk about the sides here for a moment, okay? On the one side, there was 13 people, agreed? I didn't know at the time, but now I do, yes. And on the other side, there was Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. And so when you approach, you see Mr. Mew, the, the member of one, he got hit, correct? At, 
at the time, I didn't know who had gotten hit. I just was telling everyone to separate. Sure. You saw a person that got hit, correct? Yes. And that person was Mr. Mute, correct? Oh, really, Rain? Jury has been selected for Chad David. Opening statements are Wednesday. Okay, cool. I'll watch it on Wednesday, then, uh, for opening statements. Yes. And that person was down in the walk, correct? Yes. And people on the other side continued to hit Mr. Mew, the one person that was down in the water, correct? By the time I was over there, I didn't see that. I was just separating people. But whatever it was you saw at that point, you, you were yelling, back up, telling people to stop, correct? Yes, because I saw a large group together. I just saw you a bunch saw of bodies together. I didn't see right. anything specific. And those bodies were all around Mr. Mew, the person who got hit and was in the water, correct? I didn't know who was surrounding who. Right. Well, you agree that one person can't surround anyone, agreed? Yes. So you agree if there's somebody being surrounded, it would be Mr. Mew, correct? Sustained. So just want to make sure it's clear. You don't know who was being surrounded, but you saw somebody being surrounded, correct? No, I just saw a large group in a, like, a huddled conversation. They were all yelling. Like. Okay. And then did you see this before or after you saw Mr. Mew get hit in, in the water? Like when I saw him, I didn't see him get hit. I just saw someone get hit. Okay. You saw the after effects of someone getting hit. Yes. And what that was is you saw that someone falling into the water. Yes. And then you saw that someone being converged upon by others. Yes. And then you saw that someone essentially being surrounded, correct? Yes. Time-wise. Sustained. We've been through this. And when you see that someone being surrounded, no, that's... Actually, he said he doesn't remember that. He just Wait, please. Please. Let's get the question out. If there's an objection to the complete question, make it. I'll make a ruling. When you saw that one person being surrounded, that's when you started yelling at people to hey, back Lizzie. up and get away, correct? No. The testimony is he didn't know if anyone surrounded. He went up to a group of people. So, next question, please. You said you were uh, trying to separate everyone. Well, let me take a second. We watched through the slides starting at 2779 through, I think, 2924. Do you remember when you went through those slides? Yes. And at one point there, you said you were trying to separate everyone. You agree that's what you said? Yes. And when you were trying to separate everyone, what at that point you had observed is one person getting hit, correct? I didn't see him getting hit. I just saw that he was on the ground for a moment, and I was focused on telling people to back up. What we know is you never saw him with a knife, correct? Yes. So. You weren't telling people to back up from him because you were worried about him. You were telling people to back up from him because you wanted them to stop beating him up, right? No, I wanted everyone to step away because I didn't know what the situation was again. And what you saw was someone was getting beat up. I saw a lot of people around each other. Obviously, one was in the water, so I just told them to back up. Now, I want to just go through a couple of other things. You, when you were there, did you hear the, you said there's one side and another side. Did you hear one side yelling, predator? I don't recall. Did you hear one side yelling, He's looking for little girls. I believe at one point I heard someone not yell that over to our group. Okay. You don't know whether that's true or not. Agreed? I didn't give it much thought, but no. I you just know it's true or not. You just know you heard that, correct? Yes. Whether it's true or not, that's for somebody else to decide. Agreed? Agreed. You, uh, did you also hear them screaming when you got over there, we got it on camera, we got it on camera, we got it on camera? Did no, you hear I that? did not hear that. Okay. You don't know whether that's true either? No. You also heard you said um, he hit a woman, correct? Yes. You don't know whether that's true, do you? No, I don't, but I mean... You didn't see it, correct? Correct. All you know is you heard somebody say something on the... Right? Correct? Yes. And if you watch the recording, correct? Yep. We've heard lots of things on that recording, agreed? Yes. You don't know whether those things that the people said on the recording are true or not, do you? No. If you see it, I would imagine then you know it's true. Hard not to if you see it. Agreed. Um, you, when you spoke with the police, you were asked some questions, and you said, uh, on direct, you said that you told the police, I punched the guy. Correct? Yes. And by the guy, you meant Mr. Mew. Correct. The one, correct? Yes. At that moment, when you told that to the police, you said that because you believed it was true, correct? Yes. <coughs> Why did he now, say that? Now, today, 20 months later, you believe it's not true, correct? Yes. And the reason you initially said it, and now, what should I say? The reason it's changed is you've watched the video? Yes. OK. So for whatever reason, you got it wrong to begin with, correct? Yes. And you could have got it wrong because you were intoxicated, right? That could be one reason. You could have got oh, it wrong because right. there was a stressful situation, correct? Yes. Uh, you, I can't imagine, but you could have got it wrong because you just told an untruth, correct? Yes. It doesn't sound like you would tell an untruth to say you punched a guy when you didn't. Make sense? Yes. Um, but that could be another reason, correct? Yes. Is there any other reason why you would have said something happened when it didn't happen other than those that I've given you? Well, after you know having my memory refreshed with the video, I believe that I thought I had punched him because when he had stabbed me, um, he was pushed back. And in my memory, everything happened so fast. So I just thought maybe that was me that had done that. Okay. I thought maybe I had punched him. Yeah. And on that day, I'm sure you were still processing all kinds of things out, right? Yes. And on that day, you hadn't had a chance to watch the video, correct? Yes. On that day, when you said those things, you weren't intentionally lying, correct? No, I was not. I think as you said already to the jury, like, my memory might be flawed, correct? Yes. Just like probably like anybody else's memory in that sort of situation, correct? I agree. And you might say things that. On in, you don't intend to be alive, but just are wrong, correct? 
Yes. Because you're trying to explain this traumatic event that happened, correct? Yes. All right. The extent of, we saw the picture of you, and there was the scratch on your left hip, right? Yes. And then there was a bandage on your uh, torso on the left side, correct? Correct. Those are all in the front of your body, correct? Mm -hmm. Your injuries were to the front, correct? Yes. They were, they were when the two of you were in contact with each other, facing each other, correct? Yes. And the extent of your injury in that situation was you got two stitches, correct? I don't remember how many stitches I had. Okay. Uh, with the, if you, I told you the medical record said two stitches, would you have any reason to disagree with that? I don't remember, so no. Sound about right? Yes. All right. And what we saw in the video, do you have a memory of that, or are you just telling us what you saw in the video? I, I, let me back up. That was a poor question. I want to ask you about the time just before you uh, put your hands on Mr. Mew, okay? Okay. Do you have a memory of that, or are you just, for lack of a better term, and maybe there's a better term, narrating what you see on the video? No, I remember. Okay. So you remember that he's got his back to you, correct? Well, I don't necessarily remember that he had his back to me. I do remember separating everybody, though. It okay. wasn't, you know, intended at one person or the other. It was towards everyone to back away. Okay. So you remember approaching a person, a someone, correct? Yes. And you put your hands on, one hand was on the person's back, correct? I mean, I gave him a light tap because there was a lot of yelling and I was trying to get his attention away from the girls that he was walking towards. You see the image 2942 up there? Yes. That's you, correct? Yes. That's you reaching your left hand out in the direction of what we now know as Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. And as I slide forward, that's you pressing your hand up against him, correct? Yes. You can see your hand, your fingers making an indentation in the, his back and his skin there, correct? Yes. And then as we slide through... Eh, it's like when you tell people not to drink and drive. People still drink and drive, right? Everyone knows you shouldn't drink and drive, but drinking and driving still happens. Uh, bullying is just, you know, still happens. You put your then right hand on his right upper arm. Agreed? I can't see that. Like, there are some things that you just can't be told. You just have to experience it. <laughs> uh, a 10-inch sewing needle will probably be one stitch left. I don't see any point to point it out. It does not make it any better. You see your right hand there? I, yes, I do. You see it then going against his arm? It's blocked from the frame, but... Do you remember pushing him in that moment? No. <laughs> you would agree that's not gentle what you're doing right now? I would say it is. Okay. And as you're here, this is where we see your face, correct? Yes. Are you now yelling at him? I don't remember what I was saying at the moment. I do remember... I understand the content. The volume was yelling. Agreed? I think I was trying to raise my voice enough to where over everyone else screaming and yelling yes. So you agree that the volume was yeah. yelling? There may be reasons why you wanted to yell, but you agree you were yelling. I, like I said, I don't remember. If you could play it, I could tell you if I was yelling or not. So okay. I apologize. That's all right. Um, and this is where your, you see your hand now on his upper arm on the uh, right side there? Yes, you? I do. And it's this moment where you have come up from Mr. Mew from behind and put your hands on him and, if not a push, you certainly pressed against him. Agreed? Agreed. And it's in this moment when you're coming up from behind, yelling at him, pressing up against him, he's already was previously down in the water. Agreed? And she's already been stabbed I mean, over I'm not here. I'm against him here. I was directing him, I guess, away. All right. Let me just um, you can turn the screen off for a moment. I want to show you some more pictures of just something before that, okay? One. That's you in the jean shorts? Correct? Yes. Yes? Yes. And that's Mr. Mew down in the water to your left? Yes. Uh, you know now as you watch the video that this is the second time he's been pushed down into the water. Agreed? Yes. At that time, you also knew, because you remember seeing somebody hit him and pushed him down, and AJ pushed him down, you remember he'd been knocked into the water a second time as well, correct? Jackson, the testimony was he saw No, 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 no. Come on up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care about the respect your elders thing. I think you should respect everyone. I don't think just because you're an elder, you'd, like, command and deserve respect. Um, to me, it seems like that respect flew out the window when he charged at them. Um while he was like going through the water and then like he went at them at the, when they're on the, on the on the tubing thing like that too is just like why why do that i don't know like why would you do that all right judge is gonna yell at him oh my god sorry it sounds like the ring right now yourself back and i understand you might not be able to you acknowledge that he'd been knocked down into the water two times fair to say at that moment, I did not know he was knocked down two times. After rewatching the video, yes. Okay, so it, again, back on July 30th, you know he's down in the water at least, correct? Yes. He's down in the water, yes. right? And you're near him, correct? Yes. And as I scroll through this, we can see that he reaches his left hand up to grab onto you, correct? Did it, that would appear to be? I didn't know if he was grabbing for me, but sure. I, I don't remember. We don't, you don't know other than it didn't cause you harm, correct? No, right? it did not. It didn't cause you pain, correct? Correct. He may have been trying to grab a hand to lift himself up. He may have been trying to push you over. He may have been trying to slap you. You don't know. It just didn't cause you harm. Agreed? He might testify. Agreed. Okay. 
Now, just before this, where we see that, it appears as if somebody's kind of pushing you out of the way. Does that look like that's the case? That's what I'm assuming, too. I would assume they were yelling at him before he charged him. Yeah, I'm assuming that they probably yelled at him, and then they probably said some things at him. Or he thought they stole the phone or something like that. Um, what I don't believe is that he thought they had the phone, and he was just trying to get the phone from them. <laughs> I, I don't believe that. I think he charged at them because they were being dickheads. I think I was more or less like traveling. Well, who knows? Maybe he was being a dickhead first. Through the water and walking my way through them. Sure. And we see a, a dark arm pressed up against you, correct? Yes. And we see you making an expression that appears as if you're not liking whatever contact you're receiving. Agreed? No, I think at that point I'm yelling. Okay. Or telling people to back off. You're telling people to back off, right? Yes, everyone. Back off, get away from the guy that's down in the water. I didn't, I was telling everyone to get, get back. Sure. At that point, there's one guy in the water, correct? Yes, but I wasn't focused on that. I was focused on separating everyone. Okay. And now as we scroll through, Mr. Mew here has the knife in his right hand, correct? You see, you see that? Yes. And as your, just before that, that's your foot, that's your body. Mm, yeah, maybe he asked them if they saw a phone and they said something dumb to him. I, um, the teens, I think they said that like, he was like snorkeling, because he was probably snorkeling trying to look at the phone. And then the teens were like, ew, why are you snorkeling? Like who snorkels here? The water's not that deep. That's, I, that's how I imagine how it started. Body, you're right there, correct? Yep. You are not wounded in that moment, correct? Correct. You're right in his, near him, correct? Correct. He does not reach the knife out and stab you, correct? Looks like he's trying to hold himself up. My question was, he doesn't reach out and stab you, agreed? Agreed. Um, you are not, you don't receive the wound that is the, causes the two stitches until after you've approached him from behind and tried to redirect him while you're yelling, correct? Yes, correct. What's Actually, from my understanding, um... Lizzie says, did you know the boys' brains are not fully developed to a 20, 21 years of age? Nick should just walked away. Um, from my understanding, there was a study that said that people stop developing their brains at the age of 25. But the reason why 25 was a cutoff point was because there was no further research done after 25. So they, like, they, like... I guess they analyze people's brains and then up to 25, that's where the research end. And then a lot of people will quote that study and be like, oh, you know, um, your brain stopped maturing after like 25. I think, I think that's like, I think that's what it was. But I, I would, I would, I would assume that your brain will continue to keep, um, you know, like developing until, I don't know, maybe like late twenties or something or thirties. I don't know. Your stream is messed up. I thought that was just me. Wait, one in chat, can you see me? Is it stuttering? Um, ooh, is it stuttering for anyone else? The stream's messed up now. Wait, is it, is it stuttering on um, one in chat if it's stuttering for you? Two in chat if you're not stuttering. Nacho says I'm fine. Nacho, are you watching me on YouTube? It was fine, but now, okay, it's good now? It's good, hello, you can hear me? It was not until you engage with him that he engaged Hi, with Doreen. you. Hi, Doreen. Agreed? Agreed. Nothing else. Mr. Anderson? So, you told about law enforcement. You can... All right. Uh, I think that they're back to redirect. Let's see. This is the, the camera dude. I wish the audio was better. This is the best friend. Um, did one of the women... Oh, her. I think I want to listen to her. How long is hers? Did you... Let's listen to hers. All right, we are back on the record. The attorneys are present. Mr. Mew is present. The jury is present. Let's continue. Um, is Ms. Madison in the courtroom? Okay. Uh, please come forward. Raise your right hand. She will Wait. Hold on a second. Riley, oh, Madison. Oh, okay. I was like, wait a second. Hold on a second. There's a Madison and there's a person with a last name Madison. <laughs> Hi, like and Thorpe, how are you doing today? Okay, we're good. We're good. Maybe YouTube. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, taxi try refreshing, going in, going out. We'll administer the oath. Madison, R-Y-H-L-E-Y-M-A-T-T-I-S-O-N. And Riley, how old are you? I am 25. And how tall are you? 5'5". Five five. And how much do you weigh? About 110 pounds. And were you about the same in July of 2022? Maybe 115. <clears throat> were you tubing on the river that day with friends? I was. And were you drinking alcohol? I was. Using any other substances? I was smoking marijuana. And do you believe you're intoxicated? 
I do, yes. Was that your first time tubing on the river? Um, I've been on the river before, but I've started at different points with friends, so I've never really been on that part of the river. Okay. What do you, do you remember at some point um, along the river that something catching your group's attention? Not specifically mine. I was just kind of hanging out with my friends on the tube, and we had stopped, um, and so I kind of asked why we were stopping, um, and I heard somebody mention something about a group looking uncomfortable. Um, I hadn't got off right away, so. Did you walk over after some other folks? I did. Um, I kind of was like, what's going on? And then I had told Janelle, like, let's kind of go over there and see what's going on. And what do you, do you remember everything sequentially perfectly, or is it I, It's very choppy for me. Okay. So what do you remember next? Um, I remember getting off the tube, walking up to Mr. Miu, um, and I just remember Maddie being there and yelling at him. Um, I remember her being punched in the face, and then I remember being stabbed, and that is completely it. So... Oh, wait, what? <laughs> no, we need a complete story, ma'am. <laughs> Oh, but I guess she was like, I, she, she probably just only remembers the highlights, I guess, because she was so intoxicated. You don't remember, <laughs> did, did you see or don't you remember anyone else stabbed? No. Then do you know if it's because you don't remember, you didn't see or? I just, I think I was just focused on myself doing what I was doing. I was not really paying attention to anybody else at all. Okay, fair. And I mean, it did happen so quickly. What, when you saw Madison get punched, can you explain that in as much details as you remember? Um, I, I barely really remember that part. I just remember him staring at us and then not saying anything and punching her. And I was just like shocked, like, oh, oh my God. Um, and that I don't, right after that, I, I literally remember being stabbed and that's it, so. With him punching her, do you remember any more details than that? Like what hand he used no, or how the punch all. was? Not at all. And what else do you remember about you getting stabbed? Um, I just remember seeing Nick's face very blank and not lunging at me, but just kind of poking me and I, held my side and I was like, ow, like Janelle, I think he punched me. Um, that really hurt, like, and I looked down and I was bleeding out and holding my stomach and it just like, didn't feel real. Like, it was just a lot of shock. And from there I was walking around the river asking for help, like just asking somebody to help me. Um, I told Q that I felt like I was dying because I just was losing, like I was losing so much blood and every time I'd walk, I just felt like I was getting weaker and weaker. Um, so another group down the river had put me on a tube and kind of pushed me down to kind of get away, away from the scene. And then um, they were holding my side and just kind of keeping me awake. And then when the cops had showed up, they took me off of the tube and put me on the ground. Um, and I just remember like Janelle coming over, you know, asking me to stay awake and the cops trying to ask me what na my name was. Um, and then just being put in the ambulance and going to the hospital. And when you, when you touched your side, do you remember feeling anything? Um, no, I just was, I thought I was punched or something. I didn't really know. I wasn't really paying attention and it, it really didn't hurt. Um, but when I looked down, I was instantly. What's with everyone having amnesia? I mean, we saw how quickly it happened. Uh, it happened so quickly. They were all under influence. I think there was one person that was there that said they were sober. It was um, one of the women. I don't know who. I remember seeing them in the headlines. But, I mean, I, it, it happened so quickly, I guess. I, I think the way, it's just the way that she said it that made me laugh. <laughs> like, I believe I was holding my... Because I feel like the scene would have been like, uh, okay, I, I, shit, like, you're making... Okay, that's it? Okay. <laughs> Stomach. I think Janelle was coming to help me to hold my stomach and hold my side, um, and then just blood kind of going. And I didn't, I didn't want to look down because it freaked me out. And I didn't really want to touch it either because I, didn't, I just didn't want to feel anything. So I kind of just barely held my hand on it. I just didn't want to feel it. Do you remember telling law enforcement that you felt like something was coming out of the wound when you touched it? I don't remember that. Yeah, I think this happened in 2022, right? And did you have any... So as, after you were brought on the tube to shore, you said people were telling you to stay awake? Did yeah, you... like just asking my, kind of asking questions. Yeah, I feel like the, uh, the state wanted to ask more questions about the altercation, but the fact that she said, I just remember getting stabbed, I remember uh, Maddie getting punched, that's it. I don't remember anything else. I feel like the state's like, fuck, that really limits what kind of things I can ask her about the altercation. Okay. And like my name, like who are you, just kind of what's going on, anything that would make me stay awake. Um, and I just remember being super tired and I'm like, I just want to be left alone. Did you have trouble breathing at all? Um, not right away, uh, slowly but surely I did. And then once I get, got in the ambulance and actually got to the hospital, I like felt like I couldn't breathe at all. Um, but it, was, it took a little time before that to actually like happen for me. I don't know if I didn't realize it right away, but. And where, where were you brought, if you remember, when you were brought to shore, were you brought to the grass, the pavement? I was laid right on the blacktop. I remember saying, oh my God, like this burns my back. Um, I believe, I just, I remember the bridge. So I know it was right before like. And actually. Sorry, I'm going to forward it a little bit because they just talk about her afterwards. I just want to know about the altercation. Your arm again? Yes. 
Stopping on 2470. Uh, what are you doing in this image? Um, I'm not sure if I'm just touching his shoulder or if I'm going to push him. Twenty four ninety two. Have you removed your hand at this point? Yes. Did you see a push? I mean, kind of like a little. I guess I don't know what to call it, but just kind of maybe brushing his shoulder. Um, I guess a push. Yes. Do you want to see it? And I'm gonna say it again and again. This is a huge fucking no. Don't ever fucking touch someone. I don't care if you're like lightly brushing them. Just don't ever fucking touch someone, especially in this situation. It's so fucking stupid that they did this. Again. Objection. Cumulative. Sustain. Sustain. I don't think he has a knife out yet. Wait. Oh, that. This is the moment where he un. Um, you know how the knife is folded and then you do like. What do you call that? Unsheath? Is it called unsheath if you're just flipping it out? So you can tell just now he already did have the knife out. And then when the women are confronting him, this is when he unsheets it i don't know if that's the correct term pocket knife people where are you guys at unfold okay unfold i like that better unfold sounds better unsheet sounds like it's like shoo. unfold <sighs> mr mew why stopping on 2470 uh what are you doing in this image oh, just look, just look, just look, i'm just not sure if i'm just touching his shoulder if i'm going to push him 2492, have you removed your hand at this point? Yes. Did you see a push? I mean, kind of like. I know, that's what I was thinking. I was like, unsheath this is not like the right word. <laughs> a little. I guess I don't know what to call it, but just kind of maybe brushing his shoulder. Um, I guess a push, yes. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he looks like some fragile old dude, okay? Yeah, he had like, um, what's it called? Uh, was it like clogged heart or something like that? Or he had a heart attack like four years ago, but he doesn't look like an unhealthy, fragile dude, okay? He looks like he can fucking defend himself. Not against 13 people at once, you know, but I don't think 13 people were coming at him at once. Do you want to see it again? Objection. Sorry, I rewind a little too bad. He didn't have a sword. <laughs> this is when I think he unfolds it. See right there how his two hands are like kind of making contact? See right there? And then can you guys, can y'all see that? Um, I can try to zoom it in for you guys. See that right there? Ooh. That's when he unfolds it. Right there. Right when the women come over. And they're yelling at him. I guess push, yes. You want to see it again? Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, this is not, this is not helping. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, so he puts his hands together, unfold it. Yeah, he's got the knife out. Okay. Well, I'm kind of nice that we caught that. Now it's already like Pausing completely unfolded. Did you see the knife in his hands when you're standing there? I don't remember. Oh, I don't know, guys. I just, I just feel like he was just being so sneaky with this. He was being like sneaky and calculated. Like, he was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> uh, I assume she'll mind. Yeah, I mean, I, I bet you these, these women are not going to ever <laughs> just fucking go up on someone and start yelling at them. Uh, but they are, they're in their early 20s, though. They're, st they're still learning. 2470. Is that your... Do you know if that's your hand or Maddie's no, hand? that is Maddie's hand. Okay. How do you tell the nail polish? Yeah, that's also a no. Don't fucking touch people. That's a no. Yeah, I don't wear nail polish. And this is after the alleged punch. And do you see him. yourself in that image, 2662? I do. Yeah, so it looks like she pushed him. And she's, like, screeching for <laughs> reinforcements or something. Oh, God. Th th that's just, like, a bad freeze frame of her. We've all looked like this, okay? We've all looked like this. It's just a really bad freeze frame of her. 
left of Dante? Oh, dear. To the right of Maddie? Yes. Uh, oh, you want to do a survey? Oh, uh, yeah, we can do a survey. Start a poll. Okay. Uh, what should the survey say? Should I just do, like, a very basic one? Guilty, not guilty? Or, like, was this self-defense? Um, was this self-defense? Or, hmm. I mean, I guess guilty or not guilty, same thing, right? Guilty or not guilty. I didn't want to do the poll initially because, like, in the beginning, we haven't seen the videos yet. Guilty, not guilty. Um, not sure. And haven't paid attention. <laughs> there you go. Okay, we have a poll. Uh, guilty or not guilty? It's just a very basic one. But. Uh, we have not listened to his defense yet, though. But I don't know. I'm, a lot of it's just based on, like, watching the video. Hi, Riri. How are you doing today? How's it going? Not sure about this. Oh, sorry. I didn't. Um, I actually don't know. How do I do a poll on Twitch? Um, poll. Poll. Let me do a poll on Twitch. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Not guilty. Not sure. Not paying attention. <laughs> how do I make the duration longer on Twitch? I hate how on Twitch it's only 10 minutes max. On YouTube, you can just leave it up the entire stream. Um, okay, 30 votes so far. I actually thought more of you guys were going to say not guilty. I thought a lot of you guys were saying not guilty. Not sure. Haven't paid attention. I see you, the 9%. I see you. No, no, no. He, his defense hasn't even presented this case yet. Um, the jury has to listen to his side of the story, too. So. The internet's divided. Yeah, I could say, I, from what I've seen so far in, like, the live stream comments, not on my streams, but on, like, the uh, court TVs on law and crime, um, it seems very divided. Comment section divided. Yeah. Seems very divided. We meet this, turn off the screen. Um, he's charged for first degree murder. That's for the death of Isaac Schumann. And then he's charged with four charges of attempted, of attempted murder. If I remember correctly. Does poll on Twitch sound perverted to anyone else? <laughs> the Twitch poll's not even working. It's just spinning. Nacho, are you here? Can you do it for me? It's not working for me. I'm trying to. It won't let me. I'm going to... Another image. Yeah, someone in the chat did ask, is it possible for them to not, like, let's say that he's guilty, but, like, not guilty of first degree. Like, maybe he meant to hurt them, but not to kill them. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that'll be an option. Maybe the judge will give them instructions about that. I'm not too sure. I just don't think it's worth the state's time to go after the teens. We have the screen. This is 2861. They got the light. Do you lesson. see yourself in this image? I do. <clears throat> Where are you? I'm standing right behind Nick Mew. What uh, color swimsuit? Uh, blue with flowers. I'm going to scroll. Uh, stopping on 2948. Do you see yourself in this image? I do. Holding Wait, Shay, what was your opinion before? Was your sh opinion not um, on? Mew charges. Sorry, maybe I have it wrong. I could be wrong. Mew charge. Uh, Mew's attorneys are arguing Mew is charged with first degree intentional homicide in Schumann's death and attempted first degree intentional homicide. Oh, hmm. Let me think. What will be the argument? 
if you're gonna use a knife on someone, then that's your intention to kill them, not just like hurt them. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the judge will give instructions on like, oh, you know, you can um maybe no, because then then he would be charged with. I'm trying to think. When there were cases where the jury deliberated and agreed on the lesser charge, was that also on his list on their list of charges as well? Or maybe Wisconsin does things differently too. Hmm. Side. I do. And keep scrolling. And I you said one of your friends came to your aid after you were stabbed? Uh yes, Janelle. Is she in this photo? She is. She is in the black swimming suit. Okay. I'm gonna keep scrolling. Yeah, I don't know actually. I might have a actually I might be on the fence. Um I might be on the not the fence. I might be on your guys' side. Um I might have an issue with the charges too. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not quite sure yet. Do you remember Retreating or recoiling from Nikolai at that point, or no? What do you mean by that? And these, I'll back up a little bit. Okay. So I'm on 3017. Like running away? Yes. Yes. Because I, for me, I don't, I, I, I don't know if I see the intention to kill, the intention to hurt, that's where I see. Like him standing there smirking, getting his knife ready, you know, standing around. I think he had the attention to hurt and to, um, I don't know, to get him back. But to kill, to kill, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. You can turn <laughs> Zombies? Off the Thank you. Hmm. Do you remember Nikolai saying anything at all when you're standing in front of him? Not one word. Did you have any indication or did you see anything, hear anything to indicate if he was with a group? I had no idea who he was. I didn't know if he was a part of the group we were going to. I had absolutely no idea. I don't have anything else. Not- Let's see. Murder in Wisconsin law. So there's first degree intentional homicide. And then we get into, because maybe the second degree just doesn't fit his scenario. That's why they went for the higher one. Um, I mean, in closing arguments, I'm sure he'll explain it all over again. <laughs> Okay, so there's first degree intentional homicide. First degree intentional homicide in Wisconsin defined as causing the death of another human or an unborn child with the intent to kill that person. The defendant's actions do not have to be the only factor in the person's death, just a significant one. I think he's looking at life in prison without parole. Um, Second degree intentional homicide. Second degree intentional homicide is is defined as a downgraded version of first degree. Um, Adequate provocation. The death was caused under the influence of provocation that caused the defendant to lose control and would do so in in an ordinary person or a heat of passion killing. Unnecessary defensive forces. The defendant generally believed they or another person was in imminent danger or death or serious physical injury. And that force they used was necessary to defend whoever was endangered. And the belief of danger or the force being necessary was not reasonable. Yeah, I... Why not this one? Second degree intentional homicide. The defendant generally believed that they or another person was in imminent danger or death or serious physical injury, that the force they used was necessary to defend whoever was in danger. But the belief of danger or the force being necessary was not reasonable. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Before I was like, guilty, guilty. But <laughs> now we learn that the uh, most of the jury are tend to be a little bit older um so they could have like a lot of sympathy as like you know like oh like fuck those teens and like you know this guy's my age like i would hate to be surrounded by teens like this um i was thinking about that but was state reaching by charging him with first degree intentional homicide oh anyone else watching um 
any lawyers who are watching this, do they have any thoughts about that? Or did Court TV and Law and Crime, did anyone talk about that? Maybe there, maybe there's a reason and we just don't know. There is an audio. Yes. Um, I did play the video in my stream earlier. I played the video uninterrupted and then I played it back um, in slow motion. They don't want me to believe that. They, no, but it says right here that, but there's a huge but right here. But the belief of danger or the force being necessary was not reasonable. Not reasonable. Because for me, I'm saying that, like, I thought it wasn't reasonable because, you know, he had the knife out. He knew he had a knife. He was surrounded by, you know, women and, like, these, like, early 20-year-olds, kids. Sorry, early young adults. Hmm. Why did the state help choose a jury? I mean, sometimes you just can't kick out certain jurors, right? Uh, I don't know how they do the voir dire process. Um, I know they do the questionnaire thing, and then they try to pick people who are, you know, not going to be tainted or going to be reasonable. So I don't know. Maybe they're like, oh, you know, even though they're in their 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, maybe they could um, still vote uh, guilty, given the evidence shown, I guess. <laughs> huh. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the judge would be like, hey, if you don't charge him with first degree murder, you can charge him on the um, the, the the lesser charge. I don't know. Yeah, there's a 90 year old, too, which is that's it's pretty cool. Um, OK, so we're done with are we done with her? Oh, now we're doing cross examination. OK. Um, cross examination. Yeah, her just talking about how it's patchy, blurry. Like some memory stuff. Here. Um, you've probably talked with lots of, <clears throat> lots of your friends about this event, correct? We talked, yes. Yeah. This was, and again, I'm not trying to judge. Just in fairness, this is a life-changing event for you, right? Correct. And for your group of friends, correct? Correct. Imagine when you get together. Does YouTube shadow delete comments? Um, I get to see what YouTube suggests me to delete. Like there'll be some comments that'll pop up. And then it'll ask me if I want to allow it or hide it or just like leave it. But like, I don't know. YouTube sometimes is very sensitive. And then we usually just like allow the comments. And then sometimes I'm just too lazy. <laughs> but I haven't seen any comments being held back today, though. I saw maybe one earlier, about like maybe an hour or two ago. But I haven't seen a lot of comments being held back. Or maybe it's even because I, I don't think it would be held back for me. I feel like I should be able to see the comments no matter what. Because sometimes, you know, if you guys say something that's like super unhinged, then, you know, <laughs> then I should be able to see it to see if I want to ban you guys or not. But I know we rarely do that here. You guys are usually pretty cool. Um, I'm going to use the bathroom real quick, actually. Just in case, can the judge or jury, for instance, change? I don't know. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, um, I know I've seen a case before where the jury didn't agree on the the more the more severe charges and so they went for the downgraded one but i don't know maybe wisconsin does things differently maybe in this case is different or maybe he has to be charged with first and second degree i don't know i'm not quite sure i have no idea but um i'll try to watch some law and crime and some court tv to see what they say about that because i am actually really curious too why he wasn't charged with second um but i guess the argument could be made was like oh you know if you're gonna go at someone with a knife then that's already intention to kill, right? Um, maybe that's the argument right there. Possibly. There was a few, but like an hour or two. Yeah, it wasn't like a lot, Storm. Oh, He went up to the teens and he never tried to leave the situation. Yeah. Ah. I don't know. I, I mean, I do know, but... I'm, 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 like, I'm trying to think. It depends on like... If you're looking at just the part where he's pushed down and then there's water in his face, he gets slapped and then he gets pushed down again. If you're just looking at that point, at that point, you could argue like fear for life, you know, he was going to get beat up. But then you see that he was given some space. It wasn't like a bunch of them were piling on him afterwards. That's where I'm like, eh, you know, but he could also be amped up adrenaline and still in fear of his life or something like that, right? But then when I zoom out even more, I look at how he was before this whole thing happened. And then if he hit that woman in the face, I'm like, eh, I don't know. That's when things start getting a little bit iffy for me. So it depends on like what part you want to just like look at. Ew. Wait, Casey, that's how Casey Anthony got off. Casey Anthony got off because they introduced reasonable doubt when they introduced um, the dad being the one who possibly killed her or she may have drowned in the pool. Right. That was my understanding of it. 
But I've heard that there were people in the jury that were on the Casey Anthony case, how years later they regret acquitting her. Apparently. <laughs> Hi, Laura. <laughs> Charges are too high. The kids weren't, yeah, no, for sure. The kids were not scared of him. I don't think anyone in that crowd was scared of him. Maybe he didn't brandish a knife with the warning because he expected him to see it and back off. He never said much. Um, he, I th when they were like, when the women were yelling in his face, I felt like he just did it like serotypously. Like he like, he like took it out of his pocket. He like unfolded it. And then he like stood there keeping it like waist level. I, I, I think he knew no one was going to see that. YouTube wants a polished family friendly people like Will Smith, who only occasionally stops someone on stage in front of millions of people. <laughs> Um, you know, Will Smith, it's so sad. I used to really like Will Smith. I feel like, um, Will Smith is a very interesting person nowadays, but actually I'm going to get some water really quick. I'll be right back. Uh, Spring says, I can see the state going for a second intentional defense was trying to say he was trying to protect himself. That's what the defense is saying. They're saying that it's um, self-defense. Chicken and dumplings are my favorite. I prefer the fat noodles. They just all suck up the flavor. It's so good. <laughs> I'm getting kind of hungry. Shut up. Well, after all the shit for those years dealing with Jada, I think I would snap eventually. But he didn't even snap at the right person. He snapped at fucking Chris Rock in front of like so many people on stage i don't know that was a, that was a very fucking unhinged moment super unhinged there you chat about it yes right people share their experience correct correct and maybe you help each other process what the experience was correct i wouldn't say necessarily process it just kind of i mean in the beginning it was more of like this is what i remember like you know how what do you remember i wouldn't say we were trying to give each other Answers, but. but you had gaps in your memory, correct? Yes. And again, you don't get into specifics, but other people, when you were talking to that, that were there, they had gaps in their memory. He snapped. Ah, uh, did he? Oh, I remember seeing him. Sorry. Um, I remember seeing him. Did, was he laughing at the joke? I remember he told the Chris Rock told the joke, and then it like kind of zooms at them, and it looks like Will Smith laughed, and then he realized his wife was pissed, and then that's when he went up there and did what he did. <laughs> The slap made Chris Rock a uh, shit ton of money. Yeah, probably did. It's still embarrassing, though. Yes. And so sometimes you would share information with each other to try and maybe fill in the gaps, correct? Sometimes, yes, but I never really took what they said and put it together. I just remembered what I remembered. And, and I appreciate that. You've been very clear about that. But I just want to make sure that we know that you've, you've got other information, right? Yes. And part of that is because you 
want to know what happened, correct? Correct. And there's still some things, as you sit here today, that you don't know, correct? Yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah, all right. Um, and just the human condition, at least for you, is you want to try to make sense of it, correct? Yes. And sometimes you, I would imagine, like the rest of us, you use deduction to try to put things together, correct? Yes. Even if you don't necessarily have a memory, you try to deduce what it is that happened, right? Yes. And so here in court, when we were talking, I'm just going to try to focus on the memory. Does that make sense? Okay. Because okay. um, some of the things you might have said or you might talk about are from things that you've kind of, you think because you've deduced it. Would that be fair? Um, I guess. Sure. Well, let's talk about this. Like one of the, the, one of the issues in the case is um, what happened to Matt, right? Yes. And one of the first things that you told the police is you said, quote, I thought he slapped her because, like I said, it was just kind of not comprehending. You said that to the police, correct? I don't remember, but if I did, yes. And since then, you've said she was punched, correct? That's correct. And today, when you were asked, tell us the details of that, you were like, I think she went back to slap, right? I just want to make sure I get it correctly. You said, no, no, not at all. I don't remember the details. I don't. And you've been very honest about that. We appreciate that. What I'm trying to make sure is that when you say you don't remember the details, like you don't have a picture in your head about Maddie getting punched, correct? I shouldn't have said punch because I don't remember if it was a punch or a slap, but I do remember her being hit in the face. Okay, so Mr. Muse had some sort of contact with his hand to her face, correct? correct? You don't remember which hand it was? I do not. You don't remember the context under which it was, correct? I do not. You don't remember if it was in response to something that she had done, correct? Correct. Um, and right now, as you say that, you don't have an image, a picture in your mind about what it is that happened, correct? Correct. Fair to say, and again, that what you're telling us is you kind of deduced that something happened to Maddie based upon all of the other circumstances, correct? I know I saw Maddie get hit. Okay. And when you say you know you saw Maddie get hit, you can't put a picture in your mind that you can tell us that. I cannot. I just know, even waking up from surgery, like my story was, I remember that. Sure. And your original story was, at first I thought he slapped her. Like Correct. I said, I don't know if it was a slap or a punch. So. Okay. Just some sort of contact. Correct. So I want to walk through some of the things before that. And I know you may or may not have a memory, so we've got the video, right? Yes. And you've been shown that video before? Yes. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. I think I misunderstood the second degree thing then. Was I just reading it wrong? I was interpreting it wrong. But the belief of danger or the force being necessary was not reasonable. That's what I was clinging on to. Because my thing is, I don't think that he thought he was in imminent danger. Physical injury? Maybe. Like getting hit back? Possibly. I don't know, actually. I, I'm a little confused. I'm, I'm like reading it again. I'm kind of confused. I'm a little confused, to be honest. Sorry. And you've been uh, shown some of the slides before? Yes. And by slides, I mean we broke the video up into different frames. I call them slides. Does that make sense? Yes, I just kind of really saw the video. Um, I haven't really seen a whole lot of the slides other than yesterday when I was here. Okay. Yesterday somebody showed you some slides? No, up, like up on the screen oh. when you guys were doing them. As a, uh, You were just here watching the trial? Correct. Which you have a right to do. Um, and that's when the first time you saw the slides come through, yes. correct? But before that, you haven't been shown the slides? No, just the, like just the video, basically okay. the part of myself. And you... Just to kind of, I want to get us into the space that we, I think, is the important space when you're right in front of him. Okay. And so if I get there. I don't know. I'm thinking like a between, like a between a first degree intentional homicide and between a second degree intentional homicide, like a 2.5. Because <laughs> I feel like it doesn't really fit either one. I feel like it's in the middle. I don't know. I guess I'm. I guess the issue that I'm having is with the intentional part. Reckless homicide. What is reckless homicide? Oh, there's first degree. Wait, okay, first degree reckless homicide. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Homeless. Um. Negligent homicide. Second degree reckless homicide. Felony murder, first degree reckless homicide. Maybe I'm thinking of reckless homicide then. Two less severe murder offenses in Wisconsin law are first and second degree reckless homicide. First degree reckless homicide is defined as recklessly causing the death of another human, human being, being under circumstances which show utter disregard for human life. Though it is a lesser offense compared with first degree intentional homicide, first degree reckless homicide is still extremely serious. And is punished as severely as second-degree intentional homicide with a maximum of 40 years in prison. 
Second degree reckless homicide is recklessly causing the death of another human being without the element of showing utter disregard for human life. Maybe I'm thinking of reckless homicide then. Because I don't, I guess the, the intentional thing kind of bugs me a little bit. <laughs> I don't think there's a two, oh, 1.5. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's Monday. Oh. Hmm. That's more like driving a car, not like a stabbing. Oh. Because like I said, you could argue that if you're having a knife and you're planning on stabbing someone, that can show the intent to kill. Fuck, I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I am not quite sure. Too quickly, tell us. But okay. you, Maddie and Dante are there first, correct? When um, I say there, there's a, let me back up. There's a group of yeah. six teenage males, correct? Yes. And then there's Mr. Mew, correct? Correct. And then there's you, got, you're in a group, which we'll call the Carlson Cohn group. Is that fair? Okay. And there's about 11 people in that group, correct? Correct. Of your group, the first two people that leave your group to join the other group are Madison Cohen and Dante Carlson, right? Correct. At some point, you go over and join Madison and Dante, correct? Correct. Prior to that, do you have a memory of what you observed? I did not observe anything. I remember coming down the river and our, our tubes being stopped. Um, and like I said, I, I just asked what was kind of going on, why we're being stopped. We literally just got back on our tubes. Why, why are we stopping again? Um, and I heard, I don't know who, but somebody say a group looks uncomfortable. Okay. I did not hear anything coming from the back of us from the group. I didn't even see the group. I yeah, was Christine. not even paying attention to them. I was just hanging out with my friends. Um, and I, you didn't hear anybody call for help, correct? I did not hear anything. And I think what you told the police in one of your interviews is you even questioned some of your friends, like, why are we intervening? Yeah, well, I kind of asked Janelle, like, what's going on? Why, what are they doing? And right. then I was like... That would be premeditation, though, if he intentionally brought the knife. But he didn't bring the... It's not like he got an altercation with the kids ran back, and then brought the knife over. He already had the knife on him. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like there could be so many interpretations of this. But, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Let's just get up and kind of go see. Okay. So at some point, you and Janelle and Gabby, you're the next three people that joined Madison and Dante. Is that right? I'm not sure if Gabby came with us, but Janelle and I for sure did. Okay. And do you remember there was a time when you were walking over there? Do you remember Nick Mew standing up and looking upriver and waiting? He unfolded and waited. Could be premeditated. Because hmm. for me, I, I could see wanting to hurt, like wanting to physically hurt. Wanting to kill? I don't know. I don't know. I think, uh, I don't know if I'd be comfortable with just wanting to kill. I don't know. Hmm. Waving his hand? I do not. And do you remember then that as soon as that got done happening, Madison Cohn turned to you and Janelle and she waved her arm to have you guys come over? I don't remember that, but maybe that is why we got up. Does that make sense to you why you went there? Is because Madison's I mean, like, yes, come yes. on over here, right? Yeah. And then you went over, correct? Yes. And then there was times that we've seen in the video where you're standing in front of Mr. Mute, correct? Correct. Prior to your getting there, would it be fair to say that Madison Cohn was yelling at Mr. Mute? I mean, I didn't, hear, like I said, I didn't hear anything. I had no idea of the scene. Did you see her standing in his space? No. Okay. Until I got over there, yes. Once you got over there, you then saw her standing in his space? Yes. And you then saw her, and probably heard her, yelling at him, correct? Yeah, I didn't, I can't really, like I said, I don't make out what she said specifically, but yes. So you don't know the content, but you know the volume was high. Yes. Um, and would it be fair to say that she was in his face? Yes. And at some point, as we saw in there, you went up and stood next to Madison, essentially right in front of Mr. Mew as well, correct? Correct. And Dante was, if you're, if you're here, Madison's next to you, Dante's over in this area, fair to say? I did not remember Dante being even around us. Okay. I just remember it being Maddie and I and then Janelle. Okay. No, 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 there is video evidence, Spring. Oh, Spring, you came a little bit earlier. We watched the video already. There, there's, there's a video there. Uh, there's videos, and then, uh, oh, sorry, there's one video, one video. I thought, I was hoping for there to be a second video, because I'm like, there has to be another person that recorded this, but it seems like there's only one video. Hmm. To my random watching YouTube trials, not American arse. <laughs> Where are you from, Dibs? <laughs> And you remember, as we saw on the screen, that when you're standing there, essentially, you, you weren't asking questions, right? I don't think I asked questions. I, yeah. I might have yelled, you know, the same things they were yelling, but sure. I don't remember. And so while you went over there with the intent to figure out what was going on, as soon as you got there and you saw Maddie doing something, you basically joined her, right? I think that's exactly what I did, yes. Yeah. You just, whatever my friend is doing, I'm going to join her and do the same thing, correct? Not just Maddie, but everybody else kind of yelling. I think maybe I was listening to everybody else yelling, and I just kind of... Joined the crowd. Joined the crowd, yeah. Yep. Um, that's sometimes what happens in a crowd. Yes. Do you agree? Yes. Um, and when you joined the crowd in that situation we saw on there, that's when you reached out and started putting your hands on Mr. Mew, correct? I don't remember putting my hands Oh, video. No, no, no. Sorry, I thought you meant during the altercation. During the altercation, yes. Um, what happened before he ran over on the, um, on the teens, on the, the tubes? We don't know. It's on him, but 
in the video, yes. You saw yourself as you described it, you kind of kind of pushed him as I think the words that you used, right? Yeah, I mean, I can't really tell. I just see my hand, you know, on his shoulder and I don't really see him fall back or anything, no. but. But it, it moves his person, not his feet. Right. Right. And then uh, I don't know if you, do you remember then standing next to you as you're doing that with the left hand, Madison Cohen is putting her right hand on his left shoulder Correct. and pushing him back as well. Correct. Correct. And that, I think on the still frames, it's hard to know, but that's at around the 144 second mark. Does that make sense? Yes. And it's at about 145 where we see the picture of Mr. Mew standing there with uh, the knife in his hand in front of him. Correct? Yes. So he's not hiding it. Agreed? Agreed. You, for whatever reason, didn't see it. Correct? Correct. Um, and it's while he's standing there holding the knife, with, that's the time that you're pushing him on the one side, and then just after that, Madison Cohen's pushing him on the other side, correct? I believe so. And it's right around there, too, in the middle of that, where he raises his left hand and calls back to his upriver to other people, correct? I, I mean, in the video, yes, but I don't remember okay. that. In that moment... I'm just going to jump down the line of question. I think the video speaks for itself. He's entitled to ask questions. <clears throat> in that moment, did you understand that the man that you're standing in front of, who's looking past you, is waving to people behind you? I did not. Okay. Did you ever think, hey, maybe I should just... Let him go in that direction? I mean, I'm 110 pounds. I feel like he could have walked right past me. He could have, um, right? Um, you don't know who was to your left, correct? Correct. There's a group of six teenagers there. Correct. And those six teenagers are screaming, predator, 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 correct? I didn't hear that, but in the video, yes. And to your right is Madison Cohen. Correct. And somewhere around in that area is Dante Carlson. Correct. Anthony Carlson. Correct. AJ Martin, correct? Correct. So it wasn't just you, 110 pound. No, but at that moment it was Maddie and I, so I just mean he could have walked around. But at least that's what's captured on the camera, right. correct? We again, we've seen some other. Um, I have exhibit one four one five. You said you were here in court yesterday. I was. Did you see exhibit number one hundred and five when we talked about that? I believe so. There's been a lot, so. Sure. Yes. Um, and you can you can't see on here, but. Um, this is uh, from frame 2592 at a minute 49. Does that make sense? Yes. Is this 105 or 104? This is 104, Judge. Thank okay. you. I apologize. Okay. And you see the uh, red J the red circle with JC in it with an arrow around it? Correct? I do. That appears to be about the camera angle, correct? Yes. So again, there may have been other people not photoed, not in the photo, but they'd be around that area, correct? Correct. You have, every, you have no reason to disagree with the positioning of people in this at that time, correct? Correct. Okay. So. After the, he gestures to other people, you guys continue to stand in front of him, correct? I believe so. And this is where, again, something happens and you don't have a memory of it or you're like, he had contact with her face in some way, right? Correct. Right. And you don't necessarily know the context of that, right? Correct. Um, I want to, if I, hold on a second, switch to my computer. And I mean, according to her, she was high as fuck. Hey, thanks. Uh, yes. I want to show you some photos here starting at 2643, okay? Okay. Um, the person, uh, is that you in the bikini bottom with the tattoo on your right leg? Correct. And then uh, we can see a bit of blonde hair and an elbow here. Is that Madison Cohen? I think so, yes. Okay. And as I scrolled through, that shows then Madison Cohen, correct? Correct. And then I oh, is this when she got pushed back? I don't know. Her hair is like, she kind of like, like this or something. Is this when her face got pushed back? I'm going to scroll forward. Oh, no, she was swinging her head to the right to... To 2655. Do you see that? Yes. At least it's 2655. I'm going to move one more, I believe. Is this your elbow underneath Maddie's uh, left yes. hand, which is holding the can? Uh, yes, I believe so. That's your elbow? Yeah. So in this moment in time, at 2656, we have to watch the video. Yeah, so it looks like he's, like, trying to stop it. I think it was the girl who pushes him down. She's, like, she's like right here. Uh, between, you're in between Mr. Mew and Madison Cohen. Agreed? Right here, yes. And so is Dante Carlson. He's in between Madison Cohen and Mr. Mew, correct? Correct. All right. And you don't have a memory of exactly where people were or what happened just before this other than Mr. Mew's hand went to her face in some manner, correct? Correct. Because I'm assuming when he, when he shoved the woman's face, he was probably caught off guard when she shoved him back because his attention is on the woman waiting for her to retaliate, I think. I'm going to just scroll forward here to get to some other... Because I think she was the one that shoved him in the water. That's what it looks like. Okay. 
Okay, before I get to the <clears throat> the photos that we saw before, you were essentially leaning in towards Mr. Mute, correct? Correct. And then after that, we're going to see a photo where you're, if we can actually pull it up now, 2857. That's your um, leg with a bikini bottom behind Mr. Mew, correct? Correct. So in between the photo that we saw and this photo, you don't remember what you were doing, correct? I have no idea, no. Correct. There's nothing to indicate that you were tending to your friend Maddie Carlson, correct? Correct. I think she pushed as him. As we saw in the photo before this, you weren't actually going to your friend, you were going to Mr. Mew, correct? In the photo it looks like that, yes. So whatever happened to your friend, it wasn't something that caused you to say, I better take care of her. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I just don't see that. Um... Because you're saying it was this guy that punched him? Because it looked to me like she was, because she was like in the motion of like pushing him. Um, you couldn't see it in that frame, but it was in the frame where like over here. To me, it looked like she pushed him. Where is he? So you're saying the, the, the one in the blue shorts decked him? Is that Isaac? Yeah, it's hard to see because like, um, she's like here. Here, I will. The boy punched him for hitting the girl, which is what knocked him down when the boy moved to the other side and smacked him twice. You talking about the blue short guy? Oh, Isaac is in the purple shorts? Oh, I thought Isaac was in the blue shorts. It's hard to see. Oh, this is Isaac in the purple shorts? Okay, hold on. So this is when what's her face was hit. See like this right here? So this guy is trying to separate. This is where I thought it was her that pushed him. Right here. Because it looks like her, because I, I was like, I don't know if that guy can reach over to him. Maybe he could have punched him. I don't know. Isaac is in the purple solid shorts. Okay. Yeah, it's like really hard to see. For all these frames. So you're saying that he was decked by this guy. Hmm. Did he testify saying that he decked him? The guy in the gray shorts, this guy right here? This guy punched him? The one on the right in the two-tone? And what angle though? I just don't see the angle of him punching. The nurse's testimony. Mew told her that the kids pulled the knives on him and got one of the kids. Um, wait, sorry. Listen to the nurse's testimony. Hi, Tabasco. Um, Mew told her that the kids pulled the knives on him. Yeah, we know that's not true. Got one of the got one off the kid and said, Yeah, we know that's not true. Yeah, we know he lied about that part, but um, I'm just trying to look at the, um, the altercation. I don't know. It looks like this, this is the guy right here. It looks like he's trying to s separate these two. Hold on. Oh, wait, is that, that's Mew, right? That's Mew's leg? Yeah, that's Mew's leg. Or is that another person? Wait, what the fuck? Who, wait, who is this person in here? Hold on a second. Hold on. Is there another person in here? This all occurred on, yeah. Is there another, who is this? Is there, I, okay. I didn't know that there was another person in here. I think there's another person in here. Yeah, that, okay. So the girl's there. It looks like she pushed him. He fell. Actually, I can't tell. I can't tell if the frames are just like fucked or what. It looks like there's another person here. Look before you see. Okay, okay, okay.
No, there's not another person there. Yeah, there's not another person there. Hold on a second. Okay, so he's there. I could see him. Him I can see for sure. Those two girls. Okay. Okay, I, I was like, wait, is there another person right here? I think the frames are just like fucked or something. Okay, there's no one there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, to me, it doesn't look like this guy hit him. It looks like he's just like, like, I feel like the angle is not, unless he was doing it like, like this, I feel like the angle is not really there for him to hit. And then I don't think, to me, it doesn't look like this guy hit either. It looks like he was just like, kind of like jumping in on the, the girl hitting, uh, pushing him back. Some look so young. Yeah, they're like in their um the group one is like teens. I think they're like seniors in high school. And then group two is like early twenties. Yeah, I don't to me I think she pushed him. See right there? Like her hand. I think she pushed him. I'm just not quite sure that this guy or that guy. I, I feel like I don't know if they it just doesn't look like they decked him. Everyone's being pushed back. The reason why the boys dart towards me is because they're, re yeah, that's, um, that's why I was saying that, like, he elevated the aggression by pushing Maddie in the face. Like, they pushed him. I mean, honestly, I would just say, like, you shouldn't have done all this. Like, this is all stupid. Like, like, the guy's already down. I don't know. Just back up. But they're react because they, they probably put, slapped him back because, yeah, they slapped him back because he slapped her whatever that's probably why this happened and they were just like pushing him down so he doesn't get up it looks like the blue shorts pushed him but the thing is black shorts is trying to separate him from the girl and he was decked from the front where he wasn't paying attention i just was that said in any of the um in the testimonies, I think they just said they just they just pushed him. I don't think um, anyone said that he got decked right there, unless I miss there might maybe there's a testimony that I missed, but I read some articles and I don't think I saw anyone saying that. Hmm. I think if the popcorn, who the hell is the popcorn guy? <laughs> got off me, will probably get off. Um, wait, who's the popcorn guy? I don't know who the popcorn. That must be a different case. I don't know. It's, this is how I see it. I see it as bikini girl pushes him. He falls. I don't see this guy decking. Um, and I think this guy, I don't think he decked. I think he just kind of just like went into it with the bikini girl. Maybe help pushed, maybe help push. But I feel like the arm length isn't, I don't know if the arm length is there for him to push him. Maybe. Maybe he helped her pushed. Popcorn guy shot someone in the theater because he thought he was rude and loud. Oh, when did that happen? Okay, poll. So far, 80 votes. Uh, thank you, everyone who voted. Keep voting if you haven't already. 51% uh, say guilty. 26 says not guilty. 15 says not sure. 8% haven't paid attention. <laughs> Uh, we'll definitely redo the poll um, after the defense um, after the defense um, goes. But I mean, they're, they're every time they do cross examination, that's their way of um, kind of like presenting their case to the juries too. That was a long time ago in Florida. He was an old guy who shot a guy in the movies because he threw popcorn at him. Oh. The photos that we saw before, you were essentially leaning in towards Mr. Mute, correct? Correct. And then after that, we're going to see a photo where you're, if we can actually pull it up now, 2857. That's your um, leg with a bikini bottom behind Mr. Mute, correct? Correct. So in between the photo that we saw and this photo, you don't remember what you were doing, correct? I have no idea, no. Correct. There's nothing to indicate that you were tending to your friend Maddie Carlson, correct? Correct. Because as we saw in the photo before this, you weren't actually going to your friend. You were going to Mr. Mew, correct? In the photo, it looks like that, yes. So whatever happened to your friend, it wasn't something that caused you to say, I better take care of her. 
I think I just was shocked that he had hit her, so I just, I don't, like I said, I don't know if I reacted, I don't really know what I said, I don't know. Whatever it was, you didn't focus your attention on your friend, I correct? Not. Obviously, this is somebody that you care for, right? Yes. You worry. Uh, I would have reacted at the perpetrator, too. I don't know, I would just try to be like, oh my god, are you okay? You're right. I probably would have just react and just like shove that person to get them away. About her, right? <laughs> yes. And if you were worried for her safety, you might have had an instinct to turn to her right away, correct? Correct, and I, and I don't know if I did say something right away, and then just... All we know is what's in the photo, and that is you don't turn your attention to her, you're focusing your attention on Mr. Mew, correct? Right. Um, so now in 2857, um, you're behind Mr. Mew, correct? Your back is to him? Yes. And his back is to you, correct? correct. All right. I want to just go through these quickly here, the next couple of slides, okay? And we want to focus on what you're doing, then I'm going to ask you some questions, okay? Okay. So you you came out of the last frame that you're in is 2866. Is it, do you agree? Yes. So I'm going to go back to 2858. As we scroll through, does it appear as if you are turning around your body? Yes. And you would be then going back in a direction towards Mr. Mute, correct? I don't believe that I did, no. Okay. Well, let's, you're turning, let me go back again. I'm so turning just, around, yes. I don't know where I'm going, though. So this one, she hasn't been stabbed yet. So we agree that you turn around, correct? Well, yes. We don't know how far you turn around, correct? Correct. We know at some point that you and Mr. Mew are really close, correct? Yes, I believe he walked up to me, though. Okay. And when you say believe, you don't have a memory of it, correct? Correct, but I've seen the video a lot, and I'm not facing the way he's facing. I'm facing the opposite way. Okay, and let, we're going to go through that. But just as we go through this right now, this isn't a memory you have, correct? Right. correct. This is, again, something that you've used your deduction to try to figure out what happened, correct? correct. And what does FAFO mean? The story that you, I don't want to say told yourself, but is that fair? Yeah. The story you told yourself is he came up to me, correct? But, um, not came up to me, but we were standing in front of him, and I thought after the punch with Maddie, I thought he stabbed me right after that. Okay. And so, but when you were saying, like, I didn't walk up to him, that's something, that's not a memory, that's just you're doing some deduction to correct. get there, correct? correct? The story that you've told yourself. Correct. And in that, what you've told other people was, he was close enough to literally where he just put his hand up and kind of poked me on the side, right? Correct. You said that to the news station, agreed? Correct. Um, you'd also said to the police, this isn't in relation to anything, you just volunteered this information. I don't know if I reacted like hitting at him or yelling at him. That's correct. correct. And then you said he... Oh, uh, yeah. That's where I, I see a lot of, like, the people that are, like, the anti-victims um, or the anti-teens like teens and stuff like that, uh, a lot of them are saying, fuck around and find out. I, I just don't... I don't know. I don't think it applies for this case. Um, yeah. Poked me, correct? Correct. Um, and then you'd said, I think, as well to the police, I was close enough that he could pretty much go like that. Agreed? Because for me, it's like, when you say fuck around and find out, it means, like, whatever happens to you, you fucking deserved it. Um, that's how I interpret it as... And when you did that, you're on the video, you've got your right hand and you move your right hand, think like maybe <laughs> three inches forward, is that fair? Yeah. Is that a fair demonstration of what you did when you said he went like that? Yes. Am I doing that correctly? Yes. So when Mr. Anderson demonstrated something before and he swung his arm around, that's not accurate? I wouldn't say that's not accurate. I just that's felt like it was literally a poke in my yeah. side. Sure. And the poke in your side is on your left side, correct? Correct. And it's, if you, could you just for a moment, can you stand for yes. a moment? And again. The fatal one, ah, uh, yeah, it, I'm not really quite sure when Isaac was stabbed either. I think it was when the state presented the um, opening statement, they made it seem like it happened after the second stabbing, I think. Because I think the yellow shorts, um, yellow shorts was first. And then it was the guy that was like trying to de-escalate but then put his hands on Mew's back. Mew stabbed him twice. Wait, hold on a second. No, no, no. Because the woman, she was stabbed between yellow shorts and um, the blue shorts guy. I, I'm not really quite sure when Isaac happened. Did Isaac happen after the third one? Because I felt like they kind of said an opening statement, but to me, it just wasn't clear unless I'm just not processing it correctly uh do you guys know in chat when um when it happened to isaac your jacket on right can you just touch on you with your right hand where it is right here fair to say that as you stand there right now, i don't think it shows in the camera your left arm is protecting that area yes and if you raise your left arm push it up raise it is that area now exposed yes is it now vulnerable to being cut yes is it vulnerable to being cut where you're at right now no. no. And so, from deduction, would you agree that maybe your hand was out, stretched towards him in that moment? Sustained. Okay. You don't have a memory of it. I do not. All you know is 
couldn't have done it with your hands down at your side, correct? Objection, speculation. She's already said that, but okay. let's move on. Cheesy leg. <laughs> Hello. Isaac's the one that you see the hand shove mu at the neck backward. Um, let me mute this. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm tired of this video, too, but I am curious. So he's already had the knife in his hand. Maybe around here. The yellow shorts right here happen really quickly. Okay. Um, I don't, the girl's right there. Okay. Yellow shorts. This is the second one with denim. Sh I don't know. We can't see what's going on here. Maybe it happened here. Is it before this? Yeah. So this point, he already stabbed the girl. And now he stabs the third one. Everything from here on is not self-defense. Keep going. Oh, keep going. Okay, they push him. Right there. I don't see it. Where the, I don't, where the fuck is Isaac? I don't see him. You said Isaac was in purple shorts, right? Like here? No, I thought th this one was when this one right here. Oh. Oh, I thought this was the same person. So he jabs denim shorts twice. And the person that pushes him right now, that's a new person. That's Isaac. Oh. And then they said Isaac died like instantly. Okay. Gotcha. Did I just not catch an opening statements? I don't know. I was very confused. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it. Hello, Wolf. How are you doing today? How's it going? Hi, Zantharius. Oh, I apologize. Yes, I do have something else. Sorry. Um, if you could go back uh, to the slides. Madame, the hello. Yes, please. So this is 2859, where we talked about before. I want to focus on something else, though, okay? okay. As I move forward here, I want to ask if you uh, remember Maddie behind you. Is this in the green suit? Is that Gabby? Correct. Do you see a, a leg with a navy blue swimsuit bottom i do, I do. was uh maddie wearing a navy blue swimsuit bottom yes you think that's maddie i do uh and in that photo does it look like you're tending to her not at that moment and in fact this is the stretch where we see you turn around correct correct you're actually turning away from her correct correct it looks that's like right. she's walking the opposite yep. way so whatever was going on with maddie you weren't worried about it. you were going in a different direction at that point yes and uh, if we can have the slides off here matsuri festival is saturday where in dc I thought the cherry blossoms already bloomed in DC. The kids in the background look scared. Well, I mean, they look scared after they realize um, the woman had blood coming from her. Slide 2969, that's you after he made that little jabbing motion toward you, correct? correct? This is you with the injury that we just talked about. Correct. Can you see your friend Janelle there in the background? Yeah. She's clearly reacting to you, correct? Correct. And then she goes and she gives you uh, attention, for lack of a better term, correct? Correct. Um, it's at that point that Janelle was, prior to that, you can take it down, prior to that, Janelle was turned facing towards Mr. Mew and kind of everybody, she was kind of in the background, is that right? Yes. Um, you didn't see Janelle go tend to Maddie Cohen, correct? I don't remember. Sure. What we know is, when you were injured, she went and tended to you, correct? Correct. But prior to that, she's not tending to any other women, agreed? Correct. After... Um, At some point after this, you walk over to your group, what I'm called group two, correct? Correct. And as you're standing over there, um, some people are tending to you, correct? I don't know if I walked over to the group. I walked kind of a little away from him, I believe. 
Okay, so that's what we got from her. Um, let's read some articles. Let's see. First week. First week of Zatra, which happened last week. Time's going by fast. Okay, so the prosecution um, it aims to prove that Mew was the aggressor. Mew's legal team is arguing that he stabbed five people in self-defense. Mew was charged with five-degree intentional homicide in Schumann's death and attempted first-degree intentional homicide in stabbings of Riley, AJ, Dante, and Tony. Uh, he pled all not guilty. Gilma Constanza testifies uh, through a Spanish interpreter. She was on the river that day and testified that she saw Mew discard something on the side of the river following the stabbing, but didn't know what it was. She said he seemed pale and white after the stabbing. So that was him, I guess, discarding the knife. Um, Alba Torres testifies. The video appears to show Mew tubing with his group after stabbings. Next up was witness Alba Torres. Oh, shit. Can you guys see this? Um, oh, let me resize it. Next up, Alba Torres, who testified through a Spanish interpreter. She was part of the group that was tubing with Mew the day of the stabbing. She said she had known Mew for five or six years before the stabbings and considers him a friend. She was asked about the moment that a cell phone was lost, which Mew claimed he was looking for on the river before the stabbings, and the disturbance that occurred afterwards. She said she didn't see the altercation, but saw the aftermath. Torres said she was told to call 911 because something was going on. She said one group in the person, one person in the group, Eric Von Williams, went to help the injured. Williams testified earlier in the trial. Torres said that Mew later returned to the group, appeared to look normal. At that point, they did not know that Mew had stabbed multiple people, but he told them that he had been pushed by a group. Yeah, this is wild to me how he just went back and like he didn't even tell the group what happened. Um, a cell phone video from Torres was shown that appears to show Mew, who had a jacket on, tubing down the river with the group after the stabbings, heading toward the exit on the river. In the video, Torres believed a person on the shore may have been the suspect, but it turned out to be an employee of the tubing company. Uh, Sergio. After a mid-morning break, Sergio took the stand. Lavaya Sergio, who spoke through a Spanish interpreter, was also through was also with Mew's group on the day of the stabbings. He said he remembered when one of the group members, Ariel, lost the phone. Ariel said it wasn't a big deal because he had insurance, but Mew insisted on trying to retrieve it. Sergio said that Mew looked for the phone anyway. Sergio said he later saw the group around Mew, but couldn't see much because there were so many people. But he said he, didn't rem he did remember seeing a woman in a black leotard telling Mew to go, 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 and that he saw Mew push her. So initially I was like, eh, did he really push her? I don't know. We're not quite sure. But this is even someone in his own group that said that he saw uh, Mew push the woman. He said he later saw Mew get pushed to the ground. He said he was watching from a distance because he didn't leave his tube to approach the group. Lavaya said, sorry, Sergio said, from his position, he could see some blood from some of the stabbing victims, but it was hard to see from the distance. He said that, oh, did the ad just mess me up? Um, he said that one of the stabbing victims told the person in his group to call 911. He said he turned away from the victims because it was hard to look at. Why did they all just float down the river? Why did they leave the scene? When Mew came back to the group, Levia said, Sergio said that he heard through another person in the group that Mew had his knife taken away. He said Mew looked pale when he returned with his eyes wide open, but not much was said after that. Sergio said Mew put back on his hat and a jacket. Uh, Tatiana uh, Levia, maybe the wife or a family member of the previous guy. Tatiana, who was with Mew's group of the day of the stabbing, gave a brief testimony on Friday morning. She also spoke through an interpreter. She recalled seeing people with bloody injuries, but didn't see what led up to the incident. She said when Mew came back towards her group, he was acting normally. Tatiana also recalled hearing a girl yelling for help. She had a hand on her stomach, she testified. After seeing that, she said she called for police. Ernesto testifies. In a slightly unusual circumstance Friday, the defense called a witness Ernesto. The judge allowed Chagas to testify because he needed an interpreter to testify, and the interpreter was in the courtroom Friday. Ernesto said he had been friends with Mew for about 10 years. Mew would regularly come over to his house. Mew was a handyman, he said, and often helped fix things around the home. Emmanuel, wait, is it Emmanuel? Ernesto? Okay. Ernesto said that he asked Mew to bring his pocket knife during the tubing trip to help cut the cords at the end of the ride, which makes sense. 
Ernesto recalled seeing a group of people shouting at Mew and saw Mew in the water and someone was hitting him. He heard Mew's wife Sandy say that Mew needed help. When Mew walked back towards him, Chagas said he looked very worried and he was pale. Chagas added that he'd never seen Mew scared before. Um, Chagas recounted that while Mew was walking past him, he pointed at a man and told him to stay there, stay there in order to keep him away from Mew. Afterwards, the float down the river was totally quiet, he said. Nobody talked until they got to the exit where they met by the police. Why didn't anyone talk about what happened? That's so crazy. His behavior afterwards is weird. Yeah. Uh, the police came over and asked Mew to come with them. I think the behavior afterwards will factor into sentencing if he's found guilty. And then also, I think the jury could just be like, ah, you know, this could be admission of guilt um, when they deliberate. But I've there's been cases where someone will lie um will act really weird shady afterwards and i would still think that like oh they're not guilty um one example that i always give is danielle redlick the woman who um stabbed her husband and after stabbing him she hung around the house cleaning for like 10 hours and she like opened her dating app really quick and then closed it the headlines for that sounded really really bad it was like woman marries stepfather murders him goes on dating app waits for 10 hours and then when she finally calls 911 she lied to the 911 operator saying that he had a heart attack or something. And then they got there. They're like, wait, what the fuck? Like he stabbed. Um, she absolutely like afterwards, everything that happened afterwards was like really, really bad. But um, when I listened to her testify, when I listened to like the case, I still thought she was not guilty. Um, I still thought it was like under like it was like self-defense. Like I agree with the jury. So there are times where people do lie and act really shady and shitty, um, but they could still not be guilty of something. But for me, I think here, I think he is guilty. And um, I do think that this will factor in when um, the judge sentences, sentences, b -b -b sentences, sentences. I can't say this word. Sentences. Is, is. <laughs> when the judge sentences is, is, is him. I can't say that word. I'm just really hungry. I think that's what it is. When I get really hungry, it's hard for me to talk. So I just need to eat afterwards. Um, I don't understand why didn't Nick say anything. Um, I... I think he was just trying to get away with it. I think he was just trying to leave the scene. And when they, when they caught him, he was like, oh, what happened? I heard that someone got stabbed and maybe they look like me. I think he was just trying to get the fuck out. I think he was trying to get away with it. All right. Um, afterwards, they float down the river, was totally quiet, he said. Nobody talked until they got to the exit where they were met by police. The police came over and asked me to come with them. During the prosecution's cross-examination, Chagas clarified that he didn't see anything before Mew was in the water. He also didn't see any injuries on Mew. Chagas recalled telling police that Mew is a big guy. He was in the army. He doesn't need a knife to defend himself. Chagas wasn't completely sure about Mew's military service, but knew that Mew lived in communist country where military service was mandatory. I wonder in Romania, um, how, because didn't they say that Mew left Romania when he was like 16 or something? I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what the defense said. The court then went on a lunch break in the middle of the prosecution's cross-examination. The prosecution continued cross-examination, pressing back on the fact that Chagas told police that someone took Mew's knife out of his pocket. He told the officer that 17 times, the prosecution said. The prosecution also walked through video footage, which showed Chagas enter the water near Mew and asked to clarify who exactly he told to stay there, stay there. Chagas had a hard time remembering who it was and also didn't recall seeing two victims who were shown in the video. During recross, defense brought up Chagas' English language proficiency and he declared that he preferred to communicate complex topics in Spanish. When he was speaking to the police officer on the day of the stabbing, he was speaking in English, Chagas said. There were times during his examination that he responded to questions in English and the prosecution asked if he was comfortable with speaking in English. Chagas said that sometimes he understands and sometimes he doesn't. Finally, the defense asked Chagas to clarify his statement about Mew serving in the military. Chagas said he didn't know how old Mew was when he emigrated to the U.S. and did not have actual knowledge if he ever served in the military. Uh, witness sequestration order. Yeah, apparently um, some of the Spanish-speaking witnesses didn't get orders that they weren't allowed to watch the case, the trial live. So they were apparently watching it live or they were watching... Um, yeah, I think they were watching other people testifying or something like that. So they were given instructions to not do that um all right next part ariel next on the stand was ariel ernesto's chagas's cousin he'd known Mew for about five years and described him as a friend ariel described his experience on the apple river on the day of the stabbing he said he saw someone pushing Mew down into the river and a woman came over after to hit him 
On the other side of the river, he said he saw a man with an injury to the stomach. He said he started walking towards the group because he was worried about Mew. The people around him were slapping him with the hands, he described through an interpreter. He said Mew defended himself, but everything happened so quickly. He couldn't recall exactly what happened. At one point, he said he got close to Mew and touched him on the arm. However, the prosecution pressed him on the last point. Um, when he spoke to the police, what's his name again? Ariel. When Ariel spoke to the police, he said he never got close to Mew. Police later confronted Ariel with a photo of him up close to Mew, and Ariel told the prosecution that he denied to police that he had seen anything up close. The prosecution also asked if Ariel was out in the hallway watching a live stream of the trial. He said he was sitting on the bench on the other side of the hall and denied watching a video. He also testified that he was told by the defense not to watch any media coverage of the trial. Okay. Amber Lind, a uh, forensic scientist. Uh, she was the one that examined the knife and she found there is DNA. Um, strong support for DNA inclusion from Isaac Schumann, the one who's deceased, and Dante Carlson. She also said the knife was uninformative for Mew's DNA, even though it was something he carried around every day. Was Mew injured at all? Um, he was pushed and slapped, but I don't think he had any like physical... Um, vi visual visible visible uh, i don't think he had any visible injuries but maybe when the defense goes up there they'll take pictures but yeah i mean i wouldn't really expect him to have any visible injuries from being pushed and slapped i mean you shouldn't get pushed or slapped regardless though but Day four recap. On Thursday, more body cam footage was shown during the trial that captured the chaos as police arrived on the river. Um, do you guys want to watch the police body cam footage when they arrive? The first footage on day four was from John Farrell, a sergeant with the Somerset Police Department and licensed emergency medical responder. I think it'll be interesting to see when they arrested him, maybe not like the chaos of the scene, but maybe like the interactions with Mew and the police, maybe. It wasn't shown in the video, but Farrell later said he assisted CPR and Schumann and said responders needed to use a backboard on inner tubes to get Schumann to get an ambulance to an ambulance. St. Croix Community, sorry, C County Deputy Benjamin Trebian, oh my God, a lot of things I can't pronounce here, uh, test me off for the jury the first look at Mew's arrest. Trebian's body cam footage played in court showed Mew in handcuffs. Officers can be heard verifying he matched the description of the suspect. Trebian testified that he was given a photo of the suspect in trunks during the search, and when Mew was arrested, he was wearing a shirt, a hat, glasses as well. Mew also had cuts and nicks on knuckles and on his hands. Trebian also told the defense he didn't notice any signs of intoxication in his interactions with Mew. He told the prosecutor Mew was kind of like in a trance-like state almost. Mitchell Sheppy, an investigator for the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office, testified he found the knife using the, using the stabbing on the river ledge on a muddy section of the shoreline. The knife was closed, he said. Sheppy opened a box containing the knife and showed it to the courtroom, entering it as an evidence into the trial. Prosecution is expected, uh, ugh, is expected to call 44 witnesses on the course of the trial. Um, read that. Maybe we'll watch the body cam footage of the interaction. That might be interesting. Okay, what this one? Trials expected to last through Friday resumes Monday. This talks about the opening statements. All right, so here's some of the ones that we didn't watch. Like, we didn't watch his testimony because the audio is kind of, like, crappy. Day one. The nearly three-and-a-half-minute cell phone video taken by Schumann's friend, Jawan Cockfield, shows a confrontation between Mew and the two groups of tubers leading up to and during the Schumann's killing in Somerset of July 30th, 2022. So, yeah, two years ago. In the video, Mew, dressed in swim trunks, Carrying a snorkel and a mask runs towards Schumann and five friends whose inner tubes are tied together. When Mew loses his snorkel and mask, he goes around Schumann and his friends and appears to be searching and feeling around in the shallow, shallow water. The young man can be heard laughing. He lost his snorkel. Get away from us. You got 10 seconds. Two women from the group, Madison and Madison, approach Mew and tell him to go away. One of the young men yells, he's looking for little girls. As the crowd gathers around Mew, he is knocked through the water and slapped in the face. More laughter breaks out. When he gets up, he's holding a knife and stabs a man wearing yellow swim trunks. Mew is then pushed back into the water. A girl wearing a bikini can be seen with a cut on the side of her body and blood dripping down. He hit a woman. One of the men can be heard yelling. The man in the yellow swim trunks can be seen lying in the shallow water, clutching his stomach. Uh, this is from the cameraman. Is this real? Oh my God, that's not blood. That's not blood. That's not blood. That's not Isaac. Oh my God, this is real. This isn't real. 
Um, this is the victim's mother. Uh, we saw his testimony. Uh, this is prosecution shift from witness accounts of the violent encounter to the response, including the law enforcement's arrival at the scene and news arrest at Village Park about a mile down downstream an hour later. Um, Andrea, a registered nurse from Forest Lake, was tubing with her family when she saw Schumann and then tried to save him from dying. Schumann's eyes were wide open but not blinking. He was not breathing. I started chest compressions right away and continued that for a long time, Baldazzo said, recalling that she and others took turns giving CPR, singing the children's song Baby Shark to keep a steady rhythm. Uh, Deputy Benjamin Trebian's body cam video gave jurors a look into Mew's arrest. Uh, they noted markings on Mew's hands, testified that they took photos for potential evidence. In cross-examination, Nelson asked Trebian if the marks on Mew's hands could have been from falling into a river and hitting rocks on the river bottom, potentially. Uh, someone who found the murder weapon. And then we talked about these. Yep. Let me see what else. So this is the day five. Um, one of Mew's friends said that Mew has a character of peacefulness. Um, oh, wait, the guy that lost his phone, police ended up finding it and giving it back to him. The heck? How did they find it in the river? Oh, it probably like washed up on shore somewhere, right? Oh my God, I'm getting this ad for no alcohol challenge on this side right here. <laughs> I don't know. It's like these ads are listening to me as I speak. Targeted ads. Hello, Slanda. This article is doing a terrible job of representing the trial. Um, Ariel testified Mew's wife said Mew was in trouble, so his girlfriend told him to go look and see what was going on. Ariel said he walked down river to see where Mew was. Ariel testified he saw Mew getting bullied by a group of young people who were hitting him through a snorkel. Uh, someone then pushed him down and hit him, but then Mew defended himself. Ariel testified. Ariel testified it happened very quickly. There was a lot of blood, and it was hard to make sense of what, was he, what he was seeing and what was happening. Ariel made his way back to the group, and Mew eventually made his way back to the tubes as well. I, just, I guess I have a hard time believing that when they went back up there, no one talked about what happened. And it was just like silence. And then they just like tube down the river. I feel like you'd just be like, oh, hey, what happened? Are you okay? Did anyone get hurt? Like what happened? What's going on down there? Okay. And I think we already kind of read this. Okay. Um, let me see if the... This is another stabbing victim. Oh, this is the body cam. Body cam and 911 calls. Yeah, I think it'd be really interesting to watch um, the body cam footage when they intercepted him initially. Are you still talking about the popcorn guy? Okay, what, what happened to the popcorn guy? Popcorn guy. Florida? Hi, Ginny. Oh my God, he's so cute. Hello. Bye, Wolf. Have a good one. Hi, Pickle. I'm sorry. I was reading earlier. I didn't see your guys' message. <laughs> Hello. Popcorn Florida guy. Shooting? Now I'm just curious. Let's read this article really quick. A retired officer who was acquitted last month for shooting and killing a fellow moviegoer who threw popcorn in his face during an argument said he stands by his action, saying he was defending himself. Curtis Reeves, 79, 
um, told ABC News Nightline that he wished the fatal fight between him and Chad didn't happen. He feels sadness for the 43-year-old's family. However, the former SWAT captain contended that he had no choice but to use deadly force in what he called a vicious attack. I wish that none of this would have happened, but I don't feel like an instigator. Reeves and his wife, Reeves and his wife Vivian and Olson and his wife Nicole had attended a showing of Lone Survivor uh, at a theater in Tampa, Florida. Olson was checking text messages from his 22-year-old um, month's daughter's daycare during previews, according to investigators. Reeves said he was bothered by Olson's phone and asked him to turn it off, which led to an argument. Reeves left the theater to alert a manager, but the argument escalated when he returned to his seat. Why did it escalate? Surveillance footage showed Olsen throwing popcorn at Reeves' face. What's the, um... Wait, what? How, how close were they to each other when the popcorn was thrown? Surveillance footage showed Olsen throwing popcorn at Reeves' face, and then the former SWAT captain took out a third, uh... How do you say that? 38? Semi -auto a semi-automatic? Is it 38? Is that how you say it? Semi-automatic cannon got an open fire. What the fuck? <laughs> Hold on a second. What? Hold on. There has to be some nuance that we're missing here. There has to be. Olsen was killed. His wife was shot in the finger as she had her hand on her husband's chest to hold him back during confrontation. Bye, Xantharius. Oh, you're having dessert? I'm going to steal some of your dessert. Yum. It is as bad as it sounds. He said it was intimate. I, there, has, there has to be more than this. Maybe he threw popcorn at his face and the group was about to jump him? Wait. Wait, okay. Does anyone in the chat believe that he should be acquitted? Because I, I want to know. There has to be something that we don't know. What in chat if you think that he should be acquitted? And he was acquitted. To you in chat, if you're like, he should not have been acquitted. <laughs> okay, okay, hold on. Let me, let me keep reading. Let me keep reading. Okay, okay, hold on. I mean, don't throw popcorn at someone's face, right? Um, surveillance footage showed Olsen throwing popcorn at Reeves' face. There has to be surveillance footage. There's no video. There's no video. There's video. It says there's video. Nicole Olson told ABC News shortly after the 2014 shooting. Oh, this was back in 2014 that her husband did not threaten Reeves before the gun was drawn. It was a couple of words. No threats, no harm, no nothing. Ah, this is the wife, though. Can I really believe her? Uh, Reeves told ABC News he was aware. Oh, Reeves told ABC News that he was unaware that popcorn had hit him until after he opened fired. What was in my mind was that he was either trying to hit me or he was trying to come over to the seat. Reeves was... Reeves was arrested and charged with second degree murder. He was held under house arrest as his case made its way through criminal court. Reeves tried to use Florida stand your ground law to defense, but a judge denies his request in 2017. The case went to trial early this year. The jury acquitted Reeves on charges. Even without the stand your ground defense, Reeves' attorney successfully argued self defense. They emphasized that attack on someone over 65 is considered a felony in Florida and argued that Reeves' actions were a justifiable use of force. <laughs> After the verdict, Nicole Olson said in the statement to ABC News that the jury got it wrong. I want everyone to know that even though they try to make Chad out to be a monster and the aggressor, he was an amazing man, husband, son, father, friend, and father. I will not accept this result lying down. Chad may be gone, but he will never be forgotten. I will use my voice to try to make sure no one has to experience what myself and my family had to go through. Reeves said he had in contact the Olson family, but he feels the same sadness for them as he does his own family. However, he said Olson could have prevented the incident it was something that was i had no control over he was the only one that could have kept it from happening certainly i don't know man getting pissed at someone for having their phone out during previews 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 it was during the movie then yeah i would say something i mean i wouldn't say anything i i'm very non-confrontational but i mean i would understand if someone said something if it was during the movies you know then fucking step out and then check your phone there right but if it was during the previews like i don't know man you're already being kind of like a little bit nitpicky you saw the video in the trial could be the video is not public maybe hmm is why i don't go to the movies why <laughs> I think the headline sounds bad, but maybe there is a good reason why they acquitted him. 
<laughs> it sounds bad. I don't know. I'm trying to give the jury benefit of the doubt. Um, Nightline. Maybe it's on Nightline then. The movie hadn't started. They were talking to the base. Yeah, I think that's okay. I think that's totally okay. Like during previews, I think it's fine. What movie are they watching? Um, Lone Survivor? I don't even know what that is. No idea what that is. Hmm. I don't know. Is there... What's his name again? Uh, Curtis Reeves. Curtis Reeves. Surveillance? Video? Oh, is this the video? I feel like you can't really see anything. Mr. Reeves, why at that point in time did you just uh, move your seats? Well, the, the guy was just being mouthy. I, I mean, I had a career of dealing with people like that. It, it didn't present a threat to me. I, I probably didn't think about how it affected my wife, but to me, it was it was not. It was no. I saw no threat to it at all. Curtis Reeves on the stand today. What a reaction online. Ever happened if you missed it. Curtis Reeves, self-defense. We're going to show you the direct and the cross. And you make the call on whether or not you're believing what he At some point in time while you were viewing those previews, did uh, you notice a, a light uh, shining in the theater? Yes, sir, I did. I noticed uh, off to my right, who turned out to be Mr. Olson's left shoulder, was a uh, cell phone. I waited to see if he would put it away, if he was interested in uh, what was on the screen or not. And it, it never went away. So I would clean over and get a little bit closer to him so that I didn't have to yell at him. I said, would you mind turning your phone off, sir? If you wanted to at that point, you could have just gone right to the manager and not had any contact with Mr. Olson, right? I would think that you just asked somebody and What's with this music? Oh my god, get rid of the music. I love previews. I do too, but... I mean, he said, if we believe him, he said, would you... It seems like he asked in a respectful manner. They would normally put it away. Get the f out of my face was the response that I got back. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury exactly what you told the manager? I'm a guy complaining on another guy. I said, but I've got a guy sitting in front of me that uh, is using his cell phone. And I said, I don't feel comfortable talking to this guy again so could you help me out he's still talking loudly and i can so he came back where's the staff did the staff not come back yet he's facing away from me so we have the first time that you lean forward to talk about the cell phone the second time is when you lean forward tell him that you're going to the manager now we have a third time where you're leaning forward to basically tell him that you you told on him. And obviously you didn't perceive yourself as a as a vulnerable person. I don't think it had anything to do with being vulnerable. I agree with you. He had turned and was on his feet. I'm looking up at this guy and he looked like a monster standing there. Something between me and the theater screen that I, I saw a, just a flash of a reflection off of. Then everything went kind of... Uh, fuzzy did you believe at that point that you had been hit yes sir i did and you're indicating in this statement that you were hit so hard that you were dazed dazed uh surprised shocked wait but he, are, are you guys saying that he wasn't hit uh, we <laughs> we're discussing the river stuff you know going back and forth and debating about that and then someone brought up the popcorn thing and i was like what's the popcorn thing <laughs> Hi, blah blah. Welcome back. <laughs> the manager said he was fuming. I think if this man ever went to the theater, I would not want to be there with him. I think he was trigger happy. But he said he was hit. Are you guys saying that he wasn't hit? Uh, fuzzy. Wait, how close was he to the to the couple? Is this the couple or is this the couple? I can't. I can't tell. <laughs> it's hard to see. Did you believe at that point that you had been hit? Yes, sir, I did. And you're indicating in this statement that you were hit so hard that you were dazed. Dazed, uh... Oh, wait, hold on. Was he hit with a popcorn bowl or was he hit with the popcorn? Like, one single popcorn. I thought, I thought he was hit with a, like, with... 
with some kernels of popcorn. You're saying that the guy threw the bowl of popcorn at him. Like the entire bowl? <laughs> Surprised, shocked, all those things would fit that, yes sir. At some point after he's reached, either trying to come over the seat or tried to hit me, I had no other choice and I reached for my pistol. I never saw the popcorn. Is, is this one of those cases, sorry, is this one of those theaters where you're like in assigned seats and you just can't get up and move or something? Maybe the seats were, it seems like the theater looked kind of empty. Days by popcorn, it was just a popcorn? No way, no way. I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know if I believe that. He must have been hit with the entire thing of popcorn. You're saying it was just one, a couple popcorns? <laughs> Until I saw it on the floor. I had no idea what had happened to the popcorn. But I was aware that he was trying to grab a hold of me on the floor. I reached for my pistol. I never saw the popcorn until I saw it on the floor. I had no idea what had happened to the popcorn. But I was aware that he was trying to grab a hold of me. Okay, so... The and then, then he, he pitched it back. I'm not sure I saw that. But I did see him coming over the seat with his fist okay. at the instant he got shot. Did you ever find the need while you were a law enforcement officer at TPD to have to use your weapon, fire your weapon? No, sir. In line of duty? They try to provide training programs for you so that you can kind of... Get your feet on the ground and try to keep from becoming a victim uh, and be alert and all the things that you have to do. This is one of those theaters where two egos were so big it made it impossible to move. Listen to the question they say. You believe you were hit, not that he was hit. But I, I, I guess I want to know what was thrown at him. To survive and make it home every afternoon. Did you shoot Mr. Olson because of popcorn? I shot Mr. Olson because I thought he was going to seriously injure me. Or did y'all see my face right now? I don't. I don't even know what I'm even absorbing right now. Is this real life? Maybe they were doing it for the culture. Or potentially kill me. And you said. As I'm sitting back in here, I'm second my second guessing myself. Oh, I did yes, he sir. even hit me? Yes, sir. I second guessing it for the last eight years. <laughs> Unbelievable. A lot of people talk. <laughs> what um what has our pal Vinny said so far about the river stabbing case? Uh, I haven't watched the court TV or law and crime reactions, like the um the pundits' reactions yet. What what have they said about the case? <laughs> Talking about his demeanor as well. Let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Julie Janae joining us live from Pasco County, Florida. Julie, great to see you tonight. What a big day inside that courtroom. Um, what were some of your takeaways from this testimony, which lasted for hours? Oh, Vinny, that he enjoyed his time as a law enforcement officer, that he was in constant pain in his retirement when it comes to his joints and the arthritis. And he also testified that all important, almost the magic words of self-defense, that he feared for his life or serious bodily harm when he was then confronted with Chad Olson. Uh, he talked in a way that really engaged, it seemed, these jurors on direct. You could hear the pride in his voice. Voice. He said, you don't understand the criminal element, the depth of it, until you're face-to-face -face with it. And these jurors, they were taking notes when he was talking about that background. He decided to begin his testimony with that background. Then he moved to his medical ailments, the things he has difficulty doing. He said he really is, even back then, in a lot of pain all the time and tries to keep active to keep from letting that get to him. And then he described this incident, and he really went in after Chad Olson and his demeanor. He said that in all of his years in law enforcement, he hadn't dealt with someone with that much uncontrollable rage. He said he'd never been in that position. He said he'd actually never fired his weapon in the many decades that he was in law enforcement. And then on cross, prosecution was able to score some points in pointing out the difference. <laughs> <laughs> What's your takeaway? Don't make eye contact over speech to anyone. I would say always treat everyone as if they have a gun and they about to shoot at you, okay? <laughs> I try to be pleasant with people. I try to be pleasant, um, good to people. But there are some times where you can't control um, and you do react. Like that does happen. But um, 
I try to keep myself in check. Like that was me, maybe in like, you know, teens, 20s or something like that, you know, being reactive, being stupid. But I would just say like now when I'm older, I just try to treat everyone, you know, just as if they're unhinged and they might pull out a gun on you. Okay. <laughs> like uh, road rage, please don't ever get into road rage bullshit. Okay. That's just like battle of the egos. Do not engage in any road rage bullshit. Okay. Get the fuck out of there. I know people like to do the road rage shit where they're trying to speed against each other, try to cut each other off, try to flick each other off, throw stuff at each other. That's the dumbest thing ever. Okay. Disengage in road rage stuff. Just get the fuck out of there. I don't I think the road rage stuff is like so fucking stupid. No, just be careful okay be careful take care of your guys yourself there are some times where people do react like let's say if someone is getting from your family member and then you want to protect them you know but i would just say be careful okay i want to see the popcorn surveillance there has to be surveillance right they must have showed it in court What's his name? Curtis Reeves. Princes in his testimony today on the stand compared to what he said to police back in 2014. That was the risk of coming and taking the stand when he had made that uh, statement back right when this happened without a lawyer. In particular, there was a point that I saw jurors paying attention to. One woman even bringing out her notebook and writing almost in the air with it. So it was very clear that she was making note of this on the jury. It's a matinee. It's a crowd of people that are in a movie theater. It's Oh, hold on. Um, is this it? Let me see. It's January 13th. It's a matinee. It's a crowd of people that are in Grove 16. And we're inside what is theater number 10. Here it is. Um, it's, well, already the shot. Okay, I don't want to get copyright. Um, so I think the old guy's sitting right there. Oh, were they sitting really close to each other? Wait, there's the old guy right there. That, uh, and again, we're trying to look at. Oh, ah, okay. I mean, I mean, okay. He's sitting there. The guy comes up in front of him and then shoves a popcorn bucket at him. And the guy probably didn't realize if it was a bucket or if it was like a punch or if it was what, but he was quick enough to draw. Damn, he was quick to draw the fucking gun though. Holy shit. But I mean, he has background and firearms. What the? Okay, y'all made it seem like, like one popcorn was like thrown in his face or something. <laughs> and he shot at him. Okay, let me, let me see. Okay, so the, th this guy right here, right? Okay, that's the defendant. He's sitting down. Jeez, it happens like so quickly. Wait, what? Oh, this is a, this is a loop. Also, these seats down here suck. Why are you that close to the freaking screen? I don't know. I would I would hate to be a jury on this trial. This this case would give me a headache. It, it actually it looks like it looks like the dude took the guy's soda and like threw it at him, but maybe that's a popcorn bucket. Jesus, it happened so quickly. Yeah, that's crazy. It happened so quickly. Really? You love sitting in the front row? I get a headache if I'm in the front row. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Uh, what he did when he came back to the movie theater after going to the lobby, telling the manager there that Chad Olson was texting whether or not he was the first one to speak or if Chad Olson was the first one to speak. Oh, it was a quadruple bypass. Ah, gotcha. What did I say? Heart attack? Was he accusing you of turning him into the manager? I kind of interpreted it as that, but I didn't hear those exact words. Uh, it, it, it was, I think he was trying to relay that he was not happy. Okay, and then what did you do at this point? 
I tried to, uh, I think the word is uh, diffuse the situation, so I made a comment to him about if I had known that that you... Wait, but you guys don't think this is like a fuck around and find out type of thing? Oh, sorry, you're not, I'm not even showing the thing. Uh, yeah, I think Virtus is behind um, Kawhi's too. You, you, don't, you guys don't think that this is like a fuck around and find out? The guy went up in front of him, threw the whatever was at him, and then he got shot at. You do? Because this to me seems wild. Like why, even if there's like a vault, uh, even though there's like a verbal thing going on, why would you walk in front of someone and throw popcorn at them like that? Hello. <laughs> yeah, I think the popcorn guy was texting the babysitter at the time. Yeah, and it was like, I mean, I, I guess I, I get why he's annoyed because maybe he's thinking like, oh, the guy's doing this during previews. He's going to do this throughout the movie. Maybe that's what he thought. <laughs> I never believe it's so simple. I think the chat was just trolling me. Maybe they're just trolling. And then we looked it up. OK. Weapons are not allowed in the cinema. for. I don't know. This is Florida. I don't fucking know. Maybe maybe in Florida. Maybe it is. I don't know. All this just seems all of this just seems so unnecessary. Oh, my God. You had put your phone away, I wouldn't have involved the manager. Here on the stand, he said that it was first Chad Olsen who was talking loudly and uh, really seeming to be unhappy with what he had done. <laughs> but the prosecutor then showed him this transcript of his own interview with police where he stated that when he came back into the movie and the guy, Chad Olsen, had... Oh, no. I came back into the movie and uh, the guy had put his phone away and I went by and I said, oh, I see you put it away. Why would you do that? You're just trying to antagonize the guy even more. If you went back and he already put his phone away, then that's it. That's that's it. End of story. Go back to watching the movie. <laughs> Um, I told the manager for no, for no reason. In other words, I went, I went in, ratted him out. If he was going to put it away, I wouldn't have gone, you know, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I think it all just really does sound stupid at the end of the day, right? The, the tubing thing, this. Chai, thank you so much for the 57 months. Thank you. But I'm just saying, don't throw popcorn at people either. Oh, God. Put this phone away and I went by. I said, I see you put it away. I told the manager for no reason. In other words, I went in and ratted him out. It seemed clear from that transcript that he was uh, telling police that as soon as he came in. I know I'm starving, LA. I'm fucking starving. I, I just got sucked into this popcorn thing really quick. He noticed the phone was put <laughs> away and he was the first one to make that statement. There were several points during his testimony that the prosecutor was able to raise some of these things that were different today in court than they were eight years ago. We also caught up with the attorney for Nicole Olson. She's been sitting there in the courtroom. TJ Grimaldi sitting next to her today, relaying how she was feeling seeing this man on the stand calling her husband a monster. You're sitting there next to Nicole Olson. She's watching this, uh, really keeping amazing composure during a lot of it but there were moments where she's just uh, seemingly incredulous at the things that are coming out of the defendant's mouth what were you seeing or noticing from her sitting next to her so i think everyone has to i mean maybe he has a severe peanut allergy and he thought that popcorn was covered you know maybe it was covered in peanut and he thought it was going to die of <laughs> allergic reaction sorry i'm just trolling at this point um yeah i don't know it just seems stupid the whole thing seems realize that it's been eight years and while she didn't sit there and sob it, it's it's because she's she's had this situation she's dealt with it she's relived it she's relived it again she's relived it again she's had did, to talk about why it. why did it take so long for her to go to trial it over and over again whether it's with media or in court and so internally she was flipping out internally she couldn't stand to hear what the what curtis reeves was saying and the lies that were yeah i can see that too sure but the old guy didn't know what he was being hit with he thought the dude was coming at him yeah i could see that too coming out of his mouth outside she knows that or it's he knew i don't know some renovations in the dungeon uh we need more donations go collect donations okay <laughs> for chad and she needs to try to keep his strong exterior you were there for the stand your ground hearing and you know the testimony that was in that one did he describe chad as a monster the way he did today to the jury 
He was much more demonstrative today about this supposed violent attack. Uh, to me, it appears as though this attack by Chad or these claimed attacks by Chad have escalated throughout the eight years. They've gotten more. Oh, I don't know. If I was a jury on this, I, this would give me a headache. Incredulous is a new word for me. Yay. All right, y'all. I have to go eat. I'm hungry. Um, so Rain says that Chad Debo is going to have his um, opening statements. The trial opening statement is going to happen on Wednesday. So let's watch that. I'm also going to keep an eye on for um, the defendant in the Apple River case. Um, apparently, maybe he's going to testify. I think the state is shit. What did someone say again? The state's going to rest tomorrow. So maybe they'll start off with his testimony. I think that could be pretty strong. So I definitely want to go live for the testimony of the Apple River um, defendant and the Chad Deba opening statements. I hope it doesn't happen on the same day. But if it does, then um, yeah, I don't know. I'll pick one and then we'll just watch the other one when it's like not live, I guess. We can do this. We can just do that. But I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks for being here. I appreciate the uh, friendly, the healthy debates about the river trial stuff. I know there's a lot of disagreements, but that's okay. It's totally fine. We don't have to live in a world where we agree with everyone. <laughs> Fuck that. But I do appreciate you guys being here. Um, thank you so much for chatting. And I do appreciate hearing your guys' um, thoughts on this case. I think it's really interesting. I think the jury may believe the next cop wouldn't act violent or irrationally out of anger. I don't feel that way. Dot, 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 dot. People will see, use a gun for anything. People will use a gun for any little thing. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Corgi. Thank you, Dibs. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys have a good one. Uh, don't forget to f like the stream. I don't know. Thanks for liking the stream. And um, oh, let's look at the poll, actually. The poll, we have 119 votes. 48% um, say, oh, wait, it's changing. Huh? <laughs> 120 votes, 47% um, say guilty, 24% say not guilty. We do have 17% that says not sure, and then 11% haven't paid attention. All right, y'all. I hope you guys have a good one, though. Take care. Thanks for hanging out. Um, check out the new videos that have been that has been posted, and we have a... Um, I post videos on TikTok as well. Feel free to check them. Does that, does that command not work? Okay, it does work. Oh, the TikTok thing is not on there. I got to change that be careful with your popcorn yeah be careful with your popcorn also i hate popcorn i don't like the smell of popcorn popcorn is disgusting that's why i don't like going to movie theaters because popcorn just smells like like butt okay i don't like the smell of popcorn and people are like oh corgi how do you not like popcorn because it smells i don't know i hate the smell of popcorn Ugh. that's why i hate going to theaters i feel like it's like ugh. but um i hope you guys have a good one take care and i will be streaming throughout this week for the new stuff or sort of the apple river stuff and then um chad daybell when they do the opening statement so i will see you guys for those this week okay have a good one bye